Are we alive? Away for it. Oh, there it is. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're having a wonderful day. If you're watching this and it does not say live at the bottom of the screen, unfortunately, you're watching the recap. The good news is we are live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open. Drop your thumbs up on the video. Make sure you're subscribed. You're on mobile. Press high chat. X out the chat. Hit the thumbs up button. Second link for the nightly watch list and main channel. First link for the Scream Alerts boot camp and real estate course. But, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the final day of October. We are down about 2.3% on the month. You woke up with a little bit of relief, and then right when the ECI came out, we started going down. There was news out of Japan yesterday, the Bank of Japan. Remember, we were reacting to it. Well, they didn't really do much, and it's now leading to the yen getting weaker. So we'll see what the dollar does, but that was a big deal. You had data out of China that was a little weaker than expected. It wasn't that good, but somehow people were focusing on the stimulus. And then you had a lot of bad earnings in the morning. Last night, Anet, Pinterest, Wolf, they all did good. But this morning, Pfizer, Caterpillar, BP, and a couple of others, they were not that good. It was actually a little concerning. So... It's putting us in an interesting spot. We had a little bit of relief or a lot of it, and then we came down, but now we are setting up here. We're going to get more refunding tomorrow, then pal, then before you know it, man, there's only two more months left in the year. So, Chad, I hope you're ready for it. Today should be exciting. Again, VFC, that's even on the low. That's another, that's another one already going there. But, Chad, I hope you're ready for it. I hope you're locked in. Uh, but good morning, baby. Oh, what's up, Marcus Hanlon? How you living? Brendan, Smars, Tony, Laker, Jay. Oh, good morning, Malcolm, Battleboy, Laurie. Good morning, baby. What's up, Smars? Alaskan Assassin, no mask. Tim Whitman in the house. Good morning. Oh, my goodness. Rami, Youngblood, Devlin, Sakoti, Blue Peterson, Z Destroyer, baby. Dirty Bird, Flair. Good morning, baby. PNC in the house. Oh, Robbie, good morning. Be like Mike. Permable, Woo Moon Man, Peril One. Carissa Hines in the house, baby. Good morning. What's up, Francisco? Alex Lozano, Wandering. Open Face Sandwich, baby. Joshua Jacobs. Oh, my goodness. Happy Toast Day. Alejandro, Rubber Side Down, baby. Good morning. Mikey Leach, Asset Works, Sea Bass, Tamar. Lucky Soldier, baby. Good morning. Oh, my goodness. What's up, Crypto Hyper? Helen Chang, 10% Alex, baby. Javi Anthony, baby. Oh, my goodness. Oh my goodness, Odin, good morning, what's up, Najee Wolf, Joshua Simpkins, Ben Stone, Candy Upton, Bill Beers, Nathan Evans, oh my goodness, good morning, Chad Antonia. That's what I'm talking about. What about me? What's up, James? I see you, baby. There's a lot. There's a lot in the morning. You know what I'm saying? Then it flashes like 10, 20 names at a time. It's whatever five I can memorize before the next 10 or 15 come up, man. I'm just, I'm excited, though. The chat's ready to go. They showing up in the morning. Good morning. What about the Twitch? What about Slizzin? Ross Legion, baby. Oh, be fire. Nikki Smash. Proficino, Lizzie, Triple Three, Feed Me Seymour, Charlie in the Tree, Braxton, Hey, it's Mikey, Hailstone, Blizzy B, Braxton, Blowing Doll, KJ Lemur, Hey, Sos Moreno, and Feed Me Seymour, Robo Hand Tag, no Blazing Bob. We usually get Blazing Bob on the on the beginning. I usually say that every time because I'm used to seeing it, baby. Good morning. Oh, we here, baby. Tell him Alfredo. So, Chad, I hope you're ready for it. I hope you're ready. Very interesting day. Again, we were already up like 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Uh, then that flipped a little bit. So let's see what happens. Oh, Troy Lenman in the house. Good morning, baby. Good morning. So, Chad, let's get to the news. I hope you're ready for it. I hope you're having a good day, too. Again, Monday was already lit. Do the kids still say lit? It was kind of lit. No? Okay, I'll just, I'll just get to the news, man. Uh, U.S. futures edge higher with earnings. Yen tumbles. Uh, stocks rose with the S&P 500 set to extend its rally for a second day as companies including Jeep maker Stellantis and social media company Pinterest reported better than expected earnings. S&P futures added 0.2%. The euro stock 600 climbed about 0.6. Bonds climbed with the yield on the 10-year falling eight basis points after the U.S. Treasury reduced their estimate for federal borrowing for the current quarter, citing stronger than expected revenue. Some of the most dramatic moves in the market come from Japan after the 
the central bank made only minor changes to their policy settings, disappointing some of the market who had expected more. The yen dropped back to past 150 per dollar and slid to a 15-year low against the euro. The Bank of Japan shift is being closely watched by investors because of their tight control on the bond market since they introduced YCC in 2016. The central bank said it will take a more flexible approach to controlling yields on the 10-year government debt, marking a shift from a previous pledge to conduct daily bond buying operations at 1%. This is the first critical step of whether Japanese officials care about the speed of Japanese yen depreciation in specific levels, said Simon Harvey, head of FX analysis at Monex Europe. Thankfully for them, lower treasury yields are delaying any urgency for an answer, but any unexpected hawkish comments from Chair Powell tomorrow or a larger issuance in longer dated treasuries could force the issue as soon as tomorrow. Corporate highlights Pinterest shares jumped as much as 17% after the social network company reported third quarter results that beat. Stellantis gained 2.6 after better than expected third quarter revenue, bolstered by stable pricing and improving logistics and robust demand for models such as the electric Jeep Avenger. Pfizer results missed expectations for the quarter as sales of COVID-19 shot and Paxlovid continued to tumble. Caterpillar slid 4% pre-market after reporting a decline in order backlog, even as they posed earnings uh, that topped analyst estimates. BP fell 3.7 after third quarter profit fell short of estimates. Uh, results from dating app firm Match and Chipmaker at AMD are due after the close. Elsewhere, oil prices rebound after a steep drop yesterday as investors track developments in the Middle East. Israel struck more targets in Lebanon and Syria overnight while stepping up their ground operations in Gaza. WTI rose near $83 a barrel. Key events this week, Eurozone CPI, GDP on Tuesday, U.S. Conference Border Consumer Confidence on Tuesday, China CACs in Manufacturing on Tuesday, U.K. S&P Global PMIs on Wednesday, U.S. Construction Sales, ISM Manufacturing, and Job Openings on Wednesday, All Saints Holiday and much of Europe on Wednesday, Treasury Quarterly Refunding on Wednesday, and then Fed Chair Powell on Wednesday. And then I'll save the rest for Thursday. That's it. It's all right, man. Tomorrow's already Wednesday, baby. Uh, value of X. X, the social media platform known as Twitter, is now worth less than half of what Elon Musk paid for it a year ago. Restricted stock units awarded to employees value the business at $19 billion, according to a person familiar with the matter, compared with $44 billion that Musk paid for the company a year ago. Since the takeover was completed, a majority of Twitter has been laid off or resigned. It was renamed X. It changed some content rules, and it has seen more than half of their advertising revenue disappear. That's what I was saying, bro. Remember I was saying yesterday how, like, I was like, I feel like we haven't heard about attacking Elon as much. I, and then they start, that's like, that's, they start that off with a number one headline. So there you go. There you go. Fragile China. Chinese factory activity fell back into contraction during October. An expansion in the service sector unexpectedly eased, indicating that the economy remains fragile and in need of support from authorities. The weaker than anticipated data will bolster calls for yet more stimulus from Beijing following the series of measures announced earlier this month. Soft consumer confidence, declining export demand, and ongoing turmoil in the country's property sector have all weighed. Uh, Bank of Japan tweak. The Bank of Japan has further loosened their grip on government bond yields while also sticking to a position as the final global central bank with negative rates. It said it would take more flexible approach on controlling bond yields, though relatively minor tweaks, uh, tweaks to their policy disappointed some investors and sent the yen lower. We decided that it was appropriate to increase flexibility so the long-term yields can be smoothly shaped, according to different future scenarios, said Governor Koseo Oueda. <laughs> Uh, S&P futures up by 0.2 in Tuesday morning trading after U.S. equities rallied on Monday with the S&P up the most in two months after finishing down in eight of the last nine sessions. Big tech is a standout. Treasuries firmer across the curve after Monday's bearish steepening move. Dollar little change while yen weakness is the big story in Forex. Gold is up by 0.2. Bitcoin futures are off by 0.2. WTI is up by 0.4 after losing nearly 4% on Monday. Uh, several moving pieces in focus this morning. Bank of Japan tweaked their YCC policy and said 1% ceiling on tenure would now be regarded as reference rate and not a hard cap while it will no longer offer mixed rate bond purchase operations every day. Move was previewed in the press and not aggressive as some as expected, providing some reprieve, uh, reprieve for global bond yields. Also, some talk of Wednesday's refunding details could remove an overhang on the Treasury market, increasingly worried about fiscal dynamics, growth worries back in focus with softer China manufacturing and service PMIs, though some cushion from expectations of more stimulus in the pipeline, earning still a mixed bag in their 
seems to be some semblance of a waiting game to get a better read on the U.S. consumer. More signs of disinflation traction with Eurozone inflation below 3% for the first time since mid-2021. Uh, Pfizer missed with weaker COVID revenue, a key headwind. Amgen missed, blamed on weaker lung cancer therapy. Caterpillar beat, but stock hit by weaker bookings and uh, growth in dealer inventories. BP missed big with lower gas trading, a key drag. Anet beat and raised on strong enterprise demand. Pinterest beat with takeaways focused on favorable combination of ad load growth and MAU growth along with cost control. MPWR results and guide largely in line with AI wins a bright spot. LSCC down big after guiding down Q4 on softening demand with Com Autos and Industrials. Uh, VFC hit by GM miss, worsening vans, removal of four-year guidance, and 70% dividend cut. ZI reported mixed results and said operating environment remains challenging. Wolf beat and guided largely in line while takeaways focused on bigger contribution for Mohawk Valley outside of earnings. And NVIDIA reportedly could see approximately $5 billion of orders to China at risk from new U.S. restrictions. Iranian Foreign Minister to visit Ankara on Wednesday to discuss conflict in Gaza. Uh, China's NBS PMI fell short of expectations with manufacturing coming in at 49.5 below 50.2 and non-manufacturing at 50.6 down from 52 forecast. President Xi Jinping underscored his concerns and more conservative social values about China's shrinking population in a speech calling on a key women's organization to help bolster the nation's birth rate by promoting a culture of childbirth. Uh, NVIDIA's $5 billion in China orders are in limbo after latest U.S. curbs. Tech company had been pushing to make some shipments for next year before new restrictions came into effect. Uh, the yen fell below 150 as the Bank of Japan made only minor tweaks to yield curve control. Governor Kuzeo Ueda said that the 1% cap on 10-year yields is now just a reference, but doubt that it'll rise much higher. Uh, Euro area inflation eased to their lowest level in more than two years as the bloc's economy unexpectedly shrank following an unprecedented ramp up in interest rates. CPI rose to 2.9 in October, down from 4.3. GDP fell by 0.1, missing estimates for stagnation. Israel struck more targets in Lebanon and Syria while stepping up ground operations in Gaza. The UN warned that the situation in Syria is at its most dangerous for a long time. Iran's foreign minister will visit Qatar today. Uh, Russia has restricted Western companies that sell their Russian assets from withdrawing the process seeds and dollars and euros, imposing additional de facto currency controls in an effort to shore up the weakening ruble. Central banks have loaded up more gold than previously thought this year, offering crucial support to prices. Uh, purchases of the first nine months totaled 800 tons, driven mainly by China, Poland, and Singapore, more than the same period last year, which ended with record demand. Uh, VFC pulled their guidance for current fiscal year slash dividend and said it will replace the president of its Vans brands. VF has come under pressure from activist investors this month. Shares fell nearly 9% pre-market. And then commercial real estate lending has slowed sharply, threatening a rise in defaults on expiring debt and a sharp decline in new construction. Don't worry, there is more, my friends. Honestly, we're getting through all of it, though, pretty quick. Uh, some strategists are cutting year-end S&P 500 targets given geopolitical risk and rate headwinds. Uh, bonds are facing their third straight year of losses for the first time in roughly 40 years. Uh, Monday's busiest day for corporate bond offerings in nearly two months as companies try to get ahead of the Fed auctions. Uh, Bank of Japan increases YCC flexibility, dials back the daily fixed purchase operations. UADA says Bank of Japan not behind the curve. RBA warns economic shocks to heighten rate volatility. China factory activity unexpectedly contracts renewing doubts about economic recovery. Japan industrial production rebounds by less than expected as rising rates dent demand. Uh, Southern Korea, South Korean industrial output strengthens for a second month amid chip sector turnaround. France posts slight growth. Italy avoided recession by narrowest margin. Netanyahu rejects calls for ceasefire as Israeli forces move further into Gaza. Netanyahu lobbied EU to pressure Egypt into accepting Gaza refugees. Uh, China's Communist Party mouthpiece calls for improving U.S. Sino ties. Uh, EU and U.S. are still debating green subsidies and trade agreements. Uh, NVIDIA could see $5 billion in orders at risk from new U.S. restrictions. Uh, BP earnings miss on weaker gas trading. Samsung sees memory recovery in 24 after profit beats forecast. Apple announces new Mac and laptops and third-gen Mac processors. X valued at $19 billion in new employee stock plan, less than what half of what Elon paid for it. Panasonic cuts full-year outlook, blaming slower sales of Tesla EV. Uh, World Bank warns oil could jump about $100 on small disruption to crude supplies. Uh, Biden weighs 
more measures to ease student debt burden, and White House unveils executive order aimed at reducing AI risks. Wow. That is your news for the morning. So again, a decent amount of bad earnings. We were still holding up, kind of continuing day two. Bank of Japan was a problem. The ECI is what changed everything so far. Again, that went up by like 0.1. I don't even think there was a headline on it, but that is where everything started to change. So Chattadonia, I hope you're ready for it. We still got a little bit more time, though. So have no fear. I think it's time that we get into some plays here, go over some of the opening. Again, we're kind of really early. It was a lot of headlines, but... I think I just went through that one really, really fast. So we'll see how it plays. But uh, as far as pre-market movers, a lot of earnings. So 16.1% uh, Pinterest, they're up on earnings. Anet, they're up 10% on earnings. GPN, they're up 89 off earnings. MPWR, 47 Bud, 42 Stellantis, 3.3. ETN, 3.3. ARGX, 3.2. Uh, CCJ, 3.2. And then ASML, they had nothing. MT, up 2.5 off of nothing. TEF. Uh, Telefonica uh, up 2.4. La Sociedad Estatal de Participonios Industriales is exploring the possibility of acquiring a stake. I probably butchered that. STM up 2.2. Bear downgrade. PhD 2.0 off of nothing. Ford up 1.9 off Stellantis earning sympathy. Toyota 1.9 off the same thing. Palo Alto Networks up 1.9 off of nothing. Eli Lilly, they're up 1.7 to acquire Beam's opt-in rights. Uh, Siri is up 1.7 off of earnings. MPC 1.3 off of earnings, Boeing, North Coast Research Upgrade up 1.0, AME earnings into acquire Paragon Medical for $1.9 billion in cash, uh, Wolf is up 12.8 off of earnings, SSTK 9.3, Coco 9.0, 8.6 on Beam, Eli, Eli Lilly to acquire certain rights, uh, Chewy up 4.2, Morgan Stanley Upgrade, QGen 4.1 off of earnings, Immunogen 3.3 off of nothing, SNN 2.3, HSBC Upgrade, HTGC up 2.0. 2.2 quarter three total cash distribution of 48 cents per share, including eight cents per share supplemental distribution. Uh, WU up 2.1 off of nothing. AGNC 2.0 off of earnings. Lung 12.4 off of earnings. 10.3 HMST. AAC up 9.4 terminates merger deal with X Energy. ARDX 6.1 off of earnings. Verve up 5.7 press release on Lily's acquisition of Beam's opt in rights. Uh, ZYXI up 4.8 confirms review of strategic alternatives. Aqual up 1.3 top line study to evaluate safety and efficacy of Dextenza. Uh, Hub down 8.2 off of earnings. ATEYY down 7.0 off of earnings. Caterpillar down 5.0 off of earnings. WDC down 5.1. It just says 1.3 billion. Uh, BP down 3.8, 1.5 billion buyback program in earnings. FERG down 3.4 off of Bank of America downgrade. NC down 2.0 off of earnings. SRPT down 43%. Embark study of Elevitis on Duchenne muscular dystrophy did not meet primary endpoint. AMKR down 14.4 off of earnings. H-A-W-H-A-Y-W uh, down 14.3 off of earnings. LSCC 14.1 off of earnings. Catalent 13.0 SRPT trial sympathy. HLIT down 9.0 off of earnings. JetBlue 7.1 off of earnings. 5.7 on VFC because of earnings. AXNX down 4.0 off of earnings. Lyft down 3.8. Mofit Nathanson downgraded to sell. I believe their lowest price target ever right now. Uh, Toast down 2.8. Wells Fargo initiates underweight. Pack B down 2.5 off of earnings. NE uh, down 1.9 off of nothing. Solar Winds 1.6 off of nothing. Pets down 2.6 off of earnings. SLS down 17.2 off of nothing. CDT down 13 off of nothing. ANVS down 13%. Common stock more offering for intermediate uh, amount. Positive DSMB recommendation for Butanina tab. Uh, Butane tab. Butane tab. Buntain top. Uh, NFGC down 9.5, uh, 56 million bot deal. Chegg, uh, Sympathy, Nerdy's down 3.5. And then Chegg down 3.0 off of earnings. Wow. Talk about a lot of plays. Again, a lot of earnings. But again, I do think the bigger ones uh, were kind of more of a negative highlight. So we will see. But Chattadonia. Now we're making good time. I'm going to go to the bathroom. Follow me on Instagram at the Training Fraternity. I will be right back. Like the video. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you got some plays because we're about to turn up here, baby. So good morning. Get ready for Tuesday.
and Powell tomorrow. We go forward, you know, clearly we have to finance the uh, the deficits and higher yields will help do that. So right now, although we've seen a lot of shifting around in the composition of buying, households have been huge buyers of treasuries, more than happy to take down a lot of treasuries in the 5% region. So it's more a question of where's the equilibrium, right? And I think the equilibrium is probably roughly around that five, five and a quarter percent area. How much, Troy? Uh, do you sort of look toward new havens at a time of uncertainty? Kathy's challenging that, and a lot of people do. But still, there is a conversation. Is it Apple? Is it Microsoft? Is it gold? Yeah, I mean, look, treasuries are still treasuries. So we're with Kathy on that. And to her point, you know, the biggest asset allocation rotation this cycle has been to cash and, and T-bills, period, right? It, but one of the things as an investor you should try to do now is look for other exposures that can at least marginally produce higher return. And, you know, one of the beauties of this bear steepener is it's taken uh, the ability to refinance on mortgages even further, further out of the money. So that continues to be one of our favorite ways to play higher rates is prepayment sensitive uh, RMBS. You have government guarantee, both implicit, explicit. You have tremendous yield. You know, in, interest only strips hedge with pass throughs have close to 14% yield. And you don't have the duration risk that could come from further bear steepening. Uh, so, you know, cash has been king this cycle. We like to say cash flows uh, even better. And you have really attractive cash flows in agency RMBS relative to history and relative to the risk of, of prepayment in this environment. Kathy, are you going into more esoteric instruments or are you looking to just focusing? I'm not saying if that's esoteric, but I'm just saying, do you have to uh, diverge much beyond long duration treasuries at a time where there is potential that people keep highlighting of uh, pretty significant gains should yields come back down? Yeah, I, I agree with Troy on the agency MBS. I think it's a it's a great opportunity for a lot of people, and um, you know we're seeing a, a fair amount of interest in it. Uh, we like investment grade there you corporate. Have it, Chad. She agrees with Troy. She agrees with Troy. Amen. Amen. Chad Adonia, we've gone through the place. You're hearing them talk everything: bonds, the cash flow, to the companies. What do we do with the rates? What about the earnings? So Chad Adonia, you're here right now. You're here bright and early. You've heard all the headlines. I keep burping. I don't know why. But, Chad, what's the first play of the day? Post it in the chat. Show me what you got. I know it'll take you like 30 seconds to warm up a little bit. Don't worry. Oh, PNC's ready to go, baby. Let's go. I need some plays. Happy Tuesday. Oh, there you go. It's already coming out. Amazon 128 puts. Spy calls, TQQ shares, watching US 30, holding puts on JPY, Bill, watching Yen. I don't know what I'm looking at. Watching the madness, Horn, FSLR puts, Spy 412, Spy puts, MNQ short, puts on QQQ, outlet. Bro, come on, baby. How do we get more? Get more likes. It's okay. Either way, give me a play. CYBN, GBTC, calls on Jeppy, Soul to the Moon, ES short, 42 long, and then 4180, ES short, IWM, waiting for power, Marner calls, good morning, Mara calls, Apple puts, Nvidia puts, good morning, Ford shares, 42026 call, Spy puts, 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 Wednesday, Junior short everything just glad i'm here sitting on hands stm micro just watching sitting on my hands spy 4200 baby december 140 apple puts waiting on power amazon 138 spy puts M microsoft long spy 408 apple december 15th call scalping oil pins puts apple puts stop losses pin calls watch until the news mo calls spy puts uncle calls bull dance no plays just letting them ride out mes spy price action apple calls paypal calls google calls spy puts butterflies i don't know what i'm looking at spy puts when is pal pals tomorrow yang good morning everybody holo long shares wolf one dollar puts uh nvidia calls puts 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 lulu puts screaming that 10 percent sqq long puts on the world okay i'm gonna give you a hug short ffc long josh pins put 420 and chill waiting 4200 spy zero day definitely those paypal calls chewy covered call and the final plays wbd calls paypal puts credit spreads and DraftKings long 1000 I'm down. I don't even know what that means. That sounds so exciting. That sounds like a new version of the game. Oh, my goodness. Chattadonia. Let's go, baby. So some of y'all will give you a hug, too. And I hope you feel better no matter what. But that was some good plays. That was some good plays, baby. We got a couple out there. How much time? Oh, we got, we got perfect time. 
perfect time, just enough time. So you can prepare your questions if you have any as well. I'm going to be watching Pins, Wolf, and Anet. Those were the after-hours earnings that actually did good. I was very surprised with Pinterest. The only downside is they are up. Keep in mind AMD. We're going to go over that earnings preview. Uh, Beam, they are getting pretty much acquired by Pfizer, I believe, or Eli Lilly, uh, one of their rights. So watch out for them. Then Lyft, uh, they got a really big downgrade. It's the street low. I want to see how that one plays out. Then Oil, watch if it's able to come up. Remember, down for you yesterday, barely moving now. If we do get certain headlines, that would be a big one. And then Caterpillar, their earnings was good, but then they sold off and they started talking about China. So watch them. And then I'm going to keep an eye on XLP and the staples, just if we continue to get more relief. If not, then we might get back to the gulag. But interestingly enough, though, I think a lot of you guys wanted the puts this morning. That's it. You guys ain't getting fooled by no green, no progress. You said, nah, this time we grabbing puts, son. Oh, yeah, hold on. I already took off the pre. I'm getting excited. So you have a minute. You got a minute till questions and then another minute until the pledge, baby. Do you got anything for me? Do you need anything? Can I help out in any way? Is there something you need to understand? There's more of the refunding on Wednesday. Powell is on Wednesday. We don't really have anything today. Again, we're going to be getting more global PMIs tomorrow morning. So if anything, we're going to just ride it out. We're going to ride it out for now. Bonds gave up all the euro gains. Yeah, the bonds were up. A, the bonds are still up now. They were up a lot more, but uh, it really, ever since the ECI, we just went. Pfft. You know, not not that good. Not that good, Habibi. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The wire youtubecom slash the stock market. Uh, you should be able to find it every day for your own access. But Chattadonia, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Here at the cult, before we do anything, before we try to chase a dollar, before we try to enrich ourselves, we must pay homage to a very special group of people that has sacrificed more than most of us ever have and ever will. And I am talking about the veterans of the United States of America. So on behalf of the cult, the people here, the people not here, I want to give a huge special shout out all the active servicemen, past servicemen, anybody who has served this country, even the families for real. I, I cannot say it enough literally that's why every single day and I know it falls on some ears sometimes on deaf ears but for real thank you for your service thank you for everything we would not be here without y'all and I just I appreciate it so much and reminded about it every single day because in times of peace we take it for granted and other times though you are reminded about the sacrifice that thousands and millions of people made ahead of us so veterans the families Thank you all, and big shout out to anybody else out there giving back to their local communities, all the doctors, nurses, teachers, firefighters, the police officers, the janitors, the garbage men, the coaches, anybody helping out and giving back, making things run. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Way to keep it up and keep going. But, ladies and gentlemen, please rise. Place your right hand over your heart. Say it with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all, baby. Send the Jets! Oh, it's game time, baby. Horn off. Happy Tuesday, Chad. You better wake up. You better wake up. I love you too, man. You better wake up. You know what I'm saying? This is my, this is how much I love you. I'm just trying to wake you up, man. You better get hyped again. This is a day. Every day we have sold off the rally the next day in mass. Every Monday opens up green. Then the Tuesdays get carnage. This time the Chad's not going all calls. Everyone's like, nah, I don't believe it. We still got away. We got more data. We already got the Bank of Japan. Oh, we're going to get, we, I think there's like two or three more things. And then we're going to spend another day of just digesting the headlines. So I'm, I'm, I need to wake you up for all of this. I got to wake you up for all of this. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You hate you got to work, Mr. Old Invest in Trading Life. Maybe. You know, like the Chinese parable. You may, you may, like maybe. But maybe you may end up liking both of it. You may unlock both the work life and the stock life at the same time. So let's go, baby. Grind. Oh, we didn't talk about that. What's his name's comment yesterday uh, regarding, like, uh, again, just the whole income aspect. We got to talk about that a little bit. But we will see, Chad. Don't you jinx it? I'm not jinxing anything, man. I'm not. I can't. That's it. Mm-hmm. 
I'm not trying to jinx anything. I'm just I'm riding with it. Mm-hmm. SRPT down 50. Yeah, they had a bad phase three data. Mm -hmm. You got 30 seconds, Chad, until the bell. Like the video. Make sure you guys are subscribed. If you have anything, let me know. But, you know, we got we got 30 seconds left. But you need any confirmation, be positive. Show respect to your fellow Chads. And then we'll be good, man. We will be good. Who's worse with being on time, be a J or Biden? Oh, I think I think Biden. I, we'll see. We'll see. Are you riding with the Lord or are you hanging with the sucker side? Good morning. I didn't win. I got it customized. All right. You're waking up here. So, again, we were up a lot more pre-market than the uh, ECI came in a little hotter. Round one. Fight. Oh, Dustin Morris, baby. That's how we're opening up. God bless you, baby. I'll give you. I'll throw, I'm throwing that one in there. Throwing that one in there. All right, good luck. So Pinterest up 16. That one's going to be tough. Again, Caterpillar's down 5% right now. Caterpillar actually did very good, I think. But then uh, they missed on, like, the growth rate, and then they warned on the China stuff. So they're coming up. Watch Tesla. Remember, they were down, what, 4 or 5% yesterday? You didn't really have any good headlines on Elon today, but they're still down 0.3. And then NVIDIA, again, that $5 billion news, they're down 2.2 right now. Oh, yeah, happy Halloween. It is Halloween. I forgot about that. Aris. Microsoft's in the green right now. My goodness. Let's see. Amazon. Amazon's up by 0.5. Apple is in the red by 0.6. Meta's up by 0.11. NASDAQ down 11 or 0.11. SPY up 0.05. Dow down a quarter. And then Russell 0.07, which is weird considering uh, the NASDAQ was like really running in the morning. And then you're right at 4170. So as far as like gap, you're not even like... Yeah, you're filling the gap right now in the first minute. So let's see how this plays out. Is that SPY going up? Wow, my charts are tweaking out. Tesla pop, Pfizer. Again, yeah, Pfizer had earnings. They did not do too hot. But they're only down one. Again, on earnings, they usually move, I think, one to two. It's not really a big mover. Tesla's coming up. NEE on the high. SCO, watch if oil keeps dropping down. That one's going to be wild. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Unless there's a first time watching the Nightmare Before Christmas, I don't even like remember it. Does that make is that that's not the new one? Like the old one, I remember. I don't know if there's a new one. Palantir up 0.68. People were asking about that yesterday. URI's on the low. Baba's on the high. Interesting, considering some of the Chinese data. Mm -mm. Tesla finally moving. Uh, AMD, we do have earnings today. We'll go over that again. Uh, if anything, though, NVIDIA just got bad news on that China stuff, but I would watch out for AMD. We're going to go over the preview, like, middle of the day here. A Boeing, a Boeing, a Boeing. Uh, is it loaded? 182? It's not going too crazy. Just the first candles. TLT's up 0.35. Again, bonds are up 1%. At one point in the morning. That's the crazy part. Yeah, Wolf came in very, very good. Let's see if they hold, though. I don't know if it was two standard deviations. Still holding up 16. Uh, who is the other one? Pinterest. They're coming down. Micron is on the high. I thought it was. I saw something else. T-Mobile. Now City. Watch if banks could hold up. XLF is actually just going straight up here. And then Spy's right at break even for the day. I do believe we already filled the gap. Again, NASDAQ and Dow already red. So let's see here. XLE, again, energies two days in a row now. Yesterday, energy oil sold off 4%. So if that keeps going down, I mean, I just watch for breaking 81. If we get back to a seven handle, that'd be wild. JP Morgan with a green. Again, banks are looking pretty decent this morning. I think that's the interesting. Regionals even up by 0.4. Dow Chemicals. They're up by 0.23. Hertz on the low. PayPal. PayPal. Uh, AMKR. I don't know if they had news. I think they had some update this morning. I think they were down off of earnings. The yen is going to swing between 155 or 150. It could go higher. So like I was telling you, there's higher levels on the yen. But now that it was like a half-ass tweak today, there's this worry that the yen is going to blow out even more. So, But then there's like the double-edged sword is that the yen should get blown up right now after that. But then if it weakens too much past 150, they're going to intervene. Some people are even saying, are you ready for this? It By next year, you might even have a problem between the Bank of Japan 
and uh, like the the government of Japan. So like the governing body of Japan, like their Congress and the Bank of Japan, they're going to start beefing. Uh, Meta is starting to tank here. Bud's on the high after earnings. Meta's down 0.75. What is that? Google SQQ on the high. You're hitting a low now. So we are going back down here. Oh, that's oil. So again, I think you've filled the gap now. You're just in yesterday's levels. Believe it or not, though, up until the close yesterday, I mean, we really didn't go below 470 after we got there. So, you know, you're going to have to deal with all of the range from yesterday, whatever those like high points are. Again, like 4165. Maybe like 4160 and then just back to 4155. Let's see. But hopefully you get that Bank of Japan thing. So pretty much, I mean, pretty much if you don't understand what's going on, every time the Japanese yen weakens, it's like good for their stock market, but then again, a lot of the citizens, they're losing their purchasing power. So this is why people are saying by, you know, by the beginning of next year, we may have to see something with Japan or they may start beefing because pretty much what their Fed is doing is creating a inflate, not a in, in real, inf it's not getting the real inflation, but it's just hurting all of the citizens and eventually, you know, voters aren't going to like that. 52 week, 52 week auction in what? In two hours. I don't know if that auction will move us as much the one year, but for the most part, uh, Wednesday, tomorrow morning, that composition still uh, from the Treasury refunding, that's still on the table. ARDX. That one's still going. That was another earnings. Tesla's still down. Again, Boeing's holding up. Uh, Meta's still flushing. And then uh, which one was it? Banks, man. X or City, JP Morgan, XLF, bro. They're all doing very good. So I don't know. Are REITs moving up with that? A little bit. Uh, yeah, even oh, a little bit after yesterday. Arm on the low. Amazon dropping. Google big. So is now big tech coming down? Uh, it's not down too much, but you look like, you know, reversing the last couple days. That Magnificent 7, I think you're getting clobbered a little harder there. Yeah, equal weight's up. <laughs> so take a look. Equal weight index is just is, is phenomenal. Looks like it's just moving up here, but now you're going straight down. This is tech. NASDAQ's down by 0. 0.6. NASDAQ's probably moved a percent and a half, I think, from the morning. Mm -hmm. NVIDIA 395. Wow. So again, NVIDIA had the bad news with the 5 billion. They're down another 2%. NVIDIA is below 400. It went below 400 and dropped another $5. Again, that's the first time below 400 in a long ass time. Uh, there's Netflix even coming down. AMD. AMD is even selling off day of earnings. There was this weird, again, that NVIDIA chip news just did not really sound good at all. Yeah, REITs and financials are doing good. Let's see if it actually holds up throughout the day that I think will be the key Tesla's even coming back down another 1.5 even off of yesterday which is kind of wild to think about there's AMD where's the other ones and there was pins wolf and a net they're still holding up a net gave up a little bit but some of the earnings Illumina is running 2.7 it's a biotech or a healthcare company XLV, T-Mobile has been running all day. I've seen that. Bonds are holding up. That's the interesting part. Honestly, I think today might be the dollar, though. Yeah, dollar's back up to 0.38, right under 30. You could blame the yen for that one today, especially after yesterday. MQ down to 200. Coin is not shortable. Are you sure you have a hard to borrow? My coin's back to 73. Intel's going up. AXSM, that was our earnings as well. Spy's literally near the low of the day. You've already filled, you've literally gone into 4160. So like I'm saying, this will be like a minor level if we can't hold it. It's just, we may spend today just testing the 4155 and then 
you got to do exactly what you did yesterday of like confirming that that's going to hold up. Mm. Wolf is running. Yeah, 16. They did good. Again, they were down 40% from last quarter, and then they finally had a good earnings. Intel's still moving up. T-Mobile. Intel's about to hit $36. That's kind of impressive considering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was hella cold today when I woke up, too. I live in California, but it was it was cold when I woke up. I had my little ghetto space heater on. I was sitting next to it while I was getting stock quotes, you know, trying to warm my hands up. It was freezing. CRISPR trading halted FDA advisory committee to review biologics license application. All right, you're still at the low, though. Watch out again. This is a decently important level, but could help us set up the shape. And remember, another hour later till Euro close today. So, again, we either hold 4160 or we start testing 4155, and then that's the real level you need to hold or not. Blinken and Austin to testify to Senate panel on spending request. Uh, Russia win in Ukraine would embolden Iran, Blinken says. Your Chihuahua is not happy about this. He has his sweater buried under two blankets. I feel I could understand what he I felt like a Chihuahua like, like this morning until you like when you said that. I said, that's my man. I feel, I feel. Mm-hmm. Did someone steal my breaker box again? No, no, no. I just had technical difficulties yesterday. No, no breaker box was stolen. My, my internet just went out on, like, everything. All right, you're right below 4160. Watch if we hit another low. 4157 is the low of the day. Literally a point higher from where we're at. Why did I think Microsoft was meta? Again, tech is just dumped. So literally, you held up from all of yesterday, pre-market, everything was looking good. And then instead of a cash open buy, you've literally just had a cash open dump. Sarepta is bouncing a little bit. Again, this thing was down 40% off of the uh, bad drug approval, but they're trying to get a move here. I noted, but is E-Trade sending out important information about the Fed meeting tomorrow? Uh, I didn't check or I didn't get one. I didn't realize how many chats from Chicago. There's a lot of Chicago chats. Again, even uh, I think the number two listener audience of Uncle Answers is Chicago still, which is mind-blowing. So, yeah, a lot of Chi-Town in here. I love you guys. I've never been there. I've never been there in my life. It's decent, I heard. It's decent. That's what I heard. That's what I heard. You know, I know, I know, I know, I know a little bit. I know a little bit. The news hasn't announced the end of the UAW. I think there's still like a couple moving parts, but yesterday the, there was a lot of updates with GM Stellantis and all of that. Your friend works for them and they go back tomorrow. Sounds like a done deal. I think it is. I mean, I don't know if there's like any smaller companies still left out, but for the most part, you got a lot of it. I'm I'm just shocked it took, what, six or 12 weeks or whatever. It's like actually mind blown. I haven't had coffee in two days. My head was hurting. Now I'm going to see how long I can go without it. Yeah, you'll be good. You'll be good. Once you get over the hump, you'll be fine. GLD went green. Watch Sarepta. I kind of want to play it, but then I'm like, it's either one. It's going to end up down 70 or it's going to end up down 20 on the day. So we'll see. GLD is running up. I don't think oil is moving, which makes it a little bit more interesting. Let's see your boy. 
Let me see, 8225. 82 is a very low level considering. I'm sorry, you break from 82 again. I mean, it starts to get a little wicked. So I'd watch that. UEC on the high. I think we saw that one yesterday as well, too. NASDAQ down 0. 0.5. SPY 0. 0.17. Now Dow 0. 0.24. Russell is break even. So usually on these days, the Russell would be the one that was dying or not. I'm not going to play Airbnb uh, unless maybe the calls, but I think that 3% run up yesterday kind of messed everything up. Uh, but I think I'm just going to wait again like this so far. I mean, after the last earnings, even today, I was getting a little hopeful because of like Anet and Pinterest holding up. But then this morning, I mean, we woke up to pretty bad earnings. Wolf is still going, but uh, the general idea that I'm looking into uh, would be, uh, what's it called? Oh, I just blanked. Uh, the general idea would be uh, focusing on everything but earnings. That's why Airbnb, I didn't really uh, look at it too much. Again, even Apple, I think, is going to be important. But I do think, you know, where bonds end up and how they hold up, I think that will be of the utmost importance. Appreciate answering the questions, of course. I I appreciate good questions, baby. October M and I Chicago report business index at forty four, estimate forty five, so a slight contraction. I mean, again, we had slightly good data this morning. It brought us down a lot. I don't know if the market's like hypersensitive, but remember we were right here, and then ECI came in. So you're getting Chicago uh, M and I, but let's see. I mean, bad is good. I just think it's kind of, uh, I'm not really giving too much weight unless it really moves the bonds or the dollar. But even then, uh, I just, I, I'm kind of chalking it up to the market being jumpy uh, rather than not. ARDX, we've seen that a couple of times. Mm. Yeah, so that's Chicago PMIs. You got Consumer Conference Board in 15 minutes. And Dallas Fed 15 minutes after that. So five again, spies at the bottom. It's weird. VWAP just, I don't know if it's tripping out on that candle there, but you got a little move again, 4160. It's not a bad level. It's not the best, but we get above the 4170 again. Then you could work your way past the levels and play that game. Otherwise, if we go lower, I mean, you're just going to be dealing with every single. Uh, level that you've already gone through ccj ibd pick coin on the high now and paypal coin actually going straight up low key coinbase up two percent and five candles there tesla wants 200 yeah tesla started waking up i mean tesla's already recovered it was down 1.5 so tesla's low key moved two percent already intraday on this type of move con uh, con conference board of consumer confidence so it's not Michigan Consumer Conference. It's the Conference Board. It's just a different survey. Oh, dude, did you guys see it? How many of you have followed, like, the Fed on Instagram and shit, bro? I think they did it just to fucking confuse us. I, bro, I follow these Fed accounts on Instagram. <coughs> I opened up my Instagram the other day, and then there's this guy who work at the Fed, and he's just like, hey, do you know about our our business surveys? We invite you guys to participate in our business surveys. And I was like, bullshit. You don't invite anybody. We've never met anybody who's done these surveys unless it was the binder guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bro, it blew my mind. They're, they're trying to leg legitimize their survey process with an Instagram post. Uh-huh. I said, bullshit. I see what you're doing. Oh, you're trying to make it look like y'all just went on Instagram and asked everybody, yo, man, how's credit conditions? No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Mm hmm. I need to get your Fed follows. It's kind of disturbing. <laughs> After like two weeks of following the Fed and seeing what they post, I've been, like, if you thought like I had faith in the institution, I have even less now. After all, I'm like, man, this is crazy. It's weird watching Bostick post for socials. This is really weird, bro. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween, man. Trick or treat. That's, that's, the bond market. Mm. 
Uh, the yen is causing a lot of this. I would just say with the dollar, but then granted, I will like, you, there's two ways to look at it. Is the yen very important in affecting the dollar? Yes. But we were up even with the yen having an issue in the morning. So this was like off the ECI and then, you know, you're adding it to everything else. And then again, a lot of earnings this morning, they really weren't that hot. So it's a mix of the yen, but also, you know, we, we were holding up and we gave it up, uh, gave it up in the pre-market. But I would just say it's more along the lines of, we we're rallying on Monday and then trying to figure out if we could actually hold it on Tuesday. And so far for the last month and a half, I mean, we haven't been able to do that. So I think this is kind of just part of that, again, trying to find relief or, 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 or turn around. We got a little bit of data here coming up. It shouldn't be too much, but again, I mean, you got little Chicago PMIs moving you right here. And then in the morning, again, the ECI, which we talked about on the watch list a lot. Uh, you know, we did discuss how that had the ability to move the market, and sure enough, it did. Coinbase on the high, SPY trying to go down to the low. SRPT. So it's starting to come up even more, still down 40. Again, they had bad phase three data. Uh, REITs are coming down. So watch there again. If REITs and finance give up, that won't be good as far as broader relief. Bonds, TLT still up by 0.5. What are the rates? You should expect no rate increase. So 5.25 to 5.5 should be uh, the expectation. We really shouldn't get much. Myrna, they're coming up. Again, keep in mind Pfizer, you know, they had bad news there, slowing COVID sales. GLD is wakey. It's only 0.18, so it's like recovering a little bit of yesterday, but, I mean, for the most part, it's at least saying something that it's moving considering everything's going down. GVA, what's the granite construction? They're shooting up. We're broking 41.66, and you were back down to the level, which uh, we spent a lot of time on yesterday. So, unfortunately, now this is like what? This will be the fourth day of being stuck in this range so you cannot get above 4177 since Wednesday morning or you did for five minutes two minutes and then came back down so literally last Thursday till today I mean 4177 to 4100 uh, again 4100 has kind of been uh, locked and that's off of having relief yesterday a little relief this morning and then you know the smallest thing kind of uh upending it but we'll see it's still very early right now it's only been 32 minutes and then coin coming right back down, SPXS. Lee Auto on the low, Pinduo Duo. I think China names are dumping now a little harder. Mm -hmm. Microsoft. NVIDIA is still below 400. New low, though. Again, TLTW, stocks down, bonds up. That's the interesting part about all of this, though. So below 4155, that's crazy. So now you're just you're back to shitty land. I, I call it shitty just because, I mean, again, we, we really ran after moving this level yesterday, but every other time, I mean, we came right back down. W E we work on the low. We work down eight and a half percent. Tesla a little bit off the bottom. We'll see. No sound. Yeah, no. I got quiet there for a little bit. Again, I was I was sending out a stream alert, letting them know again at forty one fifty five. Uh, this is the level. This is what we fought for yesterday. So just watch if it really acts as like support or resistance here. 
because, I mean, it would be unfortunate if we had to just do another day of yesterday. So, like, even if we flush a little bit, you rally from here. But if we flush even more, it's like you don't want to spend the same, you know, seven hours just to be at the same spot. So a little bit off the bottom here. We'll see if that does anything again. Like I was telling you from like here, stocks down, bonds up, which is uh, haven't seen too often, but hopefully that could kind of hold up or at the very least, if equities do like the fact that bonds are doing good. Lead stocks green. Tesla. Yeah, and Tesla's like going back and forth between negative and green. CCJ still going. Remember, that was the IBD pick. Whirlpool's even up. My goodness. So spy back to where we just had that little three candle flush. I think it's 4160 again or right below it. Again, Russell's even negative. Everything's negative, even the VIX actually. So that's the interesting part. VIX is still ultimately lower. So watch if the VIX does start getting back to yesterday's like levels. If we do dump, then you'll know kind of that's that's kind of how it's played out when we've given up any of these big gains. It's kind of been that scenario. Uh, Coinbase coming right back down. You guys watch that little pop and lock again. The equal weight, I'm pretty sure, is still killing it. No, equal weight came back down. So equal weight at one point was positive 0.4. So now equal weight has given up the gains, and then so has uh, SPY, tech stocks, all of that. XLP. Boil on the high. Ford and GM. GM was going up earlier. Uh, GM, Ford's up 1.8. GM's up 1.0 right now. Interesting. So maybe that, again, announcement yesterday, the UAW, you are getting some follow through. SoFi's killing it. 6.2 at the high. Intel, new high now, 36 bucks. They're ripping. So, again, they're still holding. Remember, AMD is after the bell. The Pfizer dying. I think someone said watch Myrna. Yeah, Pfizer 2.6. It's a little bigger now. Usually they move like 1% to 2% on their earnings. So I think they were pricing in like 4.1, but they are 2.6. And again, their earnings wasn't good. Caterpillar, they came up a little bit. Their earnings was good, but then people were just focused on like the growth rate. Thoughts on Stan Drunkenmiller's comments on Yellen? Uh, what did he say? I didn't, I did not hear or did not make it to our morning, our morning discussion. Hezbollah says targets Israeli uh, tank with guided missiles. Uh, the Conference Board of Consumer Confidence is about to come out here in two minutes. Two minutes. And then you're right at the level where the last data came out. I mean, we were just holding up right here. Again, I think the SPXEW, the equal way, that one's uh, interesting. He said she should be fired for not locking in rates. I mean, if that's the reason you want to fire her, yeah, I got like 15 other ones. Uh, but yeah, let's do it. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's not, dude, I mean, it's not like it was, uh, if you knew this was going to happen or like, if you were even in the government, I mean, it is kind of, uh, like you, you, sh I'd, I'd hope Yellen saw this coming. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And then, but to, to go and raise as much as they did, I mean, that's the wild part in a weird way. I mean, it just guaranteed that like a good portion of the government debt, is just going to be paid at, at a much higher interest rate, which is, it's like the reverse of Donald Trump's plan to refinance. So, you know, when Donald Trump was like, I want to refinance America, and everyone's like, you fucking idiot. <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? Uh, but, you know, it, it made sense in, in, in theory, but, like, you weren't able to do it, right? You wouldn't have been able to, to, to do that. But in this case, this is like a reverse refinance. This was like if Donald Trump was like, you know, I want to try to pay the highest interest possible. So let's raise the most amount we've ever raised at the highest rate we've ever done it. 
So it's like a reverse refinance. They just refinance for higher, higher for longer, I guess, is a better way to put it. 30 seconds here. Again, little data, and then 15, 30 minutes after, you're going to get more uh, Dallas Fed services 30 minutes after this. The number is 100. So expectations are for 100 on consumer confidence. Mm. What do you expect from a guy who wanted to nuke hurricanes and inject bleach? No, I feel you, but that's why I'm saying, like, now at this point, whatever Yellen did was, I mean, what did you, like, that's the whole, but that's the, that's the kind of the concept there is that Yellen did a very Trump-esque type of move, if you think about it, but kind of probably caused more damage than Trump did. Uh, U.S. consumer confidence, 102.6, estimate 100.5. I mean, nothing's... Watch if the bonds could get a move. I mean, equities, I don't know if they know how to take that. So slightly better, but I mean, once again, all economic data, hard or soft, I'm pretty sure has been advancing. The yen, yeah, yen's flushing a little lower. So bonds, that's the next big problem. You guys got to realize, so if Powell by Wednesday doesn't save the bonds uh, or pretty much give something that everybody likes, the problem is that, TLT and the bonds, I mean, you bonds could go lower. Again, that correlation still remains, and now the yen is pointing lower while bonds are trying to base out here. Mm. Big candles on dollar. I'm Dude, again... You're reacting to the data here, but this is kind of all, it feels bigger than what it is. It kind of reminds me of yesterday when we had the, what's it called? The refunding and you're getting this move. But I mean, we shouldn't be dumping too heavy on the conference board of consumer confidence. So we'll see. But as of now, good data, another low on the market, another sell off in bonds, but we're still green. I think it's just more of the natural, again, just pressure we've been dealing with more or less. JKS was from yesterday. So watch out here. But bonds are responding a little bit going down here. We've had two little data sets, two small reactions. And now we're all waiting. The next data will be in 30 minutes. Uh, Dallas Fed Services. Mm, yeah, and then uh, oil numbers, then a bond auction, one-year bond auction. And then that's it. Then tomorrow, you got a lot of PMIs. ECB holding. Yeah, dollars uh, dollars rocketing. Honestly, that's not good right there. So literally from the data, dollar rockets, bond down, but like we're you like you guys called out with the yen. I mean, you could kind of see it right here, but dollars right about to be at 30 bucks again. And I don't think we've had a good day uh, ever if the market's been at 30. The dollar again, that Thursday Friday, how we got into this mess was the dollar rocketing back above 30 and then leaving us there. Mm. EPAM AWS partnership. Powell, same time, one thirty or two thirty PM Eastern. EPAM CVM. That was the one from yes. That was the lung cancer one. Or the neck cancer. Ah uh, yeah, they are waking up. That one's interesting. Again, there's a couple of biotechs today. Oh, who was the other one? Beam. Yeah, Beam's actually starting to run up a little bit here. Again, they licensed uh, a part of their uh, one of their drugs to uh, Eli Lilly. Powell is tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Sorry if I said today. This is what happens when everybody asks the same question. When it's like it don't change, but like you know what I'm saying. I'm I'm just start I, I start short circuiting. I just start saying random shit. But you know, it never it's all the same time, same date every single time for the beginning of time. And the schedule comes out at the beginning of the year, too, uh, at, mind you. So it's set in stone from the beginning. RCL's flushing. Yeah, the equal weight is not is not good. The fact that at one point it was, like, really looking good, but now even the equal weight is given up all of yesterday. Not all of yesterday, but at least where you closed from. But in general, I mean, again, that the, the type of optimism we had in the morning, it just disappeared right at the bell. 
<laughs> I don't know if you guys notice it. Beam is going up. I just had that up there. That's the one related to uh, Eli Lilly. But, like, dude, it's wild to think that, again, you remember those days at the beginning of the year when it would just be buy the cash open no matter what happened, ding, ding, ding. Everybody would just buy the cash open. I mean, you're watching these days where, like, dude, you are up almost 1% on the NASDAQ. Again, futures were up, like, 0.6 to 0.8 in the morning. Bonds were up 1%. And then, ding, 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 you're just selling it all off. It's It's actually insane. Mm. Moves not really moving. I it's because bonds are just chilling here. That's why I'm saying it's in a weird way. Your yen is the risk. So literally, if Powell and the data and everything at the end of this week is not good, and then the yen keeps weakening, there's a very good chance the bond yields are going to follow along. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Is if the yen goes above 155, pretty much 160. I don't know if the yields are going to stay below uh, five on the 10-year. And that's kind of the, again, welcome to the bond-yen correlation, more or less. Mm. Boils on the high? I don't know. Do we blame the, do we blame the cold weather? MDT... Uh, looks like EW again. Those are sympathies. Yeah, I think the dollar does need to calm down. Like I said, anytime, anytime we've been at 30 on the dollar, I mean, the market just hasn't had a good time. The bond and yen correlation is that historically bonds and yens have a, like a really high correlation, a positive one. So if bonds weaken, uh, if the yen weakens, bonds weaken. If the yen strengthens, the the bond strengthens in America. Mm. For we're holding forty one fifty five. Like I just told you guys earlier, watch if this is like a real support or resistance. Let's see if we either you know bounce off of it good support let's get back to what we were doing otherwise if it fails and then we play the game of not getting above it and it kind of turns into a wall then we'll have an issue there so we'll see but i mean right now equities are in their own little land but dollars negative bonds are looking positive so let's see just where this takes us The blanket in Austin hearing keeps getting interrupted by protesters calling for a ceasefire now. Really? Where's this protest or where's this uh, conference? Oh, yeah, Reuters. Our own security and our own standing in the world. The conflicts in Ukraine and the Middle East. Oh, they're testifying before Senate? How do these protesters keep getting into government like meetings? Like, I can't even play a Donald Trump video without getting banned. How the fuck are you getting protesters into Senate, into the Fed, luncheons? I don't get I don't get it, man. You're going straight up, though, off fossil finance, Jay. It's working. Tesla, again, you're getting a launch out of nowhere. So 41.55, maybe that's the support. You just rocketed up five, six points right there. Still got to get above here. Don't fall for it just yet. But if you want a launch pad off there and that continues... Maybe that just gets us out of the hole real quick, but otherwise just 4155 acting as support for now. Israeli official says no hostage deal in sight. Pin to a duo on the low. All right, man, if that could hold, I'll take it. Tesla's still going. Again, Tesla's back to 1.1. The only thing I don't like is the dollar. <clears throat> That's the only one. I mean, Spy's only down by 0.14. So as far as going green, I mean, that won't be too big of an issue as long as we don't flush below 41.55. So again, if we could hold here, I mean, this is where you go green. You're six points away. So it's not too much. Revis, oh, three months, baby. God bless you. What would rates be at if TLT shares were worth $5? 
Oh, I don't know. Maybe I mean you could do the math, but probably like forty percent or something. I don't know. <laughs> something ridiculous. Something ridiculous. That pop came from nowhere, but but then again, like like I was just telling you, the drops. I mean, it it feels like yesterday where you know we got the refunding and you got a pop on the bonds, but it quickly gave it up. It's like you have to zoom out. None of these pops on the bonds are big. We were again two weeks ago. We were moving way bigger just for the fuck of it. <laughs> it was insane. So that's why it's like I don't know why we were reacting at the data, but therefore. I, I don't think there's a reaction for the bounce either. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't think the data brought us down, but I also don't think anything, you know, caused us to move. Is, is like I'm saying, I just think it's the flows and the natural movement that we're just getting with all of this pressure. You're back to break even now, uh, just under about to fill gap. So like we're saying, it's acting as support here. That's a very good sign for now, but still way, way too much time in the day. Unbelievable spy positive. No, 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 no. Remember, this morning, the SPY was positive. So the SPY was hitting a new high than yesterday, and then we came down off of ECI. So in a weird, that's why I'm saying, like, it's it's one thing to watch intraday, but just keep in mind where we're coming from and the progress. Because, yeah, you're like, wow, that's hitting a new high, but then I go back five more days, you're still in the gulag. You know, this is not a, a place where you would be excited to be as a market, if that makes any sense. You know, it's like, it's like, do you ever watch F1? You know, my girlfriend made me watch F1 with her the other weekend. And like, it's hilarious when they like zoom in on the dudes in last. And it was like the guy going from last place to one above last place. That's how I feel about the market. So the last couple of days we were in last place and then we moved up to second to last and everyone's like, fuck yeah. Woo! We did it. And I'm like, wait, well, hold on for a minute, sir. We're, we're still in 17th place. On the week or on the month, you know, we have to, we still got to make up like two more weeks just to get back to like the top five or something like that. So we're rocketing though. Again, no, the data was right before data was five minute before sold off a little bit. And now you're rocketing off literally nothing. And it was just dollar popped on the data and dollar coming back down brought you higher. But remember where the dollar was at this morning. I mean, we were a lot lower, but this gap up was good enough to kind of hold some of these. So spy back to green, Russell back into green now. And then the Dow is trying to follow along. Citron positive notes. He does positive notes. INVZ. Innoviz. Mm. XOM green. Why spy rocketing? We don't know. But you have to get timed out for that rocket. But like I was saying, just a lot a lot of the dump, you could blame the data, but it just didn't seem like the data was that important. And then on this run up, I mean, there's no way to put your finger on it. I think all of the little drops and pops here, there is some data connection, but I just think we are dancing around, moving around, trying to figure out the end of the month, Halloween, how to set up into Powell and the earnings and react to positive European inflation data while at the same time react to negative earnings that we've had. So it's just creating a lot of the tension and movement. And I don't know where the volume is at. 10 million right now. And it's been what? 30 minutes, 45 minutes. Bonds have gotten activated. We'll see. I, I, you know, I showed you on the video yesterday and I love it because I think it's a, it's a great visual and it makes a lot of sense, but we just need uh you need the tenure. You need to go below these peaks. So now today, if we could hold, if the bonds hold here, this is better than not. We need a bill before Powell, but unfortunately, look at Jerome Powell's tomorrow. Even if the bond yields drop, if tomorrow he's bad, we go above the last peaks and then you have the data, you're fucked. Again, if Powell comes in tomorrow, kind of chills everybody out. I don't know how he's going to do it, but he does. And the yields start to set uh, you know, four eight five to four five or four seven. Whew, that that would be better than not. If we stay below the peaks, you have a better chance of rallying. Other other than that, like I'm trying to tell you, if if we are above the latest peaks in the month and rates keep staying elevated, we're gonna be dealing with this for a long, long time. I mean, you're gonna keep getting this volatility and downside because clearly, you know, that interest rate and that repricing is what 
has been wreaking havoc on all of us uh, for the last three months here. Marathon CEO Richards live. Schumer House GOP Israel aid bill is woefully inadequate. X like United Steel or Twitter. United Steel's up three. Spy still, again, this wackiness. Literally cash open, sell off straight for 20 minutes. And now random, what? There's been 10 minutes of popping. You get, you've recovered all 30 minutes of those losses. And now you're slightly near the high. Again, 4170. This was the level from yesterday. U.S. to impose form of sanctions on Myanmar oil and gas. Myanmar? What's Myanmar? Like Myanmar? Mm-hmm. The ARC trade, yeah, yeah, yeah. That one, we grabbed it uh, not too long ago. It's down now, but, yeah, I didn't plan for that one to be, like, anything, sh like, crazy. Again, we have till the end of the year. That was, again, playing, uh, you know, if we do get a rally in rates, if things do calm down, uh, then I do think ARC has a, a, a opportunity to win. Hate directed at Jewish students in U.S. following Gaza conflict. Adding the increasing anti-Semitism, U.S. Homeland Security, X-52 week highs. All right. Dollars coming back. Dude, dollar both got near 30 quick. It still is near 30, but only by five cents, but came down quick off of that little high there. Schumer says house deal will uh, increase budget deficit. All right, you're running up here, checking the video. They're still down three. AMD is not down too much, 0.41. Remember, they have earnings. And then Intel, they have been the leading chip maker so far. Mm. Okay, it's hold for now. ICT solid. And CVM, that one held. Oh, yeah, where's overstock? And then Coinbase is back up. Israel officials focus of Gaza combat is on north. The southeast turn will come later. Jeez, why do, dude, why do all of their, like, military headlines sound like they're talking so much shit? <laughs> it's not even like some of these headlines up from the military officials. They're like, it's not going to look the same when we done. Your turn will come. These feel like one liners from Call of Duty. I'm like, man, this is wild. Uh, JBL, a lot of names running now, actually. High Taker is gassing. FedEx. Spy, Dow, Russell, All Green, NASDAQ still red. You are now about to get above the opening candle. If we could get above here, I mean, this would be nice. It's like halfway through. You get to ECI zone at like 92, but I mean, shit, for the most part, you're kind of holding this up pretty decent. Let's see if we could break above it. So you are you already went just this less than an hour or just about an hour. Yeah, le under an hour, you went from hitting and low of the day to retesting the first peak on the chart. So we'll take it for now. Sell it all. Well, everybody had the idea of puts in the morning. Again, usually people like the rally, but after doing it a couple times, I think a lot of people woke up this morning and were like, not today, market maker. That's it. And they didn't buy the rally. They shorted it, and then you kind of got it, but... 
now we're hopefully we don't do what we did yesterday. Remember, yesterday was awkward. You had a lot of movement. And then right after like eight o'clock, bro, we did nothing for three hours. So we are holding a level. You've shown nice support at 41.55 today. Doesn't mean it'll hold for the whole day. But I mean, we could get range bound. Let's see. My transition day, I think, is supposed to be on the fourth. I'm checking now. Yeah, it still says the fourth or whatever. Mm. You're transitioning. Well, two out of three accounts. I got, I got, I'm still in there. I got a, a lot of progress made on it, but I have one account that moved to E-Trade, but I still don't have full access to it. And then the other two I'm moving to Schwab. Uh, again, I tried to do it, and then I got into an issue with them uh, in the process, and then it fucked up my thing, my, like, process. So I decided to keep the other two there and call it a day. Outlook. Oh, Outlook is running. Again, last time it got here, it went up to the 90s, but then it just <laughs> it just came down. But that would be nice. The low on the SPY and QQQ. I mean, SPX, low of the day, 41.53. High of the day, 41.73.1. So we're like literally right near the high. And honestly, it was 10 minutes ago you were just at the low. So it's kind of wicked. Fed meeting is tomorrow. As well as the refunding update in the morning and then the Jolt's jobs opening. So like today... If you guys are seeing, you know, the pre-market, the bonds, how everything is, like, tomorrow by the time we wake up, even the first hour, it should be wild. Remember when snap move with pins? Can we bring that back? Well, they used to kind of report the same, but now again, Pinterest, uh, you know, they came through. Their earnings was actually really good. So they're still kind of in the gulag, but I mean, Pinterest, they, they beat on everything. It was a combo. It was a nice combo of literally everything. They beat on users. They beat on profits. They beat on revenue and they saved money. They cut, they cut costs. So it was actually a pretty solid report out of, uh, at a young Pinterest. Roku on the high. Tesla. Now you're getting that wave of stocks. Maybe watch out if tech starts leading because that was the leader in the morning. Then we gave it up. Yeah, equal weight even came back up. But now SPX might start leading the equal weight. So NASDAQ still red. Spy still green. Dow's in the red. And then Russell, they're green. Too green, too red. Mm hmm. Uh, Microsoft.
when applying to internships, getting nervous. Where are you at with the real estate course? Hopefully you made progress. DE. Yeah, Deer's coming up on the high. They're still red. CP again. You had that little run there with uh, Tesla and a couple of others, but we kind of chilled out. But still holding 4170, man. You're right below it. This is This was the range from yesterday where a lot of the action started. The next squeeze is EV demand jargon. I don't even think. I think the next squeeze will be off of just when we finally don't have bad news to respond to. But again, it's been about three months with, you know, even like the bonds being bad. All all of that has been bad. So, you know, that's why the relief is so, you know, a lot of people are just looking for relief. Uh, as as minor as that may sound, that would be a good enough catalyst for, for a lot of things here. CP, again, high ticker is still way more active. I'm seeing even a lot of uh, biotech plays, like even blues going up there. But Spy still kind of struggling, equal weight, non-equal weight, kind of in their own world with uh, non-equal weight doing the best. If Powell pauses tomorrow, should we expect gold to rip with the logic or one step closer? I think it's kind of already doing it. So I would say yes, but the question is, is it already priced in? So like I'm saying is that from the last thing and even the last Powell, I mean, you got a fat bit on it, but... In theory, your your gen your theory is correct, but as far as like it playing out like that and not being fully priced in, that's going to be hard to tell. A U T L. Match. Match is running. I think they had something in the morning. VLDX. What's this? Oh, no. I just saw it on the... Is it VDLX? I just saw it on the high ticker. Oh, I guess... I guess I missed it. Pfizer came back a little bit from the bottom. Still red on the day. MU. What about coin? Dollar's trying to creep up a little bit. Dollar's super weird. Working on real estate every night, baby. Let's go. Uh, my recent long term was MO. I like $42, and then they did bad on earnings and went down. But that was my latest one. And I think the one before that was Pfizer. Bank of Japan News, they did a minor tweak, which wasn't really enough, and now people are still worried about uh, that carrying over into a week or yen. Uh, PayPal's at the high. They're still running up a little bit. Outlook, they had that big candle after 60. Bumble on the high again. Match and Bumble, both the dating apps they've been running. And Roku, I feel like I've seen Roku a lot. Roku's up three, running into the high. Google's coming down. Meta, remember Meta was down three in the morning or something like that. They looked ugly. And then Apple, I forgot Apple is Thursday. That is still one of the big dogs we are waiting for. Mm. Am I still holding Radco? Yes. Covered the covered calls, so now I'm just down on the shares. So the question is either sell by the end of the year or we try to make something out of it. I mean, maybe I don't sell at the end of the year, but, I mean, it would be a good place to use some of the taxes or a tax loss after all of that. Fubo to offer exclusive perks for investors with shareholder loyalty. Yeah, I have seen that. I'm not you don't want you don't want that. So like, yeah, nah. The last time I saw them reward you in like real life for using the ticker. It was AMC. So I don't know. If Fubo's like, yo, man, we'll give you a discount if you own our shares, I would run away. 
Again, anything that they do anything out of AMC's playbook, it just it just starts to get weird. But then again, like Ford, so like companies like Ford, do you know if you've owned if you've owned more than a hundred shares of Ford for a year, they'll give you a, a what's it called? Like you'll get like a discount on the car, or I think they hook you up on the financing. There's some level of uh, shareholder benefit, so it's not totally uncommon, but. Like I'm saying, if it just make sure it doesn't get too scammy. If it don't like if it looks start looking like that AMC free popcorn shit, I would run away. Is Google gonna become a failing company now? Been hearing a lot of bad news on it. That's just how Google is, unfortunately. There may be a day. Uh, where Google actually gets threatened, but I mean, it's been year after year of like talking about what could go wrong and, and all of the problems that, you know, what happens if YouTube slows down, what happens if this happens, all of that. But if anything, there's only one like there's one real Google killer out there right now and the real Google killer. And I wouldn't and maybe it would wound it. I don't know about killing it, but. The only one right now that people are worried about is that Google is way behind the AI. So think about Microsoft. Microsoft Google created Google, the search engine. And, and you know, Yahoo tried to get in, Ask Jeeves, and then Microsoft tried to get in with uh, with Bing. And they thought Bing.com, what the fuck? They thought Bing. Who's going? Nobody binged until recently. And even then, the Bing didn't last. But after that, you know, they, they fell behind in search. But now what people are worried about is that this time around, Google is is behind the AI. Microsoft now is the one with the advantage. Microsoft has the search engine, quote unquote, the AI stuff. And that's where now people are worried that Google just go look at their cloud, go look at everything they're doing. They're really behind everybody. So, like, that's the thing where I think Google can fall back is that, you know, you go, like, look at Google Cloud and compare it to AWS or Microsoft. I mean, there's no competition. I mean, they're making money, but it's just like, dude, why Google is, is really behind in those areas that have brought some of these companies to be able to compete with Google. So, we'll see. We'll see, but that's that's the whole Google's about to die debate. It's what we're seeing if they really lose that dominance because of their, you know, lack of AI or how they've moved into cloud and AI stuff. Is this why the executive order? Maybe. Shit. <laughs> There's enough time for Google to catch up. Oh, yeah, well, that's the thing about Google. It's, it's fucking Google. And now, literally, you have the government telling you that if it's not approved by the government, then you can't do anything. So that's a great way to, uh, you know, reshape the, the competition landscape. Uh, you know, think that's the problem with politics sometimes is because, you know, the open market, you'll have a competition, competitors, you know, people providing this. But like like I'm saying, you know, all it takes is, oh, you can't sell that. So now you go from 10 competitors to nine. Oh, you can't sell that. Now nine competitors to two. So we'll see. But I do think they have time. It just as of now, that that, that is where uh, they are falling behind. We're chilling still. Again, ever since 4170 bounce, we kind of calmed down. The Fed service revenue index was at least 8.7. They predicted 7, and it came in at 0.7. The Fed services revenue? I haven't looked into that. If anything, I mean, all of the... I, at this point, I'm... I really hope it's everybody understands it, but the data doesn't really show you anything anymore. Unfortunate. That's why I'm like, I can, maybe people want to react, but 
every piece of data, I'm I'm assuming it's very old. Uh, that's why even the markets, like right now, with the data that we've received in the last three months, it's been decent data, as weird as that may sound. That's why it's like the when we're receiving it is causing all of this weird reaction. But it's, I would really argue that it's not even moving us <laughs> to a degree or it's not accurate. That's why like, you know, right at the last hike, you're watching this sell off. We've seen more reactions now to bonds than not. It's like, it's a weird, we're using data as a weird excuse to determine policy. But it's like, if you're really paying attention, the data is just, it's in another room. It's not even like they we're not even talking the same neighborhood of some stuff. And that's why it's just like, if whatever you see in that regards, that's why I'm like, I would just, I would play the market. I would look at the banks. I would look at companies and what they're saying. Watch how people respond to interest rates. If interest rates and funding moves, that's probably going to give you more guidance than not, unfortunately. But, you know, again, we're playing this wait for very hyped up data. It comes out, you react, and then, and then once again, it gets revised. So there's all of those problems with it. Does PayPal have any future? What's their edge? Uh, first mover. I mean, they've been, you know, a lot of people know them by name, brand, and name recognition. And then the fact, I think it's like what? I want to say it's over 500 million users a month. So I, I think maybe even more. But that's that's the part with PayPal that I never uh, I never get when people are like, it's dying, it's dead. I'm like, don't they have more people on their platform than citizens in the United States. So, you know, and that's, again, what they do uh, globally and all of that. That's why I like them. At least that's my opinion on it. I'm interested. I don't think you could post the links. I think that's why I'm, I, I, did you post the link? I want to see it. Email it to me, man. Let me see it. Let me see it. Oh, wait, I, you already did. I got this one. Yeah, I don't know if I, I you have it on YouTube. Up against this. <laughs> yeah, bro, I need to watch this. So this is what I, I almost said this to you guys. I'll post this in the chat. This is crazy. So Mr. Marcus Hanlon, the guy who mixed F-350, he made you a tutorial on I'm going to post this one to Cole Real Estate. Or call real estate, call music. No way. Compression. This is an optical compressor. Oh, compression. look at you. An optical compressor. Works pretty good on vocals. Then ear. Oh, I didn't see. I didn't. A lot of vocals after having all the No way, dude. You can hear the original. That's crazy, bro. Oh, hell yeah. Good work, bro. Yeah, he did it for the chat. I Man, y'all can learn some music. Some of you were even oh, and then the video's unlisted, bro. So if you make sure it's public, and then uh, I can even post it on the other channel too. Ah, free ninety nine. How to build the F three fifty? The yen needs to correct. Well, the yen again. Like I'm saying, I said it earlier in the morning. I really hope everybody gets it, but like Japan is about to like even it's it's gonna get really wild. Because after today, it's supposed to get like, you know, again, the, the policy tweak wasn't enough. The yen weakens. If it keeps weakening from here, then it's going to uh, it's, it's, it's going to go nuts. So overall, like the, the problem is if the yen keeps weakening, though, the government is going to have an issue with the Bank of Japan. Now the government and the central bank, they're going to have competing goals. It would be like if it's like when remember when 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 Donald Trump would complain about Powell, you know, you don't have Biden complaining about Powell in that same regard. So that would be the best example. But it's like kind of in that sense, if it goes contrary to your goals and what you're doing, you know, they're, they're going to get really, really mad. Yeah, they have negative rates, but the problem was. They've had negative rates since, what, 2015, 2016? And the thing is, the currency never weakened, right? But now, the currency is weakening. The rates are still negative. 
their their economic activity is picking up. But now for the first time in a while, the Japanese are paying slightly higher prices and their currency is worth less money. So that's the problem of that I'm saying is that even though they've had negative rates, if it stays negative now and their currency keeps losing value, eventually the citizens, they're getting screwed. Imagine if you were in Japan and you own the yen, you would be getting pissed off right now because now your rates are still negative. You're getting charged. <laughs> you have to spend money, right? You're being encouraged to spend all this money. Prices are going up, but now your currency is buying you 10, 20% less. And then again, the that's on the global scale, but then internally it's just, it's wicked. So it is wild. So that is the next thing we got to watch out for. It's just eventually it's becoming a problem where they'll have that issue. I've never been to Japan, no, but I would I want to go right now. I'm telling you, you could it's cheap. You can maximize everything. You figured it was accepted. Well, negative rates were accepted because the currency would stay strong. So that's why nobody gave a shit. It was just like us when rates were at zero and it was stable, nobody cares. So the thing about Japan, when they have negative rates, the majority of their history, even with negative interest rates, the value of their currency wasn't getting messed up. And they like literal prices. They, they had a strong currency, even though they had negative interest rates. That's why they still saved money. The government tried to make them spend it, all of that stuff. But for the most part, it wasn't, you know, it, it just they got they didn't have any negative consequences of it. So now unfortunately they still have those negative rates but now all of these citizens are losing 20 30 percent of their value on their currency what like what's that gonna do mm -mm. there you go twitch that's the tutorial they were asking about it Tyler Technology buys R Specs, TYL. Anet still running. Bro, dollar's back to the high now. Very weird dollar move. So, again, you had this little gap down on the dollar, rock it up at open, shoot up, come down, hit a new high, and then rally after you give up that high to go back to the same level. And then, once again, dollar is now near the high of the day, right below 30 High ticker's still running, believe it or not. And then bonds, kind of like yesterday, you know, we've been, we're bonds are just kind of doing their own thing. Lincoln says ceasefire in Gaza would preserve, would preserve Hamas gains. Spy, we did this a couple times. Again, it's like the dollar rockets up and we get volatility, but then we rally more on the dollar going barely down. It's a, I don't know, it's kind of like two steps forward, one step back. Co Harris call out last Thursday. Amen, man. It's been running since. GG if you got that one. That one's been fire. Yeah, Myanmar, Canada, UK, and US imposing sanctions on Myanmar. Yeah, this morning, that's why NVIDIA is down. This morning they said approximately $5 billion of orders could be canceled from China due to the new regulations. Any chance you could bring the Hugh guy? Uh, I've reached out to him, I think, uh, 48 hours ago, 72 hours, but I have not heard back from him. I think he has a new, uh, uh, a new media person. So I don't know what's been going on with Hugh, but, I mean, I sent the request. Uh, if he gets back to me, you know, then we'll do it. But if not, you guys are going to have to go off of everything else you've had so far, which and, – and, and at the same time, too, be mindful of the duration – Intel makes chips in U.S. Intel's doing good. 
Again, actually, they gave it up. They were at 36 earlier. I was kind of impressed by all the chip makers. AMD's only down by 0.39. They're moving up there, too. Lift red to flat. They got a huge downgrade. It, I, oh, 890. Maybe we should have took it in the... I had it on my list. I could go a little lower, probably. Maybe it does the red fin. Because remember, at parts, lift gets good. You're ripping back up now. 4171. A lot of whipsawing here, and it is not Euro close. It's only 744. That's the crazy part. So back up to the high again. Our high was 4172.90. So let's see if we get up here. Dollars borderline at the same spot. And then same thing with the bonds. I mean, we were both at lower points in the market last time both of these were there. So let's see if this could actually take us through. Again, DraftKings has earnings on Thursday. Keep that in mind. Coinbase whips on around two. NVIDIA AMD Pixie. Apple's on the high now. So, again, some bigger tech moves. Microsoft about to go green. It doesn't look like it's doing much. NVIDIA's still down. Amazon's back in the... Remember, Amazon was like, what, 3 or 4% the other day? L-I-N-N -N on the low. It looks very liquid for being a big stock. Then DV... All right, man, see if we could get up to a high. Bonds, dollar, didn't, they're still in the same spot, which aren't really giving us too many signals here. But back to the opening candle, and remember the uh, pre-market moves, we were a lot lower. Mm. What are these green shoots? It's, like I'm saying, it's like dollar rockets up. We get, like, go down off of it, but then right when the dollar goes down a little bit, you just launch. And then, meanwhile, bonds ain't doing anything. I mean, they've just been holding up this gradual bid, which is good. I mean, if we have two days of bond gains in a row lately, uh, you would flush them all out every single time. So, you know, that would be nice. That would be nice if we could get some of that. And then, once again, a little red candle there. Bond's still moving. Just watch that dollar effect. Maybe dollar goes up a little bit, spy comes down a VWAP, then dollar drops, and then we, we move up again. But for the most part, hard to make an assumption because just like yesterday, we're trapped in between these two lines. I mean, you're boxed in uh, this whole time. Israel says it struck Hezbollah infrastructure. It says anti-tank missiles, shells fired from Lebanon. Bad RTX. Yeah, I sold that at 79.60 yesterday. So they came up a little bit. They sold off and then bounced. The money is pre pal I think a lot. Of, there's a lot of pre pal on the table and end of the month too, though. So don't forget, you're gonna get your people rebalancing. Uh, you have a lot of the, the what's it called, the mutual funds, and then. Before we know it, too, you know, not every a lot of people did tax loss selling on the mutual fund side, but we still have a little bit more to go. So there's, I think there's just a lot of moving parts, and just quite frankly, we're we're running into this event, all of these events, and then it's like, dude, we're literally just like this. The bonds are still up. The bonds are still they they went on a tear. I mean, even the six month bond chart is wicked. It's not even just about the last month or week, which make made it even worse. But you start zooming that chart out, it's like, damn, you know, what what really happened? No LT buys. I don't have my deposit uh, until next week, uh, tomorrow. Or excuse me, next month, which is tomorrow. Mm. Article says real estate going to 1980 levels. That's good. 
I mean, if you think it's going to go to 1980 prices, I don't agree. But 1970s, 1980s real estate, I I agree. <laughs> RTX may be on the call. I looked at them because I got out of the shares, but I think RTX is just waiting for one big update out of Israel. But then, again, a negative one could also bring it down in the meantime. What does it mean? I don't know. It could mean a lot. Again, some people think real estate will go will crater in prices. Some people like myself uh, believe that real estate is copying uh, the movement of the 1970s to 1980s. Uh, that's the one thing I stand behind uh, very, very well. And then, again, he's saying right now, interest rates, that would make sense. We're kind of there. But, I mean, right now, for a, that's the, the weird part. Don't forget, like a 20-year bond, a 10-year bond has its own rate, but a, a mortgage is a 30-year bond, essentially. And then there's other factors, but mortgage rates are at like 8.3 to 8.9 right now, which is wild. You know, houses and townhome, the rates have you stressed in. I wouldn't worry about the rate too much if the house is a good enough deal, but if the house is like expensive and the rate is high, that's that's not a good look. Or... Again, I mean, maybe you rent where you want to live and then just go buy a cheaper investment property that could give you some good cash flow and where you benefit off of interest rather than letting it hurt you. All right, still holding up there. Dollar back up. Bonds even catching a candle, Foot Locker on the high. But, bro, equity land is in its own little world today. Maybe by Euro close, end of the day, we, we either watch one of these move. It doesn't help that the dollar is getting influenced by the yen this morning, but damn. Uh, I think even XLF, our bank's going back up. Some of them are still holding, or is that real estate? Yeah, real estate's trying to bounce a little bit. Watch if the big banks move. MPW trying to get back to five. So, again, I'm just watching that with VNQ. Bond's still catching a bit as well. Oh, yeah, gold. Yeah, gold, I mean, it's barely up, but that's still pretty big in considering oil's down today. Now, SPY's starting to break out a little bit. You're getting out of this range. Remember, it's been an hour and a half, bro. We're not even near, uh, what's it called? Like, we're not even near the uh, Euro close. So, we still got, like, what, another two hours for that? Another hour and a half? So for the high of the day is 4172. You actually haven't hit that yet. So we're making a move up again. Dollar up. Maybe it goes down on the high. Let's see what that does. High ticker is really, really gassing, though. You have everything. Let me get you a market breakdown. So so far right now, Dow Jones is uh negative 0.01, about to go break even. That's crazy. You only have six names red. So Caterpillar, Amgen, Apple, Chevron, Walgreens, Walmart, they're a big drag on the Dow right now. The other 24 names are in the green. NASDAQ 100 still red by 0.07, 33 names red, 68 names in the green. So again, more names green than red even on the NASDAQ. And then uh, S&P 500, 143 names red, 360 green. Yeah, it feels very scammy. So, I mean, literally, um, everything is green right now. I mean, again, you probably have 25, 30% of the market in the red, but it seems like they're red more than the other names are green. So, if you know, a way you could translate that is everything is pretty much at yesterday's close, slightly higher. That would make it green. And then the other names have given up more. A smaller portion have dropped more than a bigger portion going up. That's that's my breakdown of it. But 4173 now, new high of the day. We can now work our way into the pre-market high. So this was where the ECI came out uh, or like the reaction ECI came up to 416, 80, and 90. So if we could get above there, that'll be the next one. But I'm sure enough, I'm pretty sure it brings you up to the levels 478. And then we need to get back to filling the gap right here, 4186. Oh, which one is it? 
the 4177 and 4187. Yes, looking strong. It's dec I mean, it's decent. It just seems like we're kind of pinned up here at the top. But if it can run up, it would be good. It, it felt good in the morning. You know, you had that relief. You just sold off. The only thing I don't like is that bonds, or excuse me, the dollar is up. I mean, obviously, we're blaming the yen. But, you know, we're, we're definitely ignoring the dollar today to a degree. Because I, I think people are waiting to see what the yen does after Powell. But this is already pretty wicked. SoFi, they've been killing it all day. Gold, and then SPY still running up. SoFi up 7.6. So again, 4175, you're still within the range of yesterday. 4177, 4178, that's where we need to get above. And that was the high of yesterday. All right, and another high on the dollar. Ugh. That's where it gets real weird. So again, and then now dollar goes low. So literally wicked up into 29.99 came down just as the spy is hitting the high of the day here intraday at the very least. SEC alleges solar winds key executive misled investors about cybersecurity prior to massive cybersecurity attack. Oh yes, yeah, solar winds. That was the uh that Microsoft one a year or two ago. Google not being a part of the rally strange. Well, remember that one day it kind of just it, it had its own little its own little reaction to the earnings. So it's kind of uh reversed immunity, if that makes any sense. Tesla C R S R Your girlfriend just got 100 Apple, 100 NVIDIA, and 20 Amazon shares in her grandpa's will. That's, I mean, I don't know if that's good. I, I hope everything's okay, but, you know, tell her to hold them and not sell them and buy anything. That's usually where the legacy ends. Kupang, lots of China plays are all over the place right now, though. CVS on the high. Uh, Walgreens coming back up, too, and then Bonds catching another candle which is ironic, and then dollar doing that thing, but we just hit another high. Took you some time. So, again, we did this a couple times. Hit a high, drop for 15 minutes, run up here again, go down for three or four, and then back up to the highs once again. And now we got business once again. I'm more business, my friend. Oh, no, I almost turned off the stream. Or not. <laughs> oh, good morning. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Thank you, my friend. Uh, I'm blessed and being a blessing always, always. The horn is next to the off button. No, I clicked. I was trying to click the OBS and I hit exit instead of the, the like, just like the window. I said, no. Hmm. Ever on the high, what's this? Ever route, ever quote up 12.41. Goggle, not Google. That's on the high for some of you who like that one. Or CVM overstock. Overstock woke back up. What was the other one? There's one more. DraftKings, no. Disney's going up and AMD and DraftKings, though. Yeah, AMD's starting to work its way up there. What a market. Disney, again, AMD literally down two to now up by 0.8. So their earnings are after the bell. That one's quite interesting. Yeah, AMD really running. See if NVIDIA could catch some of that. Again, NVIDIA bad news in the morning. It's still down two.
Yeah, Disney. Uh, I think earnings are next week. I don't know if Disney is this week. It shouldn't be. But then again, I mean, their earnings could be pretty wild. They've already moved up a lot, though. And then AMD, that's after the bell. Bank of America, AT&T, Net, a couple of others are moving. I don't know if that was Bank of America. Could have been something else. Yeah, it's starting to climb up there. Again, banks, I think, are a big part of today. Wall on the high now. Speak of the devil. Western Alliance. I don't think AMD earning. I think AMD was just killed by some of the other chip earnings as well as NVIDIA this morning. And then now, I mean, again, everything is green. That's the weird part about today because NASDAQ is literally 0.01% in the green. But it's like right now you are looking at more names green than red by a big margin. So everything I think is right at the cusp and that could f flip quickly. But for the most part, I think a lot of names did react to uh, other stuff off of the morning and then other sympathies. And then now... We're kind of just falling into our own little mode. Again, 41.74, high of the day, 41.75. We still need to get to 41.77 so we can make it to 41.87. I like O a lot, actually. We talked about this. Uh, besides the drop, it wouldn't have been on my radar, but now that it's starting to get to those levels, I mean, I like it a lot, but it is still in the space. So until rates bottom out, until rates calm down, I don't think... Uh, you know, I don't think it's going to be a, I think REITs and all the real estate stuff will have risk. DoorDash, I like it. I like it as a company, but I mean, I think they're, they're going to, they, they have a lot of work to do. I think they're still running negatives on a lot of metrics, but I, I like them, but I don't know if I would buy them per se. Ford, yes, but uh, we should give it a little bit. Uh, we talked about this yesterday. We don't know if that dividend is going to be guaranteed now. Again, Ford recently, you know, they started repaying their dividend before paying employees. So I don't know if all of these deals, the lowered guidance, the EV problems. I don't know if that's going to turn into, okay, give us our, you know, we're not going to pay you anymore. Mm -mm. Don't judge negative metrics. I mean, you got to pick and choose, and sometimes Wall Street does, sometimes it doesn't. But, I mean, the moral of the story, it's an uphill battle. That's the that's the way I look at it. But I do think DoorDash performs great. Again, they've taken market share. It's them, Uber Eats, and that's in Postmates pretty much. But they've done very, very well. So I uh, just I think it's going to be an uphill battle. 3M, I like them as well too. And they're doing good today. Back to 90? I mean, honestly, it's not too bad considering. But they were holding up the higher 90s way, way better. Wolf is still on the high. Yeah, Uber owns Postmates. So it was just Postmates and Uber Eats. And then, you know, DoorDash, they, they crept in there and they took market share. So that's what I do like about them. You're anxious to see how the junk fee bill that government is implementing on DoorDash, Uber, and Instacart could kill them on margins. Yeah, I but I have noticed, though, like DoorDash... They they might just supplement it because I've noticed in a weird way, DoorDashes have gotten a little cheaper over the last couple of months. I feel like with certain things and then I think DoorDash is still trying to uh, they're trying to incentivize you. You know, that's the thing you don't want to if you open up that app and then you use it and then it's too expensive, all of that. I mean, you're not going to like that thing, but they've been giving out more discounts. You know, remember, that's how all of this stuff got popular. Don't forget, you know, all of DoorDash, Uber, Postmates, it was all financed by, my, what's his name? Mayoshi son. It was all financed by private equity. They got all of this money early on. They literally, that's what they did. Yeah, 100 first one's free. So that's, but that's why I think they're trying to do it again. It wasn't even just Zerp. It was just the fact they had all this money. Everybody was willing to invest. So they were operating at a loss, providing cheap service 
to get everybody, you know, on board with the new wave and it worked. But now, you know, we're going through the interesting regulation and we're also going through, you know, inflation and all this other thing. So it's like, you know, are, are people still going to use it and how are you going to make sure you, you make that happen? Mm. It's like Uber burning cash trying to grab market share. Yeah, that's the thing. Uber got it. You know, Uber's still burning cash, definitely not as much as they used to, but uh, 100%. And that's just think about how it all happened. The first time you heard of Postmates, it was just because you would go on, it would be like 20 bucks to get whatever you want delivered. And you're like, yo, this is amazing. And then the driver will get paid 10, 20 bucks as well, too. And he was like, bro, I just got paid 20 bucks to go drop this off 10 feet. So, it, and, but again, was that the real metrics? No, because they were paying the drivers more with their money and then they were making it cheaper to buy. They didn't have all the price increases and embedded prices, but that's what led to everything running, you know? Mm. DoorDash still pays pretty well. Yeah, they, they've been the one grabbing market share as of late. So again, them and Uber, just them, Uber Eats, Postmates, that's all. But DoorDash was the one that really, uh, you know, is just slowly chipping away and is actually competing. DoorDash edits the menus when you order from ads between four to seven for each item. If you compare the restaurants and the DoorDash, it's just tricking buyers. Are you ready for this? I'm about to blow your mind. If you want to know the markup, on your DoorDash food, do one order. You literally select as pickup and see the prices. And then once you switch it to delivery, you'll see the prices that they charge you above it. Ta-da! It's crazy. So, like, you could literally watch them change the prices on you in real time. If you switch it to pickup and you go and pick it up, they don't upcharge you. If you go to delivery, you get upcharged and you could see every item, how much it, they're charging you more or less. It'll update automatically. Oh, no. The dollar at 30. I blame the yen. Again, yen's down one point. Yen's hitting a low. So, again, I think yen's climbing lower. Dollar's above 30, but you're still holding a green candle as of now. Right. There's one. I think it's called Alto. That's the other. That's like the new Uber competitor. I haven't seen any new food delivery competitors, though, in a while. Again, I think like Instacart was in like 2020. But really, you haven't really heard of anybody else except DoorDash and Postmates and Uber Eats. <coughs> Rivian popping. Uh, yeah, 3.2. Again, even Tesla's holding up. You have the dollar going up, which is not a good sign, but the yen is literally just flushing into the lows. The yen is down 1.5 right now. Mm. L-O-C-L, local, local bounty, bounty, bounty. What's this? B O U N T I. I have no idea. It's illiquid up 37%. JB Hunt on the high, Eli Lilly and Novartis on the low. Yeah, they got earnings in the morning. Yeah, Tesla's still working its way up. So is Apple. Bond's good. 
Only problem child is the dollar. We know the culprit, but I mean, that's unrelenting. And now again, I mean, the dollar's above 30. So anytime we've been above 30, I mean, the market has been relatively ugly. We're holding up very good, which is kind of surprising in all of this. But remember, like even October 13th, you know, you were you were 50 cents higher from here. But once we came down to this level and then below, you know, that's when the market cooled out. But $30 and above is not good. I love Josh. God bless you. Time to go to 9 to 5 to be here 9 to 1. So tired of work, man. Honestly, keep your head up, bro. I've, I've had a lot of people uh, this morning already say they're like, I got to go to work today. I think it's something about Tuesdays, but enjoy it, man. Trust me. Uh, and there's something, you know, being able to to take pride in the work and making the most of your time on a day to day. Uh, you're not going to regret it. You may sacrifice. You may be tired. You may not want to do it. But, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, it's honorable. You know what I'm saying? And no one's there. You're never going to get mad. And be like, oh, I worked so much that I worked. And then, oh, wow, now I can chill a little bit. So keep it up, baby. Keep it up. I've heard of that a lot today, but that's why I say, and, you know, not here to say anything else except for let's go, baby. Chin up. Chin up, man. Y'all got it. Y'all got it. Don't let the attitude get the best of you. Don't speak no defeat. Mm -hmm. I hate it. I know you do. I know, man. You, you've been complaining. That's why I timed you out earlier. I don't want, and you, I'm banning you from complaining. The next time I see you complain, I'm banning you. That means you're not allowed to complain in the chat. Or any, I said, no more. No more. Mm -hmm. That's if we've already had a couple of talks. But everybody else, like I'm saying, just head up. Head up, baby. Mm. Is it interfering with your happiness? So happiness is temporary. That's the first thing I'll tell you. But remember, you control your attitude. This is like I said, this was a feel. I gave this feelo earlier in the year. I'm telling you, man, I read the prayer requests. I get emails from people. And I told you, bro, I've literally I've seen people in awful scenarios, awful things like where where I read the prayer request. I read the email, bro. And I like I get down on my knees and start praying because I'm like, damn, I, that, that must be a lot to go through. And then vice versa, I see some people, they would be, their life is amazing. Best life, literally, the last year even, has rewarded them so heavily. They're getting everything they wanted. They're making progress. They're growing as a human. And then they still feel sad and, and depressed over everything from work to life to the news to, to, to whatever it may be. So, like I said, it's just it's, it, that was what, what tripped me out this year. Uh, is that it was just been, you know, I've noticed both people in both scenarios feeling the same way. Literally good and bad and feeling left behind, good and bad, feeling exhausted from working. And it's just, it's so, it's mind blowing to me. But that's why I'm like, yo, you know, we, we, we all share the same boat to a degree. Uh, but at the end of the day, man, I, I do hope you guys can keep your head up and remain positive because, you know, the harvest is plenty. The workers are few. I mean, it's it, there's a lot of things going on, and there's gonna you're gonna get tested with a lot. This journey, this is what it means by narrow road, both spiritually and even financially. The road is very, very narrow. So you know, you knew this, uh, but like like you look around and you're gonna see it. You got to be able to make it through, and that's from grinding, but in working and doing a lot of things. But above all else, your attitude. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't know how much you all work. I don't know if some of you even work at all, but no matter what it may be, that, that attitude that you possess in that and how you let it mold you and grow from there, that really is the, the, the big key when it's all said and done. So let's go, baby. Let's go, baby. Mm. Yeah, it could be the cold weather. I agree with that. I agree with that. Maybe the, don't don't underestimate it, man. It's cold. You waking up cold, bro, and it's probably just making you a little. It's trying to put you back into neutral, bro. Is that's it? Wake up and drive, even when it's cold. That's another one. That's another one. Mm, cold weather's the best. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes I like it. Sometimes I don't. But usually the shift in the weather, though, sometimes 
That'll get you waking up feeling weird. Any thoughts on Elf? I like it, but it's still in no man's land of like expensive and not expensive. Actually, never mind. It came down to ninety, but it's still it's still mad expensive though. Uh, again, I thought it was at the one hundred eights, but even then, it's still kind of purgatory. So I don't know. I like them a lot, but dude, I remember like I remember when Elf was. Re I knew about Elf for a really long time. I just didn't like, you know, girls didn't like it as much. And then they started, then they started getting hyped on it. But I, I still would want it cheaper. I like the company though. Don't people hate on Elf? Yeah, like, especially back in the day, it was just, like, the cheaper makeup. So, like, I think my girlfriend at the time, she didn't like it, uh, but she was, like, one of those makeup girls. And I was like, what? But, like, Elf was, like, really bad, and then it got really, really good. I don't know how it happened. I broke up with her, so at the end of the day, I don't know if that was it. But in the meantime, from then on, it just it went from, like, budget brand makeup to, like, every girl just kept running it up. Uh, I don't know. Literally, it just I, it snapped one day and everybody just started buying it. Any companies you wish would IPO? Chick-fil-A. But, you know, I wouldn't put that on them. Mm -hmm. I bought Ulta. I mean, Ulta is great. That one that did it. Mm -hmm. No, this is this is uh, this was a long time ago. No, this I don't even know if you guys knew this girlfriend. Unfortunately, I think you knew I was going out with her, but I never told you guys. Mm -hmm. This was a law. This was like 2019. Let's see oil back to 4170. This we were so happy to get here. We were so happy to get here. And then oil's is coming down now. But you're just remember 4170 yesterday, you had the little moments, you sold off and then right when we got up there we started launching, but you can't shake it and again the dollar just keeps going up. Now the tech stocks coming down a little bit. 816. So still an hour 15 minutes till euro close. Mm. Evax news on cancer. Is your voice? I was gonna say, take it easy on there. Take it easy. The typing, because like, dude, even the other day, like, even my wrist, I always got it on the mouse. <laughs> so yeah, use that voice. I see. That's why I use my voice. I like the voice to chat. Voice to chat to the chat. 10 minutes for your no 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 euro close is one hour late because they move the clocks around and then i think we have data around the corner too no i think you still have dallas fed no no we already had that huh yeah dallas fed services negative 18 no one even cared about that Dollar still at 3001. I think where the dollar closes by the end of the day, I mean, I think that'll tell us a lot. And then the PayPal is AMD still up. All right. I need to go to the bathroom. Follow me on Instagram at the trading fraternity. I hope you're ready. Euro closed because they changed their clock back. So remember, I think this week, Friday or whatever, or Monday, we, we change our clocks too, and then it'll go back to 8.30. But for now, there's a little bit of a gap. So follow me on Instagram at the trading fraternity. I'll be right back. Bonds at a high, dollar at a high, and market wants to go red on the spy. That's the only one green besides the Russell. BRB.
Yeah, I mean, look, I, I think there's a real need for this investment right now. You look at the aging infrastructure, particularly in the US. You also look here in Europe. I mean, it, it really, to facilitate the electrification of whether it be transport, whether it be our own homes, you need investment into the grid right now. I think you're starting to see some of those bottlenecks being unlocked now by yeah. governments as well, which has almost been a barrier, a bit of a hurdle to this investment happening. I think you're starting to see that you know, get facilitated. Who, but who pays for this? It's, it's yep. going to be a critical question. Governments yep. are really stretched right now. Are they going to pay for it? Corporates going to pay? I'm just wondering where sure. the money comes to make this, this investment. I look domestically here in the UK. You've got planning laws that are, that are proving problematic. The grid is clearly in need of an upgrade. Yeah. But getting... The, the money and the permits and the process to actually make this happen is proving much more difficult than I think a lot of people would have expected or anticipated. No, and I think that's fair. And I think we, look, we know the pace that investment needs to happen needs, needs to happen faster. I think governments are definitely helping unlock some of that. You've obviously seen the EU with the repower. You're seeing that in the US with the Inflation Reduction Act. So some yeah. of that stimulus money is starting to flow through slowly, needs to flow through quicker. I think companies themselves are actually incentivized to make these investments if you see the energy efficiency savings as well. So I think also some some of that is a return on investment for companies as well. Richard, great to see you. Thank you very much indeed. Really interesting. Richard Del Saldana uh, of Aviva Investors. <laughs> Coming up, we're going to talk about shoes. So Prada sales <laughs> slowing down. However, I understand Mew Mew, I, I, this is a thing. I'm, I'm not aware of it, but they sell ballet pumps apparently. They're very expensive and they've been flying off the shelves. I'm not sure Alex has a pair. Definitely not. M maybe, they'll get in, maybe they'll get into the, uh, to the discounting phase at some point there. Anyway, luxury spending is next we're looking forward to this i'm certainly looking forward to it <laughs> luxury spending is next all right all right all right okay yeah prada uh, they were showing shoes i didn't i don't know about no prada shoes but luxury sales have gone down uh, again that's their earnings were still kind of uh me i don't know why they were so excited it's not the worst but definitely a little bit of a slowdown AMD. No, we haven't covered it yet. We're going to cover it in a little bit. I was supposed to put it on the watch list. I had all the info and then I just forgot to include it in there. So we'll cover it uh, maybe in like an hour. If that sounds good, maybe your old clothes, maybe a little later. Usually I go over them later. So we'll see. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions about it today. I mean, it's I don't know if the, you know this whole earnings season has been a little different, but uh, I really do hope people understand, you know, it's it's a real coin toss. So you know, you can make the best play. You could try to, you know, I try to keep it within one or two standard deviations, but, you know, they're either going to kill it or not. Uh, Padufas, not since I sent out the other one. I don't know if I'm going to take, uh, unless I hit like a big, uh, unless I hit a big trade by the end of the year, I don't know if I'm going to play any more biotechs. I can't, uh, I can't afford uh, another tax loss. I can, but like, it's just, it's not worth it. So the only Padufa, unless I hold Outlook, that one might be the only one. So we'll see. Coin toss today. Oh, the OG. I do have it. I got it on me, bro. I've I got the. I still haven't moved it. I kept. I got. I got a bunch of coins on my desk right now. We could flip coins for days, but at the same time, I mean, I'm not. I'm not really stuck between. Uh, do I play it or not? I'm more along the lines of a. Uh, you know, it just it's gonna be a a little BS toss up later in the stage, and there's there's just there's more stuff that that we're focused on, unfortunately. That's the only thing that I don't like is that the mar that's why I thought it was weird today how we're even moving off of very uh tertiary data as Mike Michael McKee would say tertiary but it was very uh you know it just we're we're in this market where things are are not really responsive uh with rates at 5% and still kind of doing that so until that chills out I don't think we're going to get uh you know really too favorable of an environment or we need to find out how the market really does trade and adjust to 5%. Okay, trying to come down here. I mean, it's weird, man. Equities are in their own land. Why I'm saying it's weird because your dollar is ramping. That's because of the yen today. And then the bonds are also catching a bid, but your your amount of relief, I mean, it's counter. Like bonds have relief, dollar doesn't. Spy is like borderline in the middle after a day of relief. Yo, know, these comments in the dance of the dance in the dance of chance the coin becomes our oracle revealing not just heads or tails but the path we are destined to follow you're going in bro you're going in tesla a couple of red candles 
Yeah, Tesla's back to red. Again, yesterday was hideous. At least we do not see the weird wicks today, no? Is anybody excited about that? At least all across the board, no weird-ass wick. Google's about to flush there, too. Even Meta's going to come down. Spy back to VWAP, and I don't know what level that is. Back under 4170, so you've done this little down, up, down, up in this little box for about, what, almost two hours now? Those have been tripping me out. Yeah, it's it's just been weird because they stick. Like when you see it stick on the chart, that's where it makes it even weirder. So the fact that I could go back to a yesterday chart and still see it, that means something actually went through, which is the which is mind blowing. There shouldn't really be any more news for today. Uh, Dallas Fair, you got bond auction that's coming out in like seven minutes for the one year. That's not going to be that important. Uh, then ECV de Guendos, then oil numbers uh, after close, and then that's it. And then AMD earnings. Josh Joe Rogan dropping Elon Pod today. What's that? Is it like a, is it a Tesla item or is it, or do you mean like a podcast? I don't even know if they're coming out with a collaboration or something. New Elon Pod. You could sit in your living room being held by Joe Rogan. <laughs> Brought to you by Tesla. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? A podcast? Okay. Well, that'll be interesting. Dude, it's weird, though. I was just telling you yesterday. I'm like, because anytime Tesla stock goes down, this is the time to attack Elon. But I was just telling you, you know, comparing when the stock was at this price versus last year, it's like everybody was so nice to Elon. And then literally this morning, one of the top news articles is explaining how Elon has lost half of the value of Twitter and how everybody left and the advertisers and all of that. I'm like, damn. Uh, IEF had 90. Still not out of the range. I don't even think we're past the uh, Bill Ackman level. The Bill Ackman squeeze. Well, we're getting there. So you're back to you're back above. This is like kind of the base level day after Bill Ackman, which is good. Again, remember once we gave it up, you started hitting more lows once again. Mm -mm. All right, you're rocketing up with one good thing, bonds are doing good. That's helping, but the dollar is still weird. You're having tech move around a little bit, but SPY still holding up the green. Same thing with the Russell and then NASDAQ Dow still red, but you're right back up to where you started going before you dropped there. So literally 4, 4176 down to 4167, two minutes back up to 4173. XS, EXAS on the high. Exact scientists, science, not scientist. An AMD. Uh, from the watch list, wouldn't the 775 and 800 billion of extra bonds just ramp up the rate? Is the market ignoring this? Oh, I'm going to answer your question, but I can't ignore the peach. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Bradley Frizzle and the peach has arrived. Happy Halloween. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Uh -huh. Y'all kept asking me today. You're like, Josh, you celebrate in Halloween. If you don't know, at my house, we do. We celebrate Holla Peach. Uh-huh. That's it. If you don't, you come to my door and you don't say trick or peach, you won't get anything. That's it. It's trick or peach. That's it. And then we hand out, you know, dried peaches. It's dried peach candies. They're healthy. You can get them at Trader Joe's. You know what I'm saying? And, and it, it means the consistency. And you tell the kids out there why they need to be consistent. And then you tell them the story of the peach. And you say, this peach is sad. This peach is seen. You don't know how many streams this peach is seen every day. Every day we went and we didn't even know if we were waking up yet. And the peach would show up. Every day the market was dying and you get the peach. Every day the day the market it was going to the moon. Seriously, I opened up the weather app and it was like, boom, stock market, AI. And the peach was there. That's what I'm talking about. Amen. So with Johnson, back to your question about the uh, watch list and the refunding. They announced all of that money there, but 
it does mean that they're an, a, announcing a lot of supply. Why the market didn't get so negative? Because they announced that ahead of time. So they gave us a preliminary number three months ago. So generally speaking, a higher amount was priced in. And then after yesterday, we found out they're going to be needing $78 billion less. The bad part is that if you combine this quarter and next quarter, after they already raised almost $2 trillion, they're raising another trillion dollars. That's the problem between now and the end of March 2024. But for the most part, it was priced in to be a higher number. That's why even though you would think that it's negative, you got a little bit of a positive effect just in the sense that it was $70 billion less than what Yellen said would happen three months ago. So again, when we started dropping Yellen, you know, uh, on the you know end of July, that's the last time we heard. And now we're, we're hearing that it's a lower amount. So yeah, it could have been worse or what was priced in was literally worse. And then it came in. That's why tomorrow, though, there's still more to this story. This is what I was saying from day one when everybody was hyping it up. But I was just saying, watch out, because what we care about tomorrow is whether or not they actually sell shorter or longer term bonds. Yeah, good call on that. Google flushing now into the low. Literally had that bounce right there. Three minutes and three minutes right back down. Couple of tech names still on the low. Low tickers not picking up too much. But again, I'd watch out for those bigger movers. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. The bombs bursting in a cave proof to the light that the peach was still there. Sorry, Para. Was it the top for gold? Well, we'll see. Again, the gold, it's going to, it has good news coming if Powell pauses uh, once again, but we'll see how that actually holds up. Okay, Apple going lower again. I think big tech, Microsoft, Google, Meta, Microsoft, and Google into another low. Hmm. Remember when Diamond said 7% feds is possible? That's what I'm thinking for. Uh, I think even higher. But at the same time now, we are... The, the, the game of tug-of-war is real. If he could get away with raising rates and keeping them high, he's going to do it. But the thing is, you guys have to realize the clock has started. Powell hustled the shit out of everybody. There's a phrase on Wall Street that says the sell the last rate hike. The last rate hike was over here. Or I guess, uh, excuse me, in September. So you have sold the last rate hike so far. You pretty much were, were weaned into it by July, but that's the only other problem is that, yeah, rates, if Powell is true to, to his word and if things and inflation resurges, I mean, rates can be going as high as 10%, uh, but seven, maybe 10% or 15 on mortgages, seven to 9% on the short term. But at the end of the day, after we get this pause tomorrow, it's been 30 days now of paused rates. And then you do another 30 days. Before you know it now, you're fully paused and have not, not raised rates. That means why? Why is the Fed now pausing? What does that mean? And then what's the next step? So just as close as we are to seeing now higher than 5% rates, maybe you know 8% or something, we are now, again, the clock has started 30 days so far. It's about five to six months on average uh, for the first rate cut after pausing. So it could happen as soon as 30 days. 2006, it was 18 months or 16 months. So we will see. But that's kind of where we're at here. So it, it could go both ways, unfortunately. That's why I'm like, I don't want to tell you this answer. I wish I could just tell you one thing and, and call it a day. But, you know, we are... We're just getting whipped around by Powell and the messaging. And unfortunately, until that works itself out with credit, I mean, it's it's a long game that we got to play. Mm -mm. The yen is just dying right now. I mean, the, the issue is the yen, like I'm saying, just after if Powell is not good, the yen is going to destroy us here in America. 
If Powell is good, the yen, we might be able to shake it off, shake it off. No? For my Taylor Swift Kansas City fans? Okay. DVA on dude again, bro. Three minutes at a time. You're just shooting up, shooting down, shooting up, shooting down, and then back holding free ones. This is like a weird remix of yesterday. The dollar keep going. Yeah, thirty point three. You stop watching football because of the Taylor Swift thing. Why? Why? Because <laughs> I never really watched football like that. But. Mm -hmm. The yen is looking like the biggest shit coin right now. Not really. It looks just like the 10-year bond. Don't fool yourself. Uh, <laughs> so you know, that this is why we keep talking about bonds so much and everything, because it has such a pervasive impact on everything. So let me show you. Actually... Yeah, that's even crazier. This is your uh this is your yen overlaid with the 30-year bond. So, technically your American bonds are more of a shit coin than the yen uh on the last 2 years. Uh even on the last year. So, like I'm this is why I'm telling you guys, well shit, if the yen gets worse, this is going to this isn't going our bonds can't ignore it anymore. We were able to do it for uh pretty much up until June, then after this last 3 months, we've gone back to now following the yen on the 10-year, 30-year, all that good stuff. So, unfortunately, like I'm saying, it's just it's all connected right now. Uh and if you if you really think the yen is that bad, I I hope you've been paying attention to the bonds because I mean, this is the same story that I'm saying. That's why I'm like, until we could get above, if we don't hold the peaks on the bonds or if we don't stay below those, we're we're still in a world of hurt because everything else has been magneting to, to the general theme of higher rates and repricing. Mm -mm. Toulon didn't read if yen continues up, what happens with the bond? I mean, if yen dies, bonds die more. If yens catch a bid, it doesn't mean the bonds will, but it could help. That's the simplest way to look at it uh, as of right now uh, in, in context of what we're dealing with. Mm. The dollar... NFL hardcore simping and pushing that relationship. I think they just want to market Taylor. That's it. Like I told you, bro, my girlfriend knows who the Chiefs are. It's the weirdest thing ever. It's the weird. Oh, yeah. Let's do it, baby. Push ups. Amen. Amen. Oh, don't let Euro clothes get in the way because it's not. You have another hour till Euro clothes. But, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. We're live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open. Drop your thumbs up on the video. You're on mobile. Press high chat. X out the chat. Hit the thumbs up button. Second link for the nightly watch list and main channel. First link for the scream alerts, boot camp, and real estate costs. But ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we've been here for two and a half hours. We got four and a half hours left to go. Sitting is the new smoking. I need you to get beside your desk and do 10 push-ups. Can't do 10, you do 5. Can't do 5, you do 4. Can't do 4, you do 2. Can't do 2, you do 1. Can't do 1. Can your knees do a push-up, crank the worm, anything. Uh, but get the body moving. Then optometrist recommendations. Stare at an object 10, 20, 30 feet away. Go blink, 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 Relax those pretty little eyeballs. Then chest to the sun. Flex the core. Tuck the hips in. Legs in front of you. And boom, baby. You look good right now. Come on, man. You look better than Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey. That's how good you look right now. You look better. You look better than 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 uh than the bond, the inverse of the bonds, because the bonds don't look good. You look better than the bonds. Hey, man, man, keep it up. And then relax the jaw. Go. Breathe in really deep. Breathe out with your tongue out. Do the dragon breath and go.
No worries. Everybody is sitting and smoking at the same time. And clearly their humor is not advanced after the last four years. You know, you better watch out, bro. They got AIs now. And, you know, most guys have to result to like AI girlfriends and shit like that. So I'm just saying, if you don't want to do push-ups, maybe watch comedy so that we could work on your humor. Because that you can't be doing the same joke after five years now. That's all I'm saying. I'm just, I'm, I'm looking out for y'all. I'm looking out for y'all. I'm just trying to say y'all could listen to stand up if you if if that's what we need to work on. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel I'm not gonna judge you for it. I just I, I need to give you positive advice to help improve upon upon the jokes there, man. Because there's a lot of competition out there. I'm saying you you competing with Chat GPT now. Chat GPT writes jokes. That's it, man. People trying to they get riz from Chat GPT. Gotta do my stretches. Gotta do my stretches. VFC, huge candle. Yeah. Again, they had the uh, activist investor, and then I think they did it to poison pill him. So literally, they had somebody buy in a stake and then sent a letter to the board and said, you need to fire these people. You need to do this. You need to do that, right? So imagine it. Hedge fund takes 10% stake in the company, right? And then this earnings, they're like, you know what? We're going to accelerate our cost-cutting plan, and now we're cutting our dividends 75%, and this is what we're working on, and we're not going to give full-year guidance anymore. So now whoever wanted to literally buy them as an activist, I mean, they, they literally just threw their activist underwater now. So now it's – but then again, the shareholders, they're going to have to deal with it too. Look at SPY. It's up for now. We've talked a lot about this SPY today again. I mean, there's been a lot of discussion about what drove us up. I would pay attention to where the SPY was pre-market. That was very important. And then, again, the dollar being good, which is – or the dollar strong, which isn't good, but then the bonds. It's wild. This is legit. The Houthis declared war on Israel. Multiple reports from multiple countries. Hmm. VFC holders, yeah, but especially those activists. That's the crazy part. So we'll see. I'm still doing these stretches, bro. Uh, Yemen declared war on Israel. I mean, right now, as long as the con, I wonder what that's going to do to Saudi Arabia, but that's what we need to deal with. As long as it doesn't escalate too much, remember, people are expecting escalation, but the fact that the escalation has not been so intense and led to other people getting involved, it's we're just kind of just chugging along through it. All right, you're go you're dancing positive and negative on the spy. I'm still doing my stretches. Tump it, just get it over with. It's good though. I mean, any of the other days on Tuesday where like we would open up Right. And then <laughs> everybody would get excited. We would be flushing by now. So, I mean, in the weird respect, at least this is like yesterday. Market kind of slowing down. But don't forget all those other days. It'd be t Tuesday after a Monday. It'd be 930, bro. 830. We'd be just dumping with no mercy by now. So at the very least, you're holding. But it's just like a weird, a weird range. And then right at break, even for the spy. Do you think we've seen the impact of student loan payments coming back online? Not entirely. I think we've seen a little bit of it, but we we are, I think the next coming months, you're going to watch that get reflected on on a lot of stuff. But unfortunately, I mean, again, the 
the credit and the data and how it, it's going to get reflected. There's a lot of stuff. So if you don't remember what happened last time on the consumer credit, credit went down a little bit. Uh, and a big reason was the government paying down loans, uh, student loans. So I, I think in reality, you're already watching it happen, but I don't know when it's going to reflect on the data. So, and then the real question is, is it, will it be eno enough of a drag to actually slow things down? You know, will there be enough of a drag where it's like, you know, the consumer's actually weakening and it, it, it does lead to less gasoline purchases. It leads to less, you know, discretionary stuff, all of that. Mm. You paid other debt in preparation. You good there. I don't what what are the interest rates on student loans? Are they all different or do they is it floated? Like I don't know how it operates there. Cuz I know like I don't know what the Fannie Mae ones are. LMT on the high. Interesting. LMT's up 1.2 getting volume. RTX like 5 cents higher than where we sold yesterday. They vary. Mm hmm. Troika, ripping. I think we saw that one. What is this? BASF is negotiating with the federal government about the maturity of state guarantees for the Russian activities of its subsidiaries, Wintershaw. Tesla. It's We jinxed it, bro. We jinxed it. Oh shit. Pocket ban. You mad. Pocket ban. I got him. I unbanned him. Mm. Yours are 9 to 12 percent. Student loans from 2016 are at 3. So if your student, if your interest rate is like high, I would pay that down. If it's low, I would just, you could put your money in a bill, collect it. Like, so if you have a 3 percent student loan, I would take all of your student loan money and put it into a bond at 5% and then just take out the money every time you get paid. Just pay the three and then keep the other two and a half. There's a four. You paid off the nines. That's good. You end up getting taxed on it anyways. I feel like it don't matter much. But you could write off interest payments too, though. So I do, I, I think, you know, talk with the tax professional, but I think you could write that out one-to-one, -one, especially if you receive everything as an individual and it's taxed as just like ordinary income. So you got income from the bonds and then you have an interest payment on the student loans. I, I think they write off each other. Mm. Not all student loans are are fixed. But that's just the weird like I'm saying, you we live in a weird time where some of you depending on where your loan is at, like you can literally just get paid more money to put it into bonds and then still pay your loan. That's what I, it's, it's honestly, it's amazing arbitrage. It's going to take a little bit of work and there's a little bit of liquidity gaps between the coupon payments and whatnot. But again, if you did do a, like a one or two year bond uh, or a bond of a similar duration with a coupon, then you'll be good. You could deduct 2,500 of student loan interest regardless. Whoa, SRPT. I say it's still down 40. I thought it could go up a little bit more, but even then, it's up almost $10 from the bottom. RTX breaking out. We got out of that, but yeah, they're going up good. LMT was just moving, so that has still been nonstop. We got a couple of war headlines. I mean, the latest one was uh, the uh, Houthis and Yemen declaring war on Israel.
Sava again. Uh, didn't they die the other day? Am I tripping? No, it was death, and then they ran up. The other one that died, uh, what's it called? Sarepta is the one that died. They had bad phase three data, so they dropped 45%. You wouldn't be surprised if there was a surprise rate hike. Wow. Well, I don't think it'll be like an emergency one, but I definitely think uh, if inflation goes up, they'll raise it. But this, the idea of like an emergency rate hike doesn't exist. So I don't know if you guys remember. It was like, I think it was 2021, early 2021 or 2022, and people were like, oh my gosh, there's going to be an emergency rate hike. It's like, that doesn't happen. So that's kind of the only issue. Surprise rate hike, but Powell will hint of last. I just, I don't think, yeah, he's just, he's not going to do an, an emergency hike or, or a surprise hike. He'll do it how he's done. I mean, you know, Powell has worked with art. I'm telling you, man, if you see how he did, he just, he's, he's worked our way into all of this. So I don't think he would go out of his way to shock you for no reason when he could just communicate it, play his little like slow fashion and then you know, get the rates to exactly where he wants. Mm -hmm. Uh, PayPal there. PayPal's not today though, right? I thought Mike versus Microsoft and Google dropping. Oh, today we have AMD, First Solar, Paycom, Caesars, Lumen, Green Brick, Livent, One Oak, or One OK, One Oak, I don't know, uh, Assurant, and then Match Group. That's all after hours. Yeah, PayPal's tomorrow. Don't ban you, but Sava again. I mean, I don't know why I'd ban you for it, but also, too, Sava is on the bottom right-hand screen, and I haven't moved it for, like, four minutes, so... I don't know, man. What's your position? Maybe that's a better question. Yeah, surprise rate cuts happen, but no emergency rate hikes. Yeah. If they did an emergency rate hike, that would they might as well just put out a press release saying that inflation is about to go to 50% and they can't control it. <laughs> but no, no emergency hikes. And phase another chance to die off of first solar again. Gen Jinco did good. That one went up another nine percent today. Some of them actually did very very good. And then again, end phase and solar edge just got clapped on Lidos Holdings. I don't know much about them off top. Let's see. Chart looks stable as hell, which is both good and bad. You're not really paying too much premium, uh, but also too. Let me let me widen it out more. Ten here, it's up there. Lados Solutions in Defense, Intelligence, Civil and Health Markets. It operates through Defense Solutions, Civil and Health, prov provides service and products focusing on digital modernization, mission systems, and integration command control computers. So it's a defense company. Yeah, I would have to look into uh, more of their contracts. So that one, I think if you know more about it, again, some defense names have been better than not, like LMT, and then you even saw RTX, but it's it's really fundamental, and like you could price this thing out 10 years out uh, based on their contracts. So 
that might justify the premium, but everything else, I mean, without knowing that, that's very interesting. They're killing it today. I don't know if they had. I think they did have earnings. Lidos. Yeah, they filed their 10Q this morning. They had earnings. Market ready to sell. We'll see. Unfortunately, that it just sucks because we were having the slow burn a lot more here, but every single one of these days, you just you just can't believe any rally. Unfortunately, I mean bonds did come down, but like we said, by the end of the day, that dollar's still up. The yen is just getting murked right now. Yeah, it's that's literally what's happening. CYTK is said to weigh options and takeover. Yo, didn't they just get clapped? Uh, was Cytokinetics down? CYT, they're halted on that. Yeah, Betaville notes, Cytokinetics said the way options amid takeover interest. CYTK, it's halted. Weren't they down or am I tripping? There was one of these that was clobbered. All right, a little bounce again on the market. Literally, right when you think it's going to go deep red, you've been dealing with these little random pops. Let's see till Euro close. We still got about 30 more minutes. 30 more minutes, and then we'll get to start. Remember, though, even after Euro, Euro close yesterday, yeah, we didn't really start moving till afterwards, and then you got into the second half, but the weird schedule does kind of slow things down. All right, cytokinetics unhalted. There you go. Yeah, I think they're, when's their earnings? I think we have old shares of this. I think I played this on their last earnings. So, again, they got the Betaville note. We'll see if that actually holds up. It's already up 10% on one candle. You emailed a big potential investment. That's incredibly unique. You have questions on which to go, and you also emailed my winning wheelchair treasure box mermaid costume. Oh, man. Wait. Today's Halloween. Yo, you already went out with it then. I'm I'm getting mad confused. I was like, wait a minute. I thought I missed Halloween for a second. I'm like, that's today. Hmm. Okay, give me a sec. It's a big email. I got to go. This looks interesting, though. I'm skimming through it now, but I think I need to, like... Hold on. It could be a good opportunity. I need to look into that, What whatever they're building there. But, I mean, if you already got good land and area around there, it may be worth it. The problem is... It, it could take a long time. So in a weird way, you might have, like you'll get some good returns if you build properties there or keep your other ones. And then if everything becomes successful around it, it would be good. But the other problem is that it could take like 10 years uh, for it to like explode. So you may make a little bit of money or like a good return, you know what I'm saying? But to get the like 
real, like if this place blows up and becomes a destination, you know, like real fuck you money off of the real estate, it, it, you know, that might be for your kids rather than for you just because it could take a long time. So like I have a, I have an opportunity. That's what I was saying. I have this one opportunity in a foreign country and I know like the, one of the guys there who is building a lot of stuff, he told me what's happening. So I know exactly what is going to be built in a certain area of the world in the next 10 years. And it's going to be lucrative as hell. I want to buy all the land out there uh, because I, I know what's going to happen. But the problem is we've, we've all had this discussion. There's other people doing it right now. But then also, you know, you may just sit on that land or whatever you're doing for 10, 15 years before it really even just gets started, unfortunately. No, it's not Maui. <laughs> It's not in America. And, bro, you just rocketed up with the dollar going insane. U.S. July oil production revised down by 32,000 barrels to 12.9 million barrels a day. U.S. crude oil exports rose to 4.1 in August versus 3.8 uh, based on the EIA. They said refined products fell to 2.9 million barrels versus 3.1 in July. U.S. Uh, distillates fell to 1.1 million versus 1.22 in July. Gasoline exports fell to 731,000 in August versus 830,000 in July. Uh, oil production, crude production rose to 94,000 in August to 13.05 million a day versus 12.9. And then Morgan Stanley may pay as much as $1 billion to resolve a long-standing U.S. probe into how it handled private stock sales. So again, oil numbers just came out. Market was kind of already popping off of that. And then they revised all the oil stuff lower. It seemed better, but I don't know if oil's actually reacting to that. Oil's kind of staying comatose. It moved earlier. The yen, do I think the bank will flip its stance? Or real? What do you mean? So nothing happened. So all that happened on the Bank of Japan, they said we're going to change the reference rate and, you know, go to 1%. Uh, but they didn't adjust YCC. So they, they're they trying right now to change the shape of the curve, but they are still enacting yield curve control and their rates are still negative. So nothing happened. Uh, this is what I said on the watch list yesterday. I said, my take on it is you get these rumors and they're going to hype it up right before, and then they're going to make a slight adjustment that's not really the end of YCC, but taking a step towards it. So the way I'm looking at it now, the yen event will get pushed into either January or March of 2024. And then in the short term, Jerome Powell, if he does not lift the global markets, the yen is going to become a problem for the bonds and vice versa. If, if he does cool things down, the yen today doesn't really matter because if Powell is ends up being good, then the yen should recover a little bit. And, and again, maybe what I'm saying about the yen doesn't matter, and even though it's a big move. It's literally what I'm showing you all day today. The dollar is rocketing and ripping, and, and you're not even reacting how you normally would. It's because there's more of an outsized effect on the yen, and I do think a lot of people understand the yen move is not going to be permanent after tomorrow, but then, it, I mean, we'll see what gets solidified. market in Halloween mode I didn't I don't even know the trends for Halloween I don't think Halloween's even like a crazy market holiday again like Thanksgiving and Christmas things really get slow and you have all sorts of things but yeah buy the yen I mean it depends on what happens tomorrow because the yen could really get weaker if there is, if Powell just sticks to, you know, really scaring you on high rates and saying things that are bad and hawkish, then the yen could get really weak. What I'm, what I'm saying though, is if Powell somehow pulls a rabbit out of a hat and saves our ass here and the rest of the world calms down and uses it as relief, 
the yen will get relief as well because it's again it has a nice correlation there with the bonds Mm. sell meta and buy paypal why what's wrong with you i don't like to sell it i don't like to sell any i just hold it all and little by little and then at times it looks like you're getting clapped. And then over the years, you just realized you've acquired more and more. But that would go a long, long way. Like, that's where I would just, I would hold. Like, again, meta, let it do its work. I mean, I see the appeal. You could go walk away. We have 300% or something on meta. You could go pull that into the growth name. If PayPal rockets up, you make so much money. But at the end of the day, you're going to get rid of, you know, a big gainer. So, like, in a weird way, I do think Meta, even though we went small, the small gain on that, like, it, it made up a lot. It did a lot of work. Add that up with the Netflix and then even a Redfin, even if it's came down, it's like you're still up 100-something percent on that. So, generally speaking, I'm not, not really a fan of a sellout of a winner and then put it towards something that hasn't ran yet, especially for the long term. I'm a long-term stock hoarder. Amen. You want you like shy, you want to get leverage. But the bid and ask is terrible on the option chain. Come on. You want an alternative, not financial advice. Habibi. I don't know why you guys don't listen. Just buy the share if you want it, Habibi. Fuck out of here. Huh? Why you want to do the option? You want to do a middleman? You want to work with the middleman of the middleman? You want to pay the premium to pay for the stock, Habibi? Just go to the share, bid, ask, no problem, no problem, Habibi. For you, discount. For you, no spread, Habibi. Look at the one cent, one penny spread, Habibi. You don't make, you don't lose. Very, very small, Habibi. Why you want to play? Look at this spread. They don't want you to play this one. That's why they make the spread like this. They don't want you to play. You see that? They say, uh, best 130, other 150. This makes no sense, Habibi. How? Oh, look at this guy buy for five. The other offer 25. This makes no sense, Habibi. It's going for a 7. They want you at a 25. How you like this one? You can't, Habibi. I tell you, go go the share. Obviously, not financial advice recommendation, but this, this you look. One cent, one. this how you play it. This how you play it. The other one, they don't want you to play. They want your money. Joe Rogan apparently shot arrows at Cybertruck on the new podcast. That's cool. Where is my Cybertruck? I don't know. I feel like I need to post the Craigslist misconnections. Looking for Cybertruck. I put down a hundred dollar deposit roughly four years ago. I'm just I'm waiting for you, buddy. Just tell me when you're ready. I still can't find it. Thank you. What do I think of the cyber? You already know. I think it's the ugliest vehicle ever created. Maybe there's, besides the Lucid, it's up there. <laughs> besides the Lucid design, the Cybertruck is the worst design vehicle in the world. Besides the Lucid. <clears throat> Have you ever heard of the Corvette Index instead of the Lambo? Cars that would be 50K over MSRP are now going for nearly list price. Yeah, that's what some people are saying about, like, the G-Wagons, too. But, yeah, I mean, I, I showed you two of them years ago. 
I'm telling you, people didn't even like the Lambo index when we told them about it. Go look up the first Lambo index. They may have deleted the comments, but <laughs> people were like, you fucking idiot. And then you start watching everybody else make videos about it. But it's the Lambo index and the Civic index I would get behind. Uh, again, it, it, it works. I mean, it tells you something and you've watched it play out. But I've definitely, you know, the car market is getting wicked. Very, very wicked. I want to go check now. Car gurus. Lamborghini. It's so weird, though. Because remember, it was showing some resilience, but then this was just like the last couple months. It just died, bro. Everything just went ape shit. Yeah, see, it only shows me 412, but like, I'm telling you, it's way more. I think you got to check on like eBay or something, but it's just like looking at the prices of this all, like it's insane how cheap everything is getting. And I know you're looking at these prices and you're like, why is the $289,000 car cheap? It's because this was going for like 360, not that long ago, at least 12 months ago. A lot of these were going for, uh, especially even like 18 months ago, some of these cars were selling for way more. Like, yeah, this car would have gone for a million bucks. 820 miles on a 2020, an Aventador, this car would have gone for a million dollars, going for 600. Still crazy. And then even an SVJ, 650, it's fucked. I haven't seen the Corvettes, though. If you could get a, what's it, a 3LT for like 70 grand, that'd be hype. Uh, where is it? Damn, there's 240 of them. Oh, wait, that's just in San Diego? Oh, no, that's five. Yeah, there's there's a decent amount, but... Yeah, they're going for 79 grand now. The 2LT. This was going for like 120 grand above market. It just all depends. See, a 3LT, that's still 96,000. I mean, they were trying to sell these for a little bit more, but honestly, I think the Corvette still got premium. 97 for a 3LT. 2LT for 77. That's not a bad deal at all. 86 grand for a 3LT. There you go. That's what I'm saying. That's when the cars like get back to like going cheaper, but I don't I don't even think the Corvette index is that bad. Again, the uh I think the Lambo index is just hideous. It's just different options. That's all. The 3LT is like the decked out one. The 2LT is like kind of decked out, then the 1LT is the less decked out version. Yeah, but the, the Corvette still got a little bit of premium. A little bit. Then there's the Z01. Yes. The Z01 is the craziest one. Good analysis. Yeah, man. Better, best, than good. Good, better, best. 3LTs are going for like 120 Dude, I even saw some at like 140. People were paying a lot and then they wanted to sell the I didn't check the Z. I don't know if the Z01. People wanted like 300 grand for a Z01. Uh because it just but that car's literally faster than I think it's one of the fastest cars right now. M and M D and drug uranium stocks going up too. Uh, yeah, you got to pop on mine, man. dollar on five that's the thing that's scary for the end of the day 
Because like I'm saying, if we get here and, you know, if you go by the end of the day, dollar still keeps climbing and then this thing just goes like nutty, uh, we're going to have a really big problem. Because then if the dollar stays up and then the market wants to adjust to it and then it comes down, then it starts to get clapped. Yeah, the ZL1, they came down a little, but these are still expensive. So this one, uh, bam, red cheek clay. So this car is going for about, some are still listed at two fifty to 300000 They've already lowered this to one sixty. This is like the craziest version of the VET. So Corvette index is coming. You're getting a big red here, actually. Hold on again. Your latest numbers were crewed around here. Uh, you are 15 minutes to. 4166. Again, right, literally right below the opening. So, Spy, whoa, whoa, whoa. Low ticker getting a lot more active. I just watched it glitch out there. Again, Google, Microsoft, high low ticker starting to ramp up there to the downside. Mm -hmm. Dollar clapped. I mean, the market, this is what, I'm, again, the problem is if market catches up to reacting to this. Again, dollar's up almost 1% on the day. Stream clapped. Uh, hello? What happened? No news. No, you just, again, you got it read. I was talking about the dollar going up and then be mindful if, uh, again, if the dollar's up by the end of the day and the equities catch up to that, we're going to have a problem. Mm -mm. Refresh. Oh, my bad. FUL on the high. Watch out here. Again, we've had a lot of random pops. This one just looked a little bigger, but we did go through the same candle a little earlier. The only problem is dollars at 30.6. At a BASF to the long term. Maybe because Yemen declared war with Israel. Uh, that was a little bit earlier, but maybe. But right now, I, I it's the dollar. I mean, above all else, even if a headline hit right now, the question is, is it going to move the dollar or not? But this is already a problem. So, like, I'm, I mean, when the last time, this is the high of the year, I think. The last time you were at a 106, I mean, this was a, it was a very precarious time. It was actually leading into November as well, too. So, I mean, we just don't want the dollar to be up there. Maybe it's the Yemen stuff. I would doubt it, but I think it could have a little bit of impact. But for the most part, I just think we have a problem. 306. Yes, I think I said that. Again, the high was 36, but it's still the high of the year right now. Again, I think we were at 3505, maybe 3507. My next deposit tomorrow, but I'm my big account still messed up with the E-Trade shift. I'll have the other two, but then we're going to see I'm buying MO, PayPal and Disney. Uh, even uh, their Walgreens too, and then there was one more. We talked about it the other day. Oh, oh, yesterday. So there's a couple on there. Maybe we don't have to force it, but my deposit is tomorrow. Then big tech is really, I mean, some more than others, but 4164 Equal equal weight went, went higher, then it came down, but I think equal weight is still in the gulag. Big cheek lay on banks. It could have been a part of everything, but yeah, I see that too. Not just everything kind of dumped at the same time. You could go XLV to XLP, some more than others, but they all kind of have that. Uh, 
MO low of the day. Remember Morgan Stanley, they had that one headline on paying the billion. I don't know if that's kind of what caused it. We covered that a little bit ago, but there was no real reaction. Could have been delayed. And then 10 minutes till Euro close. Remember, this week Euro close uh, is later until we set our clocks back. So we'll see. Dollar Tree on the high. Kaba. Again, little bounce there. Same thing with the bonds, but we will see. How do you feel about long-term puts? Um, I don't know. I think you'll either get lucky or not. Otherwise, just in a weird way, if you're bearish, I mean, I would just wait till the moment happens and then get bearish. And why? Because, again, I've been bearish all year. I went short, got clobbered on the short, closed out, thought I would get re-get back into it, and then it moved way faster than I thought. It's like you would have been better off just responding to the data as it gets there. So honestly, I would wait till central banks start to panic more. And once you get more, you know, like real panic there, just go bearish then and call it a day. Uh, but other than that, it's like, you know, you could get the puts now. Maybe they'll hold the price. Maybe they don't. Maybe it, you know, drops right away. Maybe it doesn't, but that will be the risk. You know, we are, we're playing such a weird game of musical chairs right now between is Powell going to break the market with rates and how high will he go? Or is is he going to cut the rates because it's been 30 days now and, you know, there's a six-month average usually and if the economy starts tightening and it's tightening now ever since he's done it, you know, what, what could that imply? So it goes both ways. But what if you get rug pulled? Isn't it better to have positioning before it's clear? It depends, right? It's like if you are – that's why I like the yen because some positions will, will do better than others. But, you know, how many times have you been in a position that's old, it does what you want, and then you still don't make money? Uh, again, I mean, the the best example I have is last year with EWG. Uh, you know, we literally called it, said Europe's going to collapse. The ETF itself dropped 35%. If you bought options ahead of time and held it, you woke up, you were, even if the ETF dropped 30%, the best you got was break even and then it then it uh, expired worthless, even if you had six months, nine months of time on it. So unfortunately, that's the problem is that you could be positioned ahead of time, but with this type of volatility, how it moves one month up, one month down, that initial position, you know, it may happen, you spent that insurance money, but then the event happens and you know, it doesn't really protect. Mm -mm. There's been many wicked moves that bring them back to life. Yeah, so, I mean, use that as a guide to, to help you make your decision. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like, if you've noticed more go up for you, then play it that way. If you've noticed mo most go down for you, then play it accordingly. But really, if you're down with not... Uh, if the the fluctuations aren't going to bother you and you want to get the exposure and want to make it, I mean, just shares is the easy answer. But other than that, it's like, uh, you know, I don't know if getting ahead of time, anticipating is, is really going to work as much as diversify, get a little bit of everything so that you're never left out of it all and that you're never too overexposed or underexposed. And then, you know, when you see the whites of the eyes, I would just start grabbing your puts and your futures and whatever else you need. You're new to stocks. You've been told M1 Finance is the best option. Uh, I would get an E-Trade account or a TD Ameritrade. However, like an M1 Finance to like make a passive portfolio, just sit there, put in money and split it up. It's it's not a bad option. You know what I'm saying? So I just, the thing about M1, it's just not like a full service brokerage to the degree where you're going to get a platform like this and, you know, be able to buy bonds and certain things. So it's not bad, though, but I definitely E-Trade, TD Ameritrade. I don't get paid. I'm not sponsored by any brokerage or anything like that. You know, these are just stuff I've used for 15, 17 years or something crazy, and they've done good, uh, and I trust my money there. Mainly looking into penny stocks. I would just get into holding long-term, but just do this. Whatever you want to do in penny stocks, 
cut the amount of half and put it towards either a spy ETF or buying, you know, a couple of big names that you know and holding them and then deposit every month and at, get a long term. You do that, you'll be good. Uh, and then use the rest on penny stocks. How uh, the market will react to FOMC? Oh, God knows. I don't know. Uh, that's. I think Powell is going to do a lot of trickery. But like I told you yesterday on the watch list, if we, if the as a result of Powell and the statement, if they, uh, if the bond yields stay below the peaks and could you know really top out and end this shit then I think the market will be good. Again, sure enough, you're below one peak today, not below the other one. Yesterday, we were above both peaks. If we go below both peaks and as a result, we're able to hold rates down, I think we're going to run up. Uh, if not, then it's going to be if rates, you know, after Powell, it, you know, solidifies higher than 4.8 and then, you know, opens up the door for more, then we're going to have some problems. That's pretty much my my simple breakdown of tomorrow. Sell off every meeting since May, but we're already pretty sold. Thank you for your analysis. Amen. And those, the oversold conditions are part of it, but I'm every day because like it's been months of this. I hope you guys get where my, my attitude and analysis comes from is just like, I'm like, dude, we've dealt with so much shit and this all the while it's the bonds. The bonds are the craziest chart this whole entire year. And it's even worse because this is now three years in a row of bonds losing on the year. That has not happened since 40 years ago so that's like right away that's why i'm like bro this chart is nuts you look at the one year on rates already even the six month that's the problem that i have so regardless of oversold undersold no matter what we just it's it's just the markets have gotten involved now it's just that we are no longer ignoring uh you know we've no longer we're no longer ignoring this whole bond yields going up type beat You watch many lives. Do you ever trade or are you just going live and watching? Uh, were you here yesterday? So this morning, uh, I have not made any trades, but we had a couple of trades yesterday. Uh, I've traded a lot less throughout this. Again, as October started getting really worse, I put plays for the long side. I was planned on riding them up. They got clapped. I didn't add to any of them. I've been waiting for bond stability, but uh, we did make, I think, like three trades yesterday. Uh, you could check the watch list if you missed it. But you come here all the time and you don't see me trade, so I'm surprised you missed that one yesterday. But it's on the watch list, second link. Mm, put some cash into an actual two-year. It wouldn't hurt. I mean, it's not going to hurt you. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You go and put money. That's the ironic part about bonds right now. It's like if you're trying to speculate on the ETFs, you'll you'll get hurt. But if you go and buy a physical two-year bond, there's no way you're losing money unless Janet Yellen defaults in the government. But other than that, it's like, you know, you own the bond. It's going to go up to one. You're going to get your maturity price, and then you get the yield. That's it. It's So it's like it's not – that is just – all it does is going to tie up your opportunity cost for two years. So that's what you got to ask yourself. Whatever money you put into that two-year bond, can you get, uh, you know, for the next two years, are you going to make more than 5% a year? That's what you got to ask yourself. If you could do that, you're good because then the opportunity cost, you know, or if you don't think you can, then you take it because you're like, well, opportunity cost, I'm down tying up this amount of money getting five because guaranteed no loss. And I just, I know I could get, I, I know I can't get that return elsewhere uh, with that same level of risk. You did goodish. We got two minutes. You're going to get those closing numbers. 
Gutierrez says aid deliveries to Gaza completely inadequate. UN chief says deeply alarmed by intensification of conflict between Israel and Hamas. They say protection of civilians on both sides is paramount, must be respected at all time. Bonds have to be near the top, no? If economic productivity is dropping, shouldn't yields come down? Yes, in theory, but then again, you know, the last three months, it has just been us listening to Powell telling you and the rest of the Fed, it's going to go higher and then watching uh, the other stuff. You know what I'm saying? Then watching the uh, like actual just inflation data come up, employment, none of that stuff go down. So, and you can relate that to economic activity. So, and that that's literally what it is, but it just, it's been a little weird with, you know, there was such a big gap of ignoring Powell to now we're listening to Powell. And even though we're closing that gap, there's still a way more room for even just the natural stuff. Like you're saying, if this should happen in the economy, there's still room for that to happen. But as of late, I think it just been repricing, getting adjusted to Powell, actually believing him and then having data that shows, yeah, maybe he might be a sicko and do this. So I think they'll raise, pause, or cut. There's a lot of op but you didn't answer my last question though. Were you here yesterday though, uh, or do, were you able to recap yourself on the place? Because I don't want you to go around saying I ain't doing certain things. You know what I'm saying? But I, I want to make sure you don't miss anything. Uh, but even then, the question of rates or not, I, he's eventually going to cut it. But we don't know. Powell has put us in a 50-50 spot, and that's why, ironically, we're in a situation where we're paused and. He's telling you rates could go up, but also at the same time, it's been 30 days since the last pause. And, you know, that is that sets the, the clock there for it to go wild. Mm -mm -mm. Right here, you pop in on the big economic report days. Mm, well, yeah, watch list if you ever miss any place. But there's a lot of trades. I slowed down a little bit this month, but I, I think I've done well over 250 trades this year already. So you'll get them if you're here. Uh, and then if not, though, today wasn't a big economic reporting day. So glad to see you. Glad to see you. Tomorrow morning, we got big stuff. And then Friday morning and then Wednesday afternoon. Hot take rate cut can send the long end of the curve higher. If it's, gra if it's small, if it's a small cut and it's not that big and we start playing around, maybe. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't rule it out, but I think a lower possibility or probability. <laughs> this day is chop. This was like yesterday, bro. Yesterday we did the same thing, three hours and nothing. I think this is just because of the delayed Euro close. I think we're forced to just deal with an extra hour of European trading kind of influencing us to a degree, and then we go after that. Four one seven five. We're back to the high. I mean, every single time you look like you're gonna die today, you've had five minutes just rallying you. Meanwhile, yeah, the yen is just dying. There's no mercy at all. Yen's down one seven five. So again, the do I'm surprised the dollar's not going up even more. This is actually insane. So that's all we gotta see what happens is that just hopefully by the end of the day, if the dollar is up, hopefully the market doesn't crater. That, that's honestly all we got to watch out for. Otherwise, we kind of might just keep doing this back and forth. You're literally about to wick into a new high. One five one, dude, it's wicked. That and then the dollar, and then I mean, and all the while yields are like, yo, we like today. It's insane.
Mm. NVIDIA had a report that they could lose approximately $5 billion in canceled China orders due to the latest uh, AI regulation stuff, that, that crackdown with all of them. Golden yen made a new all-time high. I think even against the pound, the yen is actually the weakest now it's even been. Did you see the Drunken Miller comments on Yellen's bond issuances? Pretty funny and true. I didn't see it. So you guys gave me the, uh, the what's it called? The uh, breakdown, but let me uh, read what he said. Billionaire investor Stanley Druckenmiller accuses Janet Yellen of making the biggest blunder in Treasury history. Oh, come on. Oh, is there a video? Welcome to Squawk on the Street. I'm Carl Kingston here with Jim Cramer and David Faber at Post 9 of the New York Stock Exchange. Bulls trying to build on Monday's bounce, but futures lost some gains on the back of uh, several earnings disappointments. Two-day Fed meeting kicks off today on Come this on. final day of October. Happy Halloween. Our roadmap begins with this final day of the month. Major averages on pace for three-month losing streaks as the Fed does kick off that policy meeting. Plus legendary investor Stanley Drunkenmiller sounding off on... Oh, man, just like a recap. I thought I was going to get to see it all. So he said, Yellen missed an important opportunity by not issuing more long-dated Treasury bonds when rates were near zero during the aftermath of COVID. Janet Yellen, quote, Janet Yellen, I guess because of political myopa or whatever, was issuing two years at 15 basis points when she could have issued 10 years at 70 or 30 at 180. The former hedge fund manager said during a conversation with Paul Tudor Jones at the Robinhood Investor Conference, I literally think if you go back to Alexander Hamilton, it is the biggest blunder in the history of the Treasury, Druckenmiller said. The omissions seem even more egregious, uh, according to Druckenmiller, considering that Americans refinanced their mortgages at rock bottom rates in mass, while corporations with sturdy credit ratings refinance their debt. I have no idea why she hasn't been called out on this. She has no right to still be in that job. When rates were practically zero, every Tom, Dick, and Harry in the U.S. refinanced their mortgage. Every corporation was extending their debt, he said. He then rattled off some alounding NARM numbers to illustrate the consequences of not reining in her spending. Here's the consequences, folks. When the debt rolls over by 2033, interest expense is going to be 4.5% of GDP. If rates are where they are now by 2043, sounds like a long time, but it's really not. It's 20 years. Interest expense as a percentage of GDP will be seven. That is 144% of all current discretionary spending, he said. Uh, according to 10-year projections released this year by the CBO, the federal government uh, outlays are expected to swell near 10 trillion by 2033 compared with 6.3 in 2022. He said interest expense alone will be 144% of all discretionary spending. So the politicians who are telling you and who think they're not going to cut entitlements, it's just an outright lie, said Drunken Miller. To be sure, Yellen wasn't the only Treasury Secretary to preside over the latest round of zero rates. Steve Mnuchin served as Treasury until President Donald Trump didn't and didn't leave office until January 21. The Fed cut its benchmark rates near the 2020, and then that's it. I mean, it's like I'm saying, it's... It's just as nutty of Donald Trump saying he's going to refinance debt, but then like she just reverse refinance. That's why I'm like, it's it's kind of, I understand what he's saying, but I mean, when are we ever going to, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I feel like we live in a society that does not want accountability for its politicians because you run the risk of that the politician that you like, even though they did something wrong, they agree with one thing that you agree with, and then you don't want them to, to go under because you agree with one thing that they agree with, even though they're shady. So it's kind of the issue here. Uh, but unfortunately, I mean, it is it is wicked. She she just literally chose to take out a loan and, you know, again, funding the government at possibly the highest rates we've seen in a while. <laughs>
<laughs> and at the largest amounts too. Mm. How could you say that, but also be against the Donald Trump charges? Uh, I'm not following. Again, I the th I don't like Donald Trump, but I don't like that people treat him unfairly. That's the part I, I cannot stand up for. I don't care who you are, what you represent. Just like my stance on no violence, I'm the same way when it's all said and done. So like I'm saying, I think Donald Trump, should you put him in jail? Should you try him for stuff that he's accused of? Of course you should. But you should not let it get in the way of an election. And you should hopefully, you know, you would apply the law equally. And that's why I'm saying we don't have that nowadays, unfortunately. But like I'm saying, in this case, Yellen just issued trillions of dollars now at the highest possible rates when, you know, she could have done this at any other time. That's the, the ironic part about all of it. And that's what I think he's saying is that <laughs> we'll find out more tomorrow. Hopefully she sells more short term than long term. But for the most part, it's it's like choosing to re pull out a loan at the highest interest rate and be like, yeah, we're we're, we're fine. We're going to be good with it. I don't know what Trump had to do with it. That's why. But even then, I mean, I'll I'll make it clear my stance with all of it. Yeah, when she she was selling two years when she should have been selling the 30 years. And now she starts selling 30 years when she's supposed to be selling two years. I mean, again, I we know the lady is, is crazy. <laughs> but <laughs> it is, I mean, if you don't understand the scope of it, again, she's just raising trillions of dollars without any real regard to what the interest rate is at. And, and again, you know, she's 80 years old or something. But like it's saying 20 years from now, that interest alone will be higher 50% higher almost than all spending just for fun, like discretionary spend. <laughs> That's insane. That's why that means more than Taylor Swift, all of the, like this discretionary spending money on weed, entertainment, all of that stuff. Hmm. Uber and Apple on the high and the dollar, bro. I think maybe we get fireworks at the end of the day because this dollar, I can't shake this, man. This is going to be, no matter what, I'm surprised all of these little sell-offs are turning into greens, but that dollar is just chugging away. Mm-hmm. It's not. Listen, man, it's not a political issue. Don't make it one. Even the Trump stuff, it goes back to what I believe, man. That's what I'm saying. It's like you just got to treat people with respect. It doesn't matter about political parties or not. It's do you treat people fairly? Do you treat them the same? You know, you know, people talk about racism all the time. They talk about, you know, don't don't body shame, fat shame. You know, we want people, you know, to be nice, but don't just stand by, you know, these principles and not really treat people like that and just treat people fairly. Uh, that's, that's all That's all it is, you know? That's all I'm saying, and, the, you know, that's what I stand for. And just show love no matter what. You may not like things, you may do, but hopefully, you know, that respect and that love and the, and the progressive stuff we want, hopefully it's applied equally to people. Uh, and, you know, that, that is what I think is the, is the challenge uh, when it's all said and done. And that's what I don't like. That's why, you know, if you hear my disdain, I'm not as political, even though I got the degrees and all of that. It's because, again, like I get dragged into it. I've literally I get banned for from platforms for doing something the other person would do. One person gets in trouble. The other doesn't. I play a video that's already existed on the Internet. That's already on news websites. Nobody gets banned. I get banned. You know, it's stuff like that, where if you allow that in society, I mean, people I get very discontented by it. But like I'm saying, it's just simple. We got to treat everybody fairly and with respect and no matter what. And that's all. Mm -mm. So that's like I encourage all of you, if you want any progress 
moving forward and, you know, the community here, you know, we just got to show love to each other. You're, I don't just view you as Republicans or Democrats. Like I said, it's like, do you treat people nice when they disagree? Do you show love above all else? Do you really stand for a principle where it means that even in the face of whatever, you still choose to treat people fairly, not just when it's this or that. So I do hope that we all have that. And that's what I want. And I see it a lot in the chat. So amen. I'm starting to believe that fairness is naive. Am I too jaded? Well, I mean, there's, what do they say? There's equality and equity. And that's how people like to differentiate between the two. But from a principles thing, you know, again, just whatever morality or social virtue you believe in, if you're not extending it like universally, it's, it's not really a virtue. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, again, anybody could be nice to the people that are nice to them. Anybody could be nice to, to people that agree with them. You could show, you know, uh, equality and equity if if they agree. But then it's like, if not, if, if you don't treat everybody like that, regardless of qualification, then, I mean, it seems like it's a fake virtue. Hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to see how many times you're going to vote for my presidency without me responding, but I appreciate you. <laughs> Keep it going. I just be like, Yash for president. Yash for president. Yeah, amen. Like, that's, all, that's all it is. We all need to just laws apply to everybody. That's it. No more different classes, all of that. Like, we just got to get... No matter what, just if we treated everybody and it's hard, though, it's very, very hard. I see why you say it's naive, but that's what makes a principle and a virtue virtuous. Uh, I hope you get that. Mm. I don't think I am old enough to be president. I don't want to be president. Like, again, look at what happened. That's the sad part. Look at what we did. Like I'm saying, when you don't treat people fairly, I mean, all it looks like is if you're not a fucking political hack job, they're going to destroy your life. <laughs> they do not want you to, uh, to like, dude, it's, it's wicked. I, I'd, I'd want to be like a judge or, or maybe like a senator maybe. But even then, like, I'm, I might, I never wanted to get into politics, even though I have the degree and all of that. But every year that I've seen, more and more i'm like pri private life is the way to go sadly they still fuck with you in private life but it's not a uh, dude it's 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 insane uh when you look at it mm. I'm part of the same hypocrisy. Yeah. I just said politics is just too, it's too dirty. That's it. People are just, it's very, it's a very slimy game and you got to be a, you know, a certain, like you got to be down with that. And it's just like, and then you got to deal with people just, you know, they're, they're grimy just so that they could get a W and it's a, it's a very cutthroat game. I think politics is more cutthroat than wall street. Mm. The dollar is hideous. That's the only problem is however today looks is I've said this so many times today is just by the end of the day, if, if we get any weakness and that dollar still up, it's, I don't think it's going to translate, uh, clean. You watch Suge back in the day. My girlfriend's been watching it a little bit lately, but that's it. Fun fact. Oh, El Coyote been dropping news and now you got good fun facts. I love it, baby. Fun fact. Through today's close, there are 41 trading sessions left in 2023. Mm -hmm. Wow. 
41 trading sessions. Dun, dun, dun. So you got like just the over, just around two months of time, 42 trading days. Mm, bittersweet. Indeed. It seems like it should be more holidays, the weekends. So you got at least what? You got eight days of weekends in the next two months. And then you're going to have like what? 12 days of holidays probably. That would make sense. Maybe between, I don't know, Thanksgiving, November, December. Is it 12 days? No, you get like four days for, it's like Thanksgiving and Thanksgiving and then Christmas and New Year's. They all just like, it's at least a couple. If I had to guess, what do you think he says tomorrow? Just some concoction of everything else he said. Uh, but I, I don't know if he's going to take a slightly less hawkish tone. I'm kind of leaning to less hawkish, but at the same time, I really think it's going to be a, a remix of what he said last time mixed in with uh, a couple of questions or discussion on long rates tightening up fi financial conditions. And that is very important. And I think how he communicates that, it may come off very dovish and then everything else is going to be bearish or as bearish as we've heard. And then we're going to factor that into some of the jobs data too. But I, I don't know what he's going to say. Again, I think it will be a mix of everything he's already said and then there's only a couple of factors that are subject to, to change and where we'll get the focus on. Am I holding the PayPal calls? I am. Uh, again, I'm gonna hold those till earnings. And like I said, if they if they shoot up like 50% or something, and we could get like a nice gain ahead of it, I think they're break even up one penny now. It's like if I could get a good gain, I'll sell out before. Otherwise, I'll hold into earnings. Jobs is tomorrow. Jolt's jobs. It's actually you got a one-two punch. You got Jolt's job openings tomorrow morning alongside the treasury refunding. And then on Friday, you have non-farms an hour before the bell. So that's where it gets a little bit trickier. Appreciate you, brother. God bless you. You bought two and three out the money. Should I have went further? You should have went closer. So that's what I was saying with that. I only went for January because I wanted a little out. And I went with a price that was literally traded at already this year. So, I mean, I, I would stay probably below two uh, if or below three if possible. But it's, again, the play is about getting lucky if they beat. But if they do good but not really good, you will lose money on that play. Impossible to trade SPY these days. Somebody said, I think it was Goldman. Goldman came out as part of uh, one of their notes from the trader desk. They were talking about legitimately just the index borderline becoming unplayable for traders just because of these swings and then the carnage. So you're not alone, but just welcome to volatility. We're on the cusp of like real volatility, a big event week, and, and what it's going to either turn into or, or die into more or less. Mm. Oil, I think no other bad headlines. Again, just more calming down in terms of the situation and I mean even borderline economy. It's barely down. It's 0.15, but what makes it bad is that yesterday was almost a 4% down day. You're kind of like that other day, so that is not a good sign. Doesn't rise too often with the dollar. That's why this is that's why maybe by the end of the day either dollar comes down or markets come down, but 
at the same time, very few and far between uh, where you have witnessed the SPY, you know, going up with the dollar. I guess you got a little bit of it here, you know. You could come, but then again, the market still started dying. Let's see at the beginning of the year. Like right here, you had it pretty much from like May to a April to May. Got a little bit of that. Wrapped, that's a therapeutic company. Uh, they're up 17% now. What? Oh, no, I think it's tweaking out. And then KXIN, that's another runner. Caxin Auto Holdings up 29%. That's just running. Low liquidity, that's on 36,000 shares. Bond rate went up to 5.2. Does that mean the Fed thinks inflation is going to be higher in the next months? That's what they're worried about if inflation comes back. That's what I was thinking of the this morning. I'm, it's it's kind of mind blowing. Like, do you guys realize how fucked up we are? <laughs> and what I mean by that is like mentally, do you understand how stretched our per, our perception has been? I'm telling you, our, our, the way we perceive money and prices, and I'm telling you, we are a piece of gum. And the way that we are able to stretch the perception is mind-boggling because it was, it's just I was thinking about this, and I, I hope you do too. You remember at one point, just not too long ago, we had 9% inflation. That was last year. We hit 9% inflation. So then the rates were lower, Right. Then it was very hard to get rates above inflation. You know, that means, remember, you were losing money. You were literally like, damn, even at the base level of the fake ass government data, you know what I'm saying? It's like at 9% inflation, you are losing 9% of your purchasing power to, to a very, a minimum, at the minimum degree. You are losing money on prices going up, right? And then by the first couple months of the next year, inflation comes down to like five, four, now it's at 3.9, and then now your rates are at 5. It's fucked up because think about it. If inflation never goes back up, you just stole the bonds. But then if inflation goes back up, you're still fucked even if you bought 5%. I don't know if you're following with me here. That's why I'm like, dude, at 1.5 would have been awful. Another 0.5 is good. 9 would have been awful. Now 9 is good. But then it's like depending on how things play out, it's like, dude, this is all... It's a very wide range and a wide hole, but we're going from 9% to 4% to rates at 5 and now, yeah, it's, it's just, it's the perception. That's what I'm saying. It's like, it's fucked up because now you, the same people one year ago who are worried about losing 9% on their money doing nothing, it's like now you're losing three on top of the nine, but you don't know that unless you really know that. But now you're like, oh, but then, then the rates are at 5 and now... The rates are lower, so or the inflation's lower, so it's like it's, it's giving you this weird little breakdown. But above all else, I'm like, man, you're stretching people's perception. This is like that danger of the whole getting entrenched in all of that. But that's kind of where we're at right now. That's why I'm saying it's just it's it's very very wicked. Hmm. Did Volcker do this? Volcker didn't have to do anything. Again, that's the the fallacy, I guess, of Paul Volcker is that we think he was at the start of inflation. He wasn't. Paul Volcker was Trevor Hoffman. I don't know if any of you know who Trevor Hoffman is. Ding! 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 And then nobody? Nobody know what I'm talking about? No Trevor Hoffman fans in the house? Ain't nobody know Trevor Hoffman? Come on, bro. Don't do me like that. Y'all better know Trevor Hoffman. <laughs> yeah, baby. One of the greatest closers. One of the greatest closers. And you're at 4178. We made it to the level higher than yesterday now. He was a closing pitcher for the Padres. Great career. Great history. He comes in ninth inning, baby. That's who Paul Volcker was. Paul Volcker came in after inflation was already raging for six or seven years. Paul Volcker came in at the later half of the cycle. 
So right now, we're almost 48 months into inflation. Uh, by the time Volcker got in, he was like 60 months into inflation. He was at the third wave, like the final, final wave. And then he came in, raised rates, cut them, raised them, cut them, raised them, and then cut them. So he was pretty much Volcker was towards the 80s, uh, believe it or not. But the start of like inflation, that was Mr. Burns. And that's kind of where Powell's at, right? And that's what makes Powell interesting because Powell is doing kind of what both of them did and then trying not to repeat what Volcker did as far as cutting and then not make the mistakes of Burns by being too lackadaisical. So Powell's trying to play both, but in a weird way, I mean, Volcker, he just got the rates up. And Powell, I think if Powell is faced with the same fundamentals, he will, and he's just not going to cut them or lower them until it's all until it's all gone. Volcker raised as high as 18, I believe. Maybe even higher. I could check. Yeah. So take a look. Volker. So I guess Miller. There was Arthur Burns and then there was Miller. So Burns assumes the chair in 1970. This is like 2020. Literally right at the start of the decade, more or less. This is where inflation started to make its run. And rates were already at 8.9 then. So what ended up happening from 1970, the economy... It was starting to like it had a run and then it came down. You remember that chart I showed you, but then they started cutting rates, believe it or not. And then from like 70, it was like 71, they kept lowering, but then they started raising from 71 to 73. So this was like us from 2021 to 2023, pretty much. And then what happened? He got up to as high as 10 and then he would lower rates, raise them. Then he started lowering them by 1975. So five years later, they thought they were out of it. They're like, "Woo, okay, let's lower the rates again. But again, up until 1978, a new chair came in and then he sucked. And then they replaced him a year later with Volcker. Uh, and then Volcker, he was the one who raised it. And again, we went as high as 20. I think it went up to 22, but no, I think 20 was the limit. And then he had, but Volcker also had raises. He rose up from 11 to 20. He did that in five months and then he started lowering it in half. That's where Volcker was crazy. You got it. That's where you got to realize. At one point, Volcker was raising. He'd say fifteen, and then the next meeting, he'd say fuck it, twenty. And then the next meeting, he'd say fuck it, cut it to eleven. And then he'd say, ah, oh, fuck it, cut it half a percent. And then a couple months later, a year later, he'd be like, fuck it, bring it back to twenty. Yeah. So like, do you see what I'm saying? Like, this wasn't Volcker. That's where Volcker has that attitude. That's where you get that whole like, oh, is he going to be Volker? That's doing whatever the fuck you want, having no regard to what it, you know what I'm saying? Just like, boom, just fucking raise it to 20, just lower it in half. If you see a problem again, punch them in the face with 20. If they're doing good, lower the rates so nobody collapses. Oh, you have a problem? Punch them in the face again. That's what Volker was all. And he was just surprising left and right on uh, whatever he wanted. But where we're at now, it was the situation. USO oil dumping right now. I caught that in the corner of my eye. Watch out there. Yeah, oil, big candle down, almost a dollar. Flushing at 82 and the market going up in a weird way. Maybe we like oil going up because then that means some of those inflation impulses can come down. Mm -mm. Yeah, he ended with 20%, like kind of. So his highest he went was 20%. But then he ended up going lower again until Greenspan. So he ended his term at 6.7, and Volcker went as low as 5.8, I believe, is the lowest number I'm seeing. So he crazed quickly. You know, again, he took the chair uh, after replacing somebody after just one year. You know, they were just fucking swapping out, uh, you know, Fed chairs back then. But he he did quick moves to 20 early on within the first year. Pretty much by the first year he was Fed chair, he went from 11 to 20, and then he would just go randomly 11, 20, 20, 11, 20, 18, 20, and then he ended his term right before Greenspan at 675.
USO on the low. Oil going up again. Dollars going down. I think oil kind of dying might be somewhat, somewhat of a tailwind, as weird as that may sound. Because, again, if oil does start to drop from 82 now and gets back to the lower levels on the quarter, then you stop worrying about inflation as much. And then now you have also just maybe even the fear trade with it. Yen intervention? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Yen pop at the bottom. Vertical candle. Could be government. So let's see. Remember last time they did this. It, you've seen this a couple times today, though. And that shit ain't hold. So just we'll see what happens. Microsoft releases AI Copilot. Microsoft releases Big Windows 11 update with AI launch assistant included. A Dara Copilot preview. I haven't used any of the Microsoft stuff. I don't know, but like besides Chat GPT and the image stuff, is there anything else new with the ads or with the AI? How does Josh track the yen? I just go to USD JPY or uh, slash six J. Easiest way to go about it. And spy oil still coming down. Boeing on the high. Spy moving up. Yeah, Airbnb woke up a little bit there. Oil is dumping because of demand destruction, indicating global recession. Yes, that is part of it. But then again, anytime we've seen those, it's been weird. So unfortunately, the whole, in theory, I agree with you, but that hasn't been as easy to observe. Just because there's China, America, Saudis, and again, they all have their demand as well too. Hmm. That's cool. I made a cool... I was going to use this as a thumbnail. Can I show you a cool picture I made? There's two cool pictures. I saw one. I saw somebody made this AI picture, and it inspired me. I was like, yo, that's crazy. Wait, why won't it open? Oh, yeah, here it is. Are you ready? Look at this. Isn't that a cool fake dog? I was like, this is the highest quality fake dog generative AI I've ever seen. Isn't that clean? Right? And I started seeing what people were working on. I was like, damn, you could get crazy with this. So then I'm, oh, did I not save it? Oh, I didn't save it. I got it here. I got to download it off of my, my mid. I made something cool. I made one. I got inspired. That is fake. Yeah, that's all AI generated. Isn't that swag? That was dope. And then Spy still hitting it high. 417 even on the SPY. So again, 417. You should have heard that number many, many times. But you start seeing the market go above it. 4180 now. 4185. And then, four, then 4200, Chad. So again, 4180, or 4187. Excuse me. That will be the next level. So I was going to make, I was going to make, you know, the thumbnail. I was going to talk about like the robots, you know, and the machines. And I was going to include that there. But this is, this is the artwork that I made. I was very proud of this. What was the prompt for it? It was like a humanoid shimmer of iridescent metallic. I was very impressed. Yeah. This is my artwork. Thank you. Thank you. Disney, Airbnb. Airbnb is still on the high again. A lot of things going Yeah, 8K hyper realistic. Definitely. Definitely. You know, you could do 32K hyper realistic. I just discovered that. <laughs> it's crazy. Check the yen. We're just looking at it. I mean, it has to hold. It looks like intervention for now. They're going to be like, I don't know. It's completely unrelated, like everything else that's important in the world when you ask them. They'll be like, I don't know. Watch, give it two hours. 
finance minister. He's going to say, we're monitoring, but I can't make any comments on that. So there's no official statement, but like I said, it happened before. If you could get a couple candles and it holds, that'll bring down the dollar and hopefully chill us out here. Can't wait to roast the marshmallows on the market. Does that mean when it's fired? Is it fired? Is yes, Disney 8140? They were just at 79. Mm. Overstock. Oh, wow. That CVM one went. Damn. What were the other hype plays? Beam. That was in the morning off of Eli Lilly. Yeah, rent. If the yen, that's literally just killing your dollar. That's what I was saying. Maybe that's why we were ignoring it because everybody was, they know the yen move isn't permanent as of now, but it's helping out the dollar. I mean, again, you are even ripping into the highs on that. There's the yen right there, but let's see if it actually holds. 4181. You fill the, the gap you haven't filled in three days at 4187. 4244 is the real number. You lower the bears are in control. I could get by. I still think the 4200 flat, that's still the pivot point. Like I'm saying, coming into Powell, I thought we would be more pinned at 4200, but I, I do think that is the uh, the pivot point, a.k.a. either death or rally, depending on what Powell says, because it's. I think a lot's riding there. So I could get behind that. The 40, you know, 4240, you got a little bit of a range. I, I, I see where you're at. So it's not too crazy. And then oil's still dumping. Let's see if, uh, again, hopefully it doesn't hurt the oil companies and can lift up some of the SPY, but you may start to get a negative reaction from that. So four points down from the top candle. Tim Cook is tomorrow, or excuse me, Thursday after the bell. Bitcoin. All right, 10, 11, 30 minutes off a of euro close. Keep that in mind too. You know your move right here. This is off of euro close, ironically enough, I think. Mm hmm. Yeah, bro. Euro close is right here, and then we rocket it up. So you just have to wait an extra hour for Euro close, unfortunately. And then that's where I think we get out of the little weird market ranges. So follow me on Instagram at the trading fraternity. I need to go to the bathroom. Uh, we'll do push ups in 20. I think we missed round two there. Maybe we got a little too excited, but I will BRB. I'm going to go. I'm going to do some push. I'm going to stretch a little bit, but I'm going to go pee. Get me a water. And let's see, they're talking crypto. Utility and liquidity. Coming up, Coinbase Institute oh. head Chris Edwards no, joins mind. us to discuss how AI and blockchain technologies will complement each other. Economic story. And the IRS is bracing for... By the interest rate picture right now, is the Fed maybe perhaps justified in holding off on, on interest yeah, rate on hikes in the next couple of meetings to see how things play out? Do you think it's an appropriate path of action? We think holding off is the right path, Tom. You've had such a big increase in long-term bond yields. We've talked about it. Steve talked about it. It's been front and foremost, very center for a lot of people. So you can't really get past that. We think that's done a lot of work for the Fed. Probably the prudent path is to hold off. But the really tough scenario for the Fed is if it holds off for this meeting, perhaps a couple more, and if inflation sort of sits, doesn't have to increase but doesn't come down anymore, then what? Then the Fed's in a very tough spot. Does it come back in six months and start to hike again? It doesn't want to go down that road. So I'd say tomorrow, December, yes, pause. Give it some time to play out. But you can't completely discount the Fed having to come back again. Tom, there's been a lot talked about with regard to the participation of other stocks outside of the top 10 or 20 market cap ones in the S&P 500. It's been a pretty big divergence starting in the spring of this year. Is it still worrisome at all? Do people just buy index funds tied to the S&P 500 because it is just 10 stocks that drive it? Or is there hope for stock pickers out there? Do we think that value-oriented sectors can participate in the year end? Uh, I mean, that's definitely weighing on investors' minds. But there haven't been inflows into equities this year. So I'm not surprised that, you know, the large cap names are the ones leading. 
If uh, interest rates stabilize and we're getting into a decent seasonal period and, and stocks start to show some resilience, and, I, and if the economic data this week in particular comes in a little soft, I, I think you're going to see inflows into equities, and that would be the equal weight stocks beginning to get a bit as well. And, Tom, before we let you go, a quick last word to you. Is the American consumer in a good enough position to power the holiday shopping season? Um, well, you know, they've, they've been resilient so far. Um, so I, I, I'd say it's been a mistake to kind of to, to write off the consumer. So, <laughs> you know, but that's important, too. All right. They drive 70 percent of the U.S. economy. Uh, Tom Lee, Michael Schumacher, thank you, gentlemen, both for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you, Don. All right. Well, while higher rates continue to hinder things like mortgage demand and consumers. Thank you. Thank you, CNBC. Thank you. <clears throat> Sounding resilient. All the banks are sounding resilient. Mm, thanks for the roses. Thanks for the roses. All the banks are sounding resilient. Inflation's transitory. It'll come down. All the banks are sounding resilient. Inflation's transitory. It'll come down. Economic data is propaganda. I'm convinced. Don't be. Honestly, it, it, it really it hurts my heart that you that you even could think that. And because I agree with you. But it wasn't always like this. Again, like I, I'm telling, I just showed you guys the other day, bro. I used to, like, there used to be indexes from the, from literally the Fed website that used to monitor every dollar gauge on, the, on the daily. They stopped updating it since 2020. It's like, dude, there's so many. Again, like the, the non-farms, the CPI. Again, just the way the, the adjustments over the last three years have been insane. So unfortunately, it's just. Uh, you know, it's uh, it, it's not as uh, telling as it as it used to. Maybe it, it, it'll return, though. I think maybe we're just going through new changes, and as it adjusts to that, you'll you'll start to be able to to read in between the lines from it. But unfortunately, uh, it is very uh, you know, it's it, the data is much different than it was a couple of years ago. Who cares if everyone's looking and it's still the numbers? Because it used to be like, like I'm telling you, you used to be able to go to those dollar indexes and you would see the real strength of the dollar. You knew what was going to happen ahead of time. <laughs> it wasn't you. So even if the market was on like bullshit, you didn't really even care uh, because, again, you, you could notice when the dollar was getting extremely strong. You were able to to use, you know oil data and you know again certain things going up and down and actually moving even trade data trade data is still i think important because a lot of people don't look at it and it's but it's much much more lag than anything but it just it used to be more telling of what was happening versus this whole everybody gets the data then responds to it then we change it and then we go back to to responding and then now there's like a weird disconnect between the data what companies report and then you know where the markets are at Mm. All right, holding up a little bit there. To see the dollar at UUP. Or I think you could just put D type in DXY and then like a money sign thing should come up like in the search bar and just click on that one. You could load up the DXY through uh through TD, I'm pretty certain. Like what part of the data has been wrong? Oil. So if you could go back through the last year two years three years and tell me if any of that oil data makes sense uh <laughs> in terms of like production inventories all of it i mean that's something that i think is far off again uh the jobs then the jobless claims all of that it's again to the point you know how many layoffs job strikes and bankruptcies have you witnessed in the last uh 12 months Maybe maybe eighteen months. I 
Is the yen working its way up again? Well, it's kind of chilling. Zero? No, that's incorrect. You had yellow corporation. You had the UAW. That was supposed to cost how many billions a week? Literally within the last 12 to 18 months, Facebook laid off over 30,000 employees. You go down through Google spending a billion dollars in a year just in severance or a couple hundred million. Bed Bath & Beyond goes bankrupt. Again, all of these, all of these layoffs, all of these bankruptcies. Again, Yellow is the biggest trucking company in the fucking world <laughs> at the moment. And you have not seen a, a weak job number in three years. So those are just two easy examples right off the top of my head as to far like where data is heavily skewed uh, and does it again I wish I could look up <clears throat> the the trade weighted dollar uh, I don't have access to that anymore nobody does uh, but that is uh, the simplest thing oh yeah the banks failing mm -hmm. again no layoffs again just think about all of it though it's like or no real job loss even though there has been layoffs people unemployed all of that there's just a very very fat disconnect you're getting laid off I'm sorry to hear I don't know if that'll show up on the numbers though Google advanced markers now available for iOS and Android China signals tighter communist party control of finance sector yo what's up baby good morning UUP slip. It should. Again, the yen's coming back down, though. So that little intervention pop that has not been confirmed as intervention, but looked like it. Uh, you're kind of giving that back up already. Mm. LMT. That one's still going. You guys are saying RTX went above 80. Yeah, RTX starting to run now. 80 was a big level. That's why I sold out even before if things died down and it didn't get above 80. I didn't want to be there. But if you get above 80, you got three or four more dollars to fill. The Wyckoff method? No, I do not. I don't use a lot of, like, things like that. But then again, like, you'll come in here and you'll be like, do you even trade? So I'm a little different, but I like the long term. I just use basic horizontal support lines as far as those patterns will take you. But other than that, anything nuts. You're still holding the first candle on the yen, but it could come back down here. If that does give it back up, I mean, sure enough, that's word to the pressure as well. Hmm. Oh six six. Question: What's up, man? Snowing in Chicago. It's cold everywhere, bro. It's cold in Cali today. I don't like it. Some people want more bankruptcy. Spy 4180, we're still holding up, man. Again, a little bit of dollar coming down would be good, but that yen move just shows you how quickly this could all move on the dollar front. Banks are coming up. On Meta, I mean, their earnings wasn't too bad. The stock, I think, how the stock traded was weird because they had that dump and hold, but I think they're going to borderline be a little bit better than average and then follow along with probably the market. So, again, 
a lot of individual questions on companies today, but uh, I hope you guys understand, you know, a lot of what I'm looking for now is it's, it's pinned to the broader, you know, so I don't care really about the individuals because I do think everything is going to get unleashed or released depending on how the data Powell and then the final earnings go over this next couple of days. Huntington Beach now 74 sounds perfect I don't know I was cold when I woke up this morning it was like 60 it was 63 degrees in my house and I was freezing my ass off L I F W M S P recovery. What's this? Up thirty seven percent. Not too bad. Again, a lot of weird runners. That other one not overstock. C V M. That one started to wake up there again. I don't know. I think it went as high as like two or three that one time. Why don't you spend money on getting your house warmer? What do you mean? Like, how can I do that? Like a heater? Is that, I, I don't, I don't like to turn on the heater. I don't like the smell of the heater. You know what I'm saying? And then like, it's just, I like to sleep cold too. That's it. I like to get, I like to get cold before I sleep. So I'm, I'm, I'm cool with it when I go to bed. But when I wake up, that's the, the thing. Double glaze windows. I, I don't need any breakfast. That's fine. But I think I already have those, man. You know, but just for the most part, I got me a little space heater. Mm -hmm. mm. Fake heat. I like it. I just don't like the, uh, I just, I don't know. I think it's the Middle Eastern in me. Like I've, the, the, our mom tells us not to sleep with the heater on. My mom said, no, turn that off. It's bad for you. It's bad for you. Don't breathe that. Don't breathe that. So I'm just used to, That's why, like, I just, I feel like it's bad juju. I slept with the heater on one time, and I woke up, and, like, my I had a sore throat and everything. Mm. I have to run the heater to make sure the babies stay warm. Yeah, you got to protect the kids, protect the kids. I could get behind that. Hamas armed wing Spock says told mediators that group will release some foreign captives in coming days. Mm. Why buy furnace when you could add to your lawn term? Amen. But it's not like it's not like everything. You just go and, like, you live a horrible life and buy long-term. Like, you don't have to do that. And then vice versa, every little inconvenience in your life, you don't just throw money at it. So, <laughs> you know, to kind of, like, bring this full circle, you know, you just got to vibe, baby. You got to vibe. You got to vibe. Do what you need to do. But it's not really, uh, you know, just it's cold in the mornings. It's cold in the morning. Welcome to winter. Why pay rent when you could add it to the long term? Honestly, though, like, do you realize how fast you grow a long term if you don't pay rent? Holy shit. <laughs> That's why I say some of y'all, man, if you living at home, bro, honestly, if you still got a good relationship with your parents and you ain't even had a girlfriend in a while, just go move back in, bro. I'm telling you, call it a day, bro. You going to stack up that you gonna have a bigger long term than me in one year off of no rent. You're like, damn, Josh, I didn't know I had a million dollars because I just don't pay rent anymore. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. It's crazy, bro. It's so uh, you guys are you guys are blessed if you have that. Maybe take advantage of it if you still if you still can. Mm -hmm. Mm 
Mm-hmm. The house paid off. Yeah, you're good. Amen. But that's the... So, I don't know. The rent payments, it goes a long way. To avoid making me feel bad about paying rent, REITs invested for monthly residuals. I just buy a house in Ohio, in Indiana, in Kansas City, Oklahoma. Shit, some of the sticks in New York, but they're not that good. Some places in Tennessee. Uh, some places in Florida still. You know, I just go buy you a cheap house and rent out the cheap house and then go rent wherever you want to. 55K LT at 21. Let's go, baby. Let's fucking go. That's good, man. Y'all got to keep it. Make sure. And again, I mean, literally what we were just talking. I'm like, I wake up cold. They're like, why don't you buy something, Josh? And then on the reverse, they like, well, why don't you just not buy anything and put it to the long term? So like I'm saying here, just... At, you know, at 20 years old or whatever, just remember, not every problem is solved by throwing money at it uh, and, and, you know, vice versa. You know, you're not by sacrificing everything in your life and not taking care of yourself to try to make money. That will also have a negative effect on you as well. So find your balance, find your balance. But hang on to that. Keep in mind into to what you could do with property. That's it, man. Mm. Rent one of Josh's places Then Airbnb the place I mean if you tell me ahead of time I could be down but If you lie to me and then don't pay rent For like three to six months because of COVID guidelines And then Airbnb it I'd probably be a little mad And I'll be like it's happening again Ah just my luck RTX 80-20 You're right back again Every little Quick sell-off has been met with a new high, uh, literally, especially since Euro closed, but even from the morning here. But really, right after Euro closed, we made the run-up, quick drop, huge pop, quick drop, another pop, bigger drop, bigger pop, another drop, another pop. What property are you open to? Um, I have one house right now that, honestly, I got it rented a while ago. And then the renters left because they were uh, military. So, like, they, they're allowed to just, like, dip out. You know what I'm saying? But it was just, uh, it just, it did not turn out good because they left quickly. So, I have a, I don't know if it's rented out yet. I took in a couple of applications. But if that house is still vacant, feel free. I'll let you Airbnb it. But then the HOA, I don't think you're allowed to. You're not allowed to, but if you could get away with it, you can make a lot. And then you're responsible for the fines. I think if you get caught, it's like a five hundred dollar a day fine, or or five hundred or a hundred. I have to double check. Mm. A good that's a it's a good property I like it I don't think it's bad it's rented relatively quickly uh it's it's kind of higher priced I think the rent is at like I want to it's like four to four point two k a month and then the house is like twenty maybe twenty five hundred square feet so it's still like you have a lot of rooms but it's kind of expensive nothing news on oil no we were watching it go down earlier but we didn't get any headlines on it nothing live 12:32 we're chilling man we're chilling all right 4182 i mean if this it's been nonstop maybe we'll chill out bonds are catching a bit again the yen gave up some of that little rally and then the dollar is still elevated, but off the highs. And then once again, S&P, I think you need to go up like 2.8% today or like 2% to make it uh, break even on the month. So I don't know if we're going to get that, but it's really all about do we hit 4,200 or not? And again, there's like seven more levels till the next one. Mm. Is there the Yemen declaring new a war? It is real, but 
I mean, again, the Yemen and Houthis, it's not really like, again, they have a, they've had a lot of conflict already, but it's not like as serious as a, you know, a bigger nation, oil providing nation getting in, involved in it. Yeah, the Saudis beef with Yemen. That's why it's interesting because now they're going to be on the same side of a conflict this time. But we'll we'll see how long that lasts. Uh, what's that? Susa? LYV Zillow's dying. Oh my goodness, Zillow. Whoa. Yo, Zillow, Zillow, Zillow. What in the world? Yo, Zillow's down 39 to 38.22. That's a pretty big move for them. Already down 1.4. Uh, buy a haunted house, maybe for the right price. Zillow Group earnings pre. Do they have earnings today? November 1st. Their earnings are tomorrow. That's crazy. Yeah, Redfin, no. There could be. Maybe the earnings got leaked. Honestly, because they have earnings tomorrow after the bell, but that's moving very big and not any other real estate stock is doing that. So like if uh, open door is starting to drop, I guess, too, but none of the REITs are like flushing like that. That's very, very weird. This is like real estate services plays open door and Zillow Redfin a little bit, but they might be next. They do real estate, yes. But it's weird, again, bought, unless they they have earnings tomorrow morning, that could be uh, the only other thing that goes a little bit crazy there. That, and that's why I'm thinking, like, maybe something came out, but that's a very big one. Is Redfin dying now? So there you go. So now Redfin, Open Door. Redfin's not as bad. That's why it's weird. But, like, Open Door is a knife. Uh, then Zillow, ECL on the high, and then Vertex. <coughs> could be an earnings leak i don't know it just seems like it's that's very aggressive and i don't know why and, and and again the rates it's not like things are really supporting that move so it's probably either individual news or something came out when it shouldn't have <coughs> I see an hour ago, Zillow has begun uh, layoffs. Someone said that from employees on um, LinkedIn, but I'm not really seeing anything. So again, there's an old report about layoffs in Zillow an hour ago. Nothing is officially hitting wires yet. We had other people on it. Yeah, there's nothing. Q2. I'm on their website. Nothing is released in it uh, on active. Oh. Is that it? No, last updated. I thought I might have found it. No, bro, they're still dumping. Bro, there's something there. Again, I'd watch Redfin too, but now Open Door. If Redfin starts knifing, there you go. It's something with the real estate stocks. It started with Zillow, uh, but you got something in that world popping off right now. Mm -mm. Real estate agents been dumping their lead subscriptions. Yeah, may I've saw somebody talk about that. There's like comments 
on what's been going on, but nothing, uh, nothing like legit, nothing groundbreaking. But that's a big move now. That's five percent. We called that out at down one percent. So again, I mean, they all literally even Redfin was sub zero or literally not even one percent down, and then Open Door. I don't know how much, but they all just got pummeled right now. So again, six percent on Open Door. Redfin down three. Zillow down five point one right now. No news. We have no news. CSGP. CoStar. Oh, I saw them tagged in something else there, but let's see. Online real estate and analytics. It operates through North America. Yeah, so they, they're up. One literally one up the rest down. So it's something with this. CoStar is doing good. This is another real estate marketplace. Well, my goodness. It's not. It's something there, bro. It could be that one headline again. I saw some people talking about dumping Zillow, uh, Zillow subscriptions, and then going here. But you literally have one real estate name rocketing up, and then all of the other ones dumping. So I think it's some type of relationship between these CSGP good news and then bad news for everybody else. If that makes any sense. I've checked everywhere so far. Twitter, all of it. We've tried to find out, but that's what I think uh best way to sum it up until we get uh, another headline. Mm. 4183, we're right below the level, still holding up near the highs. Zillow. Some news, you notice Missouri jury finds NAR brokerages guilty of conspiring to inflate commissions. Maybe. I don't know if that will be it, but because C that CSGP going up, I think it makes the whole thing a little weirder, unfortunately. You said Pat Ryder? I see Kurt. I don't see uh, Pat Ryder. I see Kirby. I searched up Pat Ryder, and all that came up was Paw Patrol streams. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, more Zillow lows there, and then weed stocks on the high. Ryder. They're doing it from the Department of Defense account. They don't have they don't have good uh, what's it called titles. We are your defense. <clears throat> yeah, I still can't. I can't find it. <clears throat> They have the other one with Kirby. The market found a new high, though. Apple on the high. Again, that Zillow drama. CSGP, but tech just woke up. You got a big green shoot. Again, it's about 1042 here, so still, what, two hours, 20 minutes? 4187 now. Next level knocked out. 4200. Back to the pivot point. <clears throat> mm -mm -mm. So there it is. Redfin on the low now. 445. If it goes back to 385, will you buy it again? I will consider it, but I mean, look at everything else. I mean, like I told you guys, just don't touch it till it goes to $3. So I hope that helped. Uh, and then I hope you sold the covered calls too at the top. 
41-88 now. That's it. We're, we have filled the gap over the last couple of days. That's wild. So, again, I mean, it took you three days to f get back to Wednesday's close, four days, and then now this was even the low of the day. That was the same. You you go back up here, you'll go. If you fill this gap, we're back to break even, I think, on the month. But even then, I mean, this is at least a little bit of progress, to say the least. But you have now finally hit that level. I don't know what oil is going to do. I think if oil goes down, it'll be both good and bad, good for a little bit as people respond to inflation, and then bad if they blame it on the economy. And then at the same time, if it goes back up, you know, we're going to have a lot of problems. Hi from Paris. What's up, man? You live in Paris or are you just visiting? The Pentagon will deploy an additional 300 troops to Central Command from continental U.S. Oh, man. And, and the entire Department oh i found it our thoughts and prayers are with him and his family so they're literally sending that, 300 more troops out there i think on top of the 900 Tarkov associated for us hi general robert um in the days since the loose and shooting it's come to light that the army determined that the main reservist shouldn't have had a gun at the time and there's been numerous other warning signs about him is the Pentagon looking at all at maybe something that was missed or a way to maybe ti further tighten reporting to law enforcement in the wake of this attack? Yeah, thanks, Oh, it's Carl. already so almost 11. Today has flown by. Departmental efforts as it relates My to goodness. this individual case. What I would say okay, I'm gonna go is the P2. that for service members who uh, weed stocks are uh, up are as well. The service, Again, Zillow, real uh, estate still dying. We just woke up out service, of nowhere. Uh, but in particular, those departing, uh, we do offer a wide variety of services uh, as part of that transition process to include medical and mental health care services. Uh, once a service member leaves, uh, he or she is, of course, a private citizen. Uh, and when appropriate, certainly the DOD would, would consult with local law enforcement. Uh, in this particular case, uh, the, the individual, of course, was in the Army Reserve, so I'd refer you to, to them for any further questions. All right. Um, and further, can you give us an update? Has there been any additional attacks on U.S. bases in Iraq and Syria in the last 24 hours? Is the total still uh, 23, I think? Um, so, you know, again, we'll continue to keep you updated. What I'm tracking right now is since our self-defense uh, self strikes on 26 October, there have been six additional uh, what I would consider small-scale attacks, uh, three in Iraq, three in Syria. Um, right now we're tracking a total of 27 attacks, um, 16 in Iraq, 11 in Syria. Again, as we see the, the data miner alerts pop up, uh, we check each of those with CENTCOM, go back uh, to verify the information. And, and as that information is either verified or, or batted down, we'll be, make sure to let you know. Did any of those actually hit the bases or were they all intercepted? Um, in some cases, uh, they just didn't strike anything. Yeah. Um, Again, to my knowledge, no injuries, no damaged infrastructure. Okay, thanks very much. Yes, sir. Uh, General, you have uh, discussed about these attacks, the need to keep the response specifically to them isolated to the anti-ISIS coalition and how that's separate from what's going on in Gaza. But we have seen such an increase over the past couple of weeks. Um, does the department acknowledge at least a, a link of what's spurring these attacks is the U.S.'s support for Israel. Yeah, so I think it's important to differentiate between uh, what Iranian proxies this is my favorite Iran one. might be saying. You're like, it's completely unrelated. we bring to this, which is so, our forces are in Iraq and Syria for one purpose, unrelated. which is the enduring defeat of ISIS. That's why they're there. That's what they'll stay focused on. So uh, this is separate and distinct from the situation in Israel, between Israel and Hamas. And so, again, our message is we will take whatever necessary actions to protect those forces, to deter future attacks. Uh, and if and when we need to respond, we would do so at a time and place of our choosing. If they are separate, what has led to the increase in attacks over the past couple of weeks? Do you think? Well, certainly this is not the first time we've seen these Iranian proxy groups do these kinds of things for a multitude of purported various reasons. So that in and of itself is not unusual. 
Uh, and again, we'll do what we need to do to protect our troops. And you said you're, you're going to hold them um, accountable. Do you have a sense of how involved uh, the Iranian government is in these attacks, or are they simply just not communicating for these groups to hold off, or do they even have that, that power? Yeah, we, we know that these groups are funded, trained, sponsored by the Iranian government, and we hold the Iranian government responsible for that. Let me go to the phone here. Uh, Tony from Bloomberg. Ed, sorry, uh, I, quick, I, I was slow to unmute. Two quick questions. Roughly how much presidential drawdown authority do you have left now for Ukraine? And I had a second question about the Persian Gulf. Yeah, sure. Uh, so right now we have uh, a little more than $5.4 billion uh, in restored PDA authority that remains available for Ukraine. And in Persian Gulf, is the United States increasing its force posture or protection measures in the Gulf to protect international shipping from Iranian small boat harassment attacks if in fact that occur they occur well tony you know we we have those forces in the region uh, for a variety of, of things to include uh, helping to protect uh, the the shipping lanes and and uh, free flow of commerce through the region and, and we've been doing that for a very long time so certainly that is a capability that we can provide working alongside our partners in the region uh, we'll continue to do that thank you uh, you mentioned that the U.S. is providing munitions uh, to Israel. Does that include motoring munitions like the switchblades or Phoenix Pro. tools that the U.S. is providing? Zillow, Redfin, open yeah, so door again. A bigger provided, flush. I don't have any additional uh, support to announce. Again, you know, we're focused on artillery. Yeah, bro, that's down 10 percent now. Munitions and air defense. So at this and point, I mean, watch the other ones, but you guys remember, the US we got it early. <laughs> this is the FOMO point now. All the contracts already went crazy. That have come under attack to kind of augment their traditional air defense capabilities. Um, so I don't want to go into the specific capabilities that we're it, using. Oh, I know to, what the fuck it is. Uh, protect Duh. Our other than to say. Oh, dude, I bet variety, you there's a meeting going on. Include, uh, you know how those ones? I get you the ones that you could listen to. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Let me see. I gotta go through all of them. Earnings call October twenty. What is the Pentagon's no, assessment? Nothing for CSGP. Let me South see if Korea Zillow has anything. Uh, Not the bond dog. There's something going on with Zillow. Guarantees for South Korea, which no. Ends to yeah, no, there's no, there's not any, anything US scheduled. I don't know, man. Weapons in a vis, uh, an invisible way if North Korea refuses to freeze nuclear weapons production. I'm sorry, Janie. I, can you repeat that last part? I didn't fully understand. I want to make sure I get your question right. I mean, which aims to redeploy U.S. nuclear weapons in a, a feasible way if North Korea refuses to uh, You're nuclear You're saying the majority, the majority, yeah. Missouri jury yeah, right so I, I uh, finding? Get into hypotheticals. I've seen people uh, say that, but I don't know if in that's. Terms of our commitment to I just I don't know if that's causing 10 percent, and then you still have uh, again GPCR. So this is what you got to notice. This is the winner. Again, or CSGP. This is the winner when all of these are going down. So there's somebody benefiting off of it, but then the other ones are getting clapped. To be able to prevent any type of uh, Redfin, Missouri, Missouri know, jury finds like NAR brokerages so guilty of conspiring to inflate because commissions. Of China and I saw Russia that all too. So I don't know. I don't know if that's the 10% reason. And then why is there one Lone Star doing good? In Beijing, and they branded the United States for the Middle East crisis. Uh, saying that uh, it was due to U.S.'s faulty diplomacy. Why do China and Russia say that the war between Israel and Hamas is because of the United States? Uh, I'll let uh, China and Russia speak for themselves. I think their, their record speaks for itself. Body. Okay, you're still running up here. VIX so is even lower, so like we were talking about earlier, this is part of it. Z and ZG, there's no difference. I think one has voting rights and the other one doesn't. I cannot. I don't uh, so just like preferred and unpreferred. I don't know if ZG is preferred. Continue to provide, uh, is it just class A, not preferred? On a daily basis. ALB and SQM are dying now too. As far as what their needs are. 
in the future, if we have that information uh, and we're able to provide it, we certainly will. But as of right now, I don't have that. Is, is there, I mean, is it a, a, an issue of collecting how much you sent or is it something else? Because in the case of Ukraine, um, there's whenever there's a, a new package of assistance, the Pentagon announces what's in it and the price. I don't know if CSGP so had shorts. It's a real estate company. And people were talking about them yeah. benefiting yeah. off yeah. of Zillow doing no, bad. That's why I'm like, you that. can't yeah. ignore this, though. You see what I'm saying? Like, if you're trying to interpret this news and they're all dying, we don't have any headlines. There's a couple of headlines you could try to attribute it to. Why is one of them going straight up in an algo fashion? So policy, usually uh, it means there's something good and then something bad for everybody else. That's but we haven't been able to find it to Ukraine. Uh, and so, you know, again, we will make sure that we're as transparent as possible. And then spy still going up. We're running those real estate stocks, though, getting a lot of attention. Uh, but like forty one eighty nine. Remember, forty two hundred, ten more points. That is the next level. We filled the gap in everything. NVIDIA chip makers, they're so moving now. AMD really going. If yeah, but I mean, we've been very clear in terms of the kinds of capabilities we're providing in terms of the, the types of munitions, uh, medical support, uh, air defense support, and those kinds of things. If I may, uh, the IDF spokesperson on CNN, with Will Switzer, uh, minutes ago acknowledged that Israel targeted Jabalia refugee camp, um, where scores of civilians have been killed. The IDF spokesperson said, this is the tragedy of war. We've been saying for days, move south. Uh, your own department is saying there are no restrictions on Israel how to use uh, weapons provided by the U.S. The secretary today, in his tweet about his phone call with Mr. Gallant, said he reemphasized the safety of civilians. Wouldn't the idea of putting some restrictions on, on how Israel used the weapon actually achieve the target of uh, making sure civilians aren't being killed the way we're seeing, I mean, the other way is saying, and this is a quote, Gaza has become a graveyard for thousands of children. Yeah, thanks, Fadi. So I, I can't speak to individual uh, Israeli strikes. Um, I've seen the, the re press reports on that. I, I don't have any information on that. Um, you heard Secretary Austin say today that taking civilian safety into account is both a moral and a strategic obligation, uh, and we do care about civilian casualties and we've made it both clear publicly and privately about our concern for the protection of innocent light and and life and the respect uh, for the law of war and that's not going to change um, but i also think it's important to not forget about the common denominator here which is hamas which is a terrorist organization that has taken a page out of the isis playbook in terms of brutality and wanton disregard for civility and for human rights and not only did they commit a horrific, horrific slaughter of Israeli civilians and take more than 200 hostages to use as bargaining chips, but they've willfully and deliberately integrated their operations, their command and control nodes, armories, rockets targeting Israel among the innocent Gazan population, thus in effect employing them as human shields. And so it's Hamas using Palestinians as human shields that is creating this extra challenge for Israel as they conduct their operations. And we're going to, of course, continue to talk to our Israeli partners about the importance of taking civilian safety into account as they conduct their operations. But we also recognize that they have a responsibility and a duty to their citizens to protect their citizens from future Hamas attacks. And we're going to continue to support them that in that effort. Uh, and as you heard Secretary Austin and Secretary Blinken talk about today, the U.S. government is also going to continue to work very closely with other partners as well as vetted NGOs to deliver humanitarian aid to Gaza to the Palestinians because, again, no one wants to see innocent people suffering, whether they be Palestinian or Israeli. Thank you. Yes, Joe. Thank you, General. I want to go back to the Houthis attack against Israel. Do you have any additional information in regard to this attack? You could share it with us. Was it a missile or a UAV? And also, does the Pentagon consider the Houthis' activities right now as a threat to Israel, or it could... Ex Yo, it Pfizer, could red to green, to they're the coming region. up now? Yeah, thanks, Joe. Interesting, uh, so and then the video, that mean, might be the um, next right red now, to green. Uh, we are aware that uh, the Houthis... Yeah, they're still down 1%, uh, then Netflix too, Tesla. Range, Again, uh, Pfizer, they were red, they were red by 2%. Uh, cruise missile to uh, 
targeting Israel. Israel did take it down. The IDF did take it down. Uh, and so I certainly re refer you to the IDF to talk about that uh, in particular. Uh, this is something that we will continue to monitor. As we've said before, uh, we want to prevent a broader regional conflict. We will continue to stay in close contact with our partners in the region uh, to make sure that we continue to do that. But that, that's all I've got on that at this point. Thank you very there's much. There's a big difference between a ballistic missile and a cruise missile. Which, which did you say? Um, this was a, uh, I'll have to come back to you, David. I don't want to get it wrong. Yeah. But oh. we, know that, we know that they have missile, as I've mentioned before, uh, they have um, missiles that can range approximately 2,000 kilometers. So clearly uh, within range of Israel. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. So today, Secretary Austin said that if, uh, if U.S. stops supporting Ukraine, Russia will succeed in Ukraine. Do you have additional options for supporting Ukraine's military in case of Congress does not approve new funding now or in the future? Yeah, so at this, at this point, I appreciate the question. I, I don't want to get into the hypotheticals. Uh, we will continue to work closely with Congress to get the funding that we need. Uh, we're confident that we can continue to support both Ukraine and Israel. One more in Ukraine. Could you provide us the updates on the training in Arizona on, on F-16s and how long approximately can it take for the pilots to complete the course? Sure. Um, let me just double check here. Uh, so right now, um, what we uh, expect graduation completion will be dependent on the individual proficiency of pilots themselves, um, but we can estimate about five to nine months for them to complete that, that training. Five to nine? Five, five to nine. nine. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, General. Um, the United States has been uh, providing military guidance and assistance and also lethal assistance to Israel. And you've made it very clear that you're talking to your counterparts about they have to be uh, mindful of loss of civilian life. Uh, but also there are statements coming from both the Secretary Austin and also the White House that there's no conditions set on the use of the ammunition and the U.S. is not drawing any red lines, quote unquote. Um, would you say that it's basically a blank check to the Israeli military to do whatever they want because there is support from the United States and there's no conditions set? And would you say that it's time to perhaps start warning them about warning them about consequences rather than, you know, recommendations? Well, I think Secretary Austin did talk about his consultation uh, with his Israeli counterpart, and and again across the board about the importance of taking civilian safety into account in order to think through the second and third order effects here, right? And so again, we're providing these munitions to Israel to support their efforts to protect their civilians from further terrorist attacks. Uh, the uh, Israeli Defense Forces are a professional military. They're engaged in a campaign to defeat ISIS and prevent them from doing what they did on October 7th. And, and as we've said, we support their right to defend themselves against terrorism, but in a way that upholds the laws of war and protects civilians. And so, uh, again, as I highlighted earlier, uh, the challenge in all of this is the fact that you see Hamas embedding themselves among the uh, Gazan population. And so, again, we're going to continue to relay to our Israeli partners that they must distinguish between terrorist and innocent civilians as they root out Hamas, uh, and they've acknowledged that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It sounds like a valid point that Hamas is using these civilians as human shields. That's why there are these casualties, but we're talking about thousands of civilians. So are you able to pick out the ones that the Israelis are saying, okay, I mean, they're right, you know, like they've been used as human shields. And in these airstrikes specifically, no, they actually haven't upheld the laws of war. Is the DOD able to make that differentiation? Well, look, I, I'll let uh, the Israelis speak to their own specific operations. We know that they're not uh, deliberately targeting civilians, unlike Hamas, which did deliberately target civilians and is deliberately using uh, civilians as human shields. Okay, high ticker um, going off now. So You're getting another again, green shoot at the top. A very so this isn't off of anything. We've just been literally running since Euro close. A lot of red to green now. You got a couple of names making that move there. Some not moving at all. Nasdaq's uh, the lagger on the day, believe it or not, or the Dow. Actually, Nasdaq's a little bit behind. Hey, sir, just wondering if you can confirm. Uh, yeah, the, Tesla just uh, went crazy. Marine Expeditionary Unit and the Amphibious Ready Group. Are they in the Eastern Med yet? Uh, yeah, so, Jared, what I can tell you right now is they're still in the U.S. Central Command AOR. 
uh, area of responsibility. Uh, beyond that, I, I don't have any updates to provide. If, if and when there are, we, we'll certainly let you guys know um, when we can. Thank you. Let me go to Laura Seligman, Seligman Politico. Uh, Zillow, see if you get the hey, upside. Pat, thanks for this. Um, two questions. Um, first of all, has Secretary Austin spoken with uh, the new House Speaker yet? Um, there's, a, there's a couple of things I imagine he'd be wanting to talk about, including aid for Ukraine. And then I have a follow-up. Yeah, thanks, Laura. Uh, I will have to get back to you on that. Uh, certainly the, the Secretary is on the Hill today. Uh, I do not know if he had the chance while he was there to engage with the, the House Speaker. So we'll come back. To Zillow, him. though? Watch okay, out because I mean, whenever there there's going to be a um, new a update on it. So New York like there is going to be a moment and then CSGP is still running. There were, there were but you're going to get a moment where the news we finally figure out what it is and then it does its thing. CSGP is still going. I'm just wondering um if that is accurate um or is that uh, or are the special operations forces the ones that were some, that were just offering advice to the Israelis and are now gone? Right. My understanding uh, is that these uh, forces are there uh, supporting the uh, advice and intelligence support as it relates to hostage recovery. Thank you. Ro. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, one quick question on North Korea. North Korea said that they will conduct a military satellite launch by the end of October, but they didn't. So does the Pentagon assess their technical issues that North Korea has to resolve for successful satellite launch? Or do you see uh, indications that North Korea is still preparing to conduct a uh, satellite launch in the near future? Yeah, yeah. thanks, Ria. I, I appreciate the question. Um, I'm not going to go into intelligence on, on what we may or may not know as it relates to that. Certainly something we will continue to monitor. Thank you very yeah. much. Time for a few more. Wafa, and then we'll come here. Yes, sir. Uh, yesterday, a senior defense official said that uh, the administration is asking tough questions, of course, asking Israel uh, tough questions. If you can elaborate on this, uh, especially that it doesn't seem like Israel is taking these Can you elaborate on these tough questions? questions? <laughs> sure. Uh, as what I questions were I mean, tough? We, we are asking uh, in our consultations. Um, you know, like good friends do, and highlighting the importance of being methodical in terms of uh, you know, targeting, um, taking in, into account civilian safety, uh, thinking through second and third order effects, as I've highlighted. Again, at the end of the day, uh, these are Israel's operations uh, that they are taking to defend themselves against a future terrorist attack like the one they experienced. Uh, and they're the ones that are going to make decisions. We're not directing, advising them on, on any of that. Um, but again, uh, we'll continue to have those conversations going forward. Yes, ma'am. So Hamas is not a, a conventional army, as you know, and in fact, it's part of uh, the population in Gaza, and it's unlike ISIS and uh, Al Qaeda, is considered uh, Hamas is considered as a resistant movement by a majority in the Arab world. My question is, from a uh, military point of view. How is it possible to destroy or eliminate Hamas without eliminating uh, an entire population in Gaza? Yeah, so we, we don't see uh, the Palestinians as Hamas and Hamas as the Palestinians. And again, I'd go back to October 7th when a uh, terrorist organization essentially killed in cold blood 1,400 people and took 200 hostages, again, using those hostages today as a bargaining chip preventing people from leaving Gaza. So if you're so-called governing these people, but preventing them from leaving Gaza, you know, again, so it is a terrorist group like ISIS, and it is the kinds of thing you saw in places like Raqqa and Mosul, where there was a population that was being held by an ideological captor. Uh, and so again, we are very focused on making sure that not only does Israel have what it needs to defend itself, but also making sure that Palestinians, innocent Palestinians, can get the aid that they need and looking forward, and again, from this podium, Department of Defense, I'm not going to get into the diplomatic or political realm, but we are interested in what does this look like afterwards and how do we get to a two-state solution so that Palestinians and Israelis can live safely and securely without the threat of being subjugated by a group like Hamas. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, two questions. One. Uh, as far as Hamas attack, uh, surprise attack against Israel on October 7, they didn't care who they were killing, civilians or non-civilians. Now Israel have a 
challenge, as you said, that how to separate civilians from these terrorists. Another thing is that where is the Palestinian government in this war, as far as Israel's war against terrorists on their land? And whenever there is an attack by terrorists, whether it's against the US or India or Israel, those nations, except the East or the West, we call them terrorists, but they call them, they are freedom fighters. So, yeah, where, so, so you know, as it relates to the, the Palestinian Authority, I'd, I'd refer you to them to talk about where they stand uh, on this issue. Um, and in terms of you know, the, the definition between freedom fighter and terrorist group, I get what you're saying. Uh, but any moral high ground was lost on October 7th uh, when 1,400 innocent civilians, many of them innocent civilians, killed, hostages taken. Uh, and so, again, uh, that's not the conduct of a professional military that's looking to defend uh, a population. And let me, let me go ahead and move on to the phone here. Uh, Patty, task and purpose. Yes, um, I guess it's kind of a bigger question. Um, how is the Pentagon seeing the operations in the Middle East? I mean, are we? What's the operational threshold for us? You know, being considered at war, we're seeing you know movement of troops, movement of military assets, and threats on U.S. troops. So I guess where? How does the Pentagon see all this? Yeah, thanks, Patty. So, so again, I think if we take a step back here, uh, right now we see this uh, conflict in Israel contained to Israel between Israel and Hamas. Um, we do recognize there are broader tensions in the region as a result of that, uh, which is why we have deployed additional capabilities into the Eastern Mediterranean uh, and into the U.S. Central Command area of responsibility to provide us with uh, the options necessary to respond to a wide variety of contingencies. So those forces are really there for two things. One, to deter uh, any escalation of a broader regional conflict, which no one wants to Okay, I think that's all our time. Uh, <laughs> National security work, like the defeat ISIS mission, what? like keeping the lanes of shipping open. Oh, I was like, all right, word, to, I guess. To, uh, that's all we're allowed to watch today. Like yeah, that. that's okay. So Back again, to the, right now, there's uh, even a John Kirby and uh, prevent this from KJP a right now. Regional conflict, but we're working very hard. I like sure listening to Pat Ryder, but at the end of it, this is all becoming very. At the same time, supporting. Sadly, it's their fight. It's turning into Russia, Ukraine. I don't know how to describe it. I without you know. I think they're two separate scenarios, but the communication, the news, the news flow, the way we're slowly absorbing it and accepting it. So, but I don't know. If, I don't think the market's really uh, responding to this stuff. Stress not to target civilians. And then a lot of little rallies there, small caps to the little red to greens, and then a couple of the big techs. Has Israel done anything that would? lead this building to assume that it's an alien concept to them? I mean, they've been around as a, as a standing army for 70-something years. And also, I, I, don't, I don't recall this emphasis on any of this military support for Ukraine, that he had, that as he, did he have to uh, constantly remind his uh, Ukrainian counterpart to uh, follow the rule of law of war in Ukraine? Yeah. Is he, or is it just Israel? Thanks, Mike. Uh, so, you know, I'm not going to compare and contrast the conflicts in Ukraine and Israel. I think, you know, we, we've all watched how those have played out. I think uh, at, at the risk of coming across as, um, and I don't mean this to come across like I don't understand what you're asking. Um, clearly, everyone's watching the television. I thought he was about to be like, well, I'll do respect. You an idiot. With uh, all situation. due respect. In, Gaza. We recognize that. So you and other members of the press can ask very legitimate questions in terms of what is the Department of Defense saying and doing as it relates to that situation. So that is why I really thought he was about to go off on him. I was like, Pat, are taking place <laughs> because it is better a than that. On Pat, come on. Minds. And it's a legitimate topic. And again, as I mentioned, um, we recognize the complexity of this conflict. Uh, we recognize the emotion surrounding this conflict. But we also think it's important to have a broader understanding of why we're supporting Israel, why it's important to support Israel, but at the same time, why it's important to also help with the humanitarian situation in Gaza. Uh, and to, to sort of see through the, the smoke screen here that Hamas is attempting to, to put up when it comes to the situation. So um, 
that's what I would have to offer you on that. All right, let me go to the last question. We'll do John, and then actually we'll go to, to Jen here. Yep. Thanks. I just want to get a quick clarification on something. You said that uh, U.S. air and missile defenses uh, in the Middle East include directed energy weapons. Were those systems that had uh, already been deployed there? I said we have a wide variety in our inventory of the U.S. military that includes directed energy weapons. I didn't say specifically what we've got employed and where. Okay. So you won't say whether they're in the Middle East? Yeah, at, at this time, I'm just not going to go into what we're using and how we're using it. I mean, you know, you and I have both been over there quite a few times. You've seen we've got a variety of capabilities, uh, you know, to include CWIS and things like that. So I, I'm just not going to go through a, a breakdown, especially while we have forces that are, you know, over there right now. So last question, Jim. General, I'd just like to go over to Ukraine a little bit. It's, it's winter in Ukraine now. Are operations slowing down? What are, what are the Ukrainians telling you? And the training that the United States and the coalition put together for, um, uh, for the Ukrainian uh, units in Germany and in other places, is that contingent on the supplemental being passed also? I'm just curious. Yeah, thanks, Jim. Uh, so again, I, you know, when it comes to providing an operational update, I'd, I'd refer you to the Ukrainians. I would say, largely speaking, uh, what we see are the Ukrainians making some incremental gains. They are making forward progress. Uh, we are seeing in some places uh, that the Russians attempting offensive operations uh, with limited effect. Uh, I think uh, NSC provided a briefing the other day that talked about uh, some of the, the issues there. Um, all that to say, though, you do see the Russians attempting to, to move forward in some areas. Uh, and so, again, right now we continue to stay focused on making sure that Ukraine has what it needs uh, in order to uh, capitalize on the situation uh, have the battlefield effects that are necessary to not only preserve territory but take back sovereign territory. Um, as it as it uh, in regards to training, um, we are continuing to conduct training at Grafenvir. Uh, I will have to get back to you though in terms of the specifics on um, how far out that training will go. Um, but certainly, the the supplemental funding will uh, support those efforts for the long term. I think the last thing I'd say on this, and it's an important point, is we're not only focused on the near term. We are focused on the long-term uh, defense cooperation and relationship with Ukraine and ensuring that they have what they need to be able to deter future attacks from Russia uh, and maintain their, their sovereignty long-term. So thank you very much, everybody. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pat Ryder. What the fuck? That's how you fucking end a fucking video right there. See what I'm saying? I'm ending every video like this now. They got that down. Look, you got the Pentagon. You got this beautiful flag. You had some nice, gentle America music in the background. Wow, that was great. He just walked. That was great, man. America. Woo. Well, on that note, Chad, on that note, you have an hour and 45 minutes remaining. Today kind of flew by. Let's go over AMD. I'm down to go over AMD with you, man. That'd be... That'd be my pleasure. Like you ordered a four piece with uh, mac and cheese and a diet lemonade. And if you don't get that, then I'm sorry. That <laughs> honestly, because you're going through it. If you don't know what I'm saying right there, if you've been if you've been restricted from the Lord's chicken by choice or not, I just hope. I hope you get exposed to that blessing. Where is AMD? Is this it? Yeah. So I did this yesterday for the watch list. That's the good news and bad news. Uh, is that I could have gave this to you already, but we're ready to go. So do you guys want to go over AMD right now? Is now a good time? I feel like the market, you got 50-50 highs and lows. You just hit another high 10 points below the pivot point. You got a lot of names. Again, the push and pull today is super weird, but not really. Uh, we talked about that one from the morning. Again, just the composition and breakdown of the market. Even right now, as we're starting to come down, bonds are starting to hit near their low of the day, honestly. I think that's probably the most fascinating part. But you got seven names down on the Dow, 23 in the green. NASDAQ 100, you have 22 names red, and then 79 in the green. And then the S&P 500, you are sitting at 116 names red and 387 in the green. So we'll see. PayPal, I don't think PayPal is today. Am I just like, am I just really that dumb? I could be, but that should be inspiring. You know what I'm saying? Because I got a long term being this dumb, not knowing the dates. Yeah, man, I don't know. I think PayPal's tomorrow, sir. 
Okay, yes. You're not dumb either. I'm just, I just, I make this mistake a lot. That's why, yeah, it's tomorrow, dog. It's tomorrow. You just, you were just trying to get it in, huh? You were just trying to squeeze that in there like this was Congress and you about to run out of crisis and free money to pass another trillion dollars. Is that, that's the impression I'm getting. Uh, so you'll have to wait. You'll have to wait for PayPal tomorrow. Well, again, we got to go one day at a time, one step, because we're going to have a lot. We're going to have a lot. But here's AMD. And they were down this morning. They already ran up. You kind of got a nice little uh, pre-earnings run up here to uh, to go through the day. FOMC's tomorrow. Don't worry. Don't worry. FOMC's tomorrow. FOMC won't let me be. But revenue expected for AMD, $5.7 billion. Oh, and this is the other thing I checked. Everything here is in line. Again, EPS, I think uh, analysts, the only thing that's changed recently is like current up-to-date uh, estimates. I do believe EPS is expected to come in a little lower. Uh, that's the only real change. So as far as a AMD, revenue expected to be $5.7 billion. The company guided for $5.7 billion approximately plus or minus 300. I don't know why they use the approximately if you're going to give me a plus or minus. Uh, Non-gap gross margin, 50.9 versus guidance of 51. So slightly lower than where the company's at. And then a non-gap operating margin of 22.2 with EPS of 68 cents. And then guidance for next quarter. Uh, revenue is expected to come in at 6.3. And non-gap gross margin of 52% higher than this quarter. And non-gap operating at 25.7, uh, five points higher than where it was at this quarter. Then EPS of 89 cents. Uh, Full-year guidance data, revenue data center, and embedded systems expected to grow year over year. Uh, effective tax rate of 13% pre-tax income. Price history since August close, AMD is down 18%. S&P down 85 and XLK down 86 Near-term options imply a 9.2% move. Last four quarters, loss of 7, loss of 9, gain of 13, and loss of 2. And might I add... If you notice, the last two quarters on AMD have been negative on their earnings, but they just bounce with the market. So one of those this year, where is I got to go on the on the one year. You see this earnings right here? This was earnings. They went from $89 to 80 and then over the next three days shot back up to 95 I remember because I was going to buy it, and I think the same thing happened even in their January earnings as well. So fun fact, AMD... Uh, I, that's why I'm like, I don't even know how you want to even take these numbers because you look at the day after earnings, it does move, but like it really does like, you know, yeah, they move as much as on NVIDIA as they do their own, 100%. I, I could agree with that. So that's where you're going to kind of have an issue there, but those are those numbers. Revenue has beaten 16 of the last 20 quarters, and EPS has beaten 15 of the last 20 quarters with four in line. Forward quarter revenue guidance has beaten consensus nine of the last 20 quarters. So that's for AMD, and I think that's the only one that matters today. I know I'm such an asshole about it, but I really do think uh, maybe Paycom. I Didn't I go over that for somebody yesterday, I think? Maybe Caesars for travel that could relate to Airbnb, but I think you already got MGM, One Oak. I don't know if you're into One Oak, One OK Match. Again, Bumble had some stuff, but I don't know. I don't know. First, maybe First Solar. There's been a lot of activity in the land of solar. I could get behind that. First Solar. Hmm. Columbia Central Bank has decided to maintain the overnight interest rate at 13.25. What is it? I'm not seeing f Mr. First Solaire. Got to find that pinned hype play. I mean, I'll know the name when I see it. Usually, like, uh, it was pretty much a, a line. So that was the one we didn't play. I mean, it was the literally the only one, but that was on the criteria. But even for this week, like, I don't know, Paycom, I'll have to double-check that chart. Uh, SMCI is not pinned. Melly, that one's just a big mover for earnings. Maybe Wayfair. I'd have to see. Cloudflare, possibly. But then I think a lot of things just died recently. I don't know if things even got pinned. Yeah, see, Net, Cloudflare could be one of those. 
Again, high upside, January contracts, run deep, chilling at 50. Like, that could be one of those. So, like, I'm, do you see what I'm saying? Like, you could, if you go Carvana, I mean, for, it's kind of already close. Square and PayPal, those are the other one. Net, Square, PayPal. But then, again, some names have recently gone lower, but this one wants to go lower. But you, it has a definitely more of the pin. Uh, I don't know about Epsi. I think that's it for this week. Genrack, let me check Etsy. Etsy is just dead, but that one that has the remember we tried it last time, so that one I still kind of I just know that Etsy has the ability to move. Then PayPal and Square, they kind of have the pin, but they're also like death spiral lower. Roku, Roku has the ability to move big, but I also think it cucks. That kind of does look pin though, and the range it was just at a hundred bucks almost. Yeah, we were trading Roku this year a lot higher actually. Good time to grab Z. May, the IV on the calls might even be high because of that move. So if they have earnings coming up and they just drop 10% on nothing or, again, a, a suspected host of reasons, the calls may even just have a widespread and a high price. So if you want to go for the play, yeah, but just keep that in mind. I mean, you got to really maybe try to hone in in the money and you make your money by going in the money and, you know, factor in your potential gains based on, like, dollar for dollar. That's how I'd look at that one. But it's really, do you want the risk for earnings? The yen came back down. Yeah, just chilling. It's not like the first pop. Oil can go up whenever it wants. I mean, again, conflict or uh, what we were dealing with just with supply. You know, if the economy runs hot and there's no conflict, I mean, oil should go up. That's what we started to see. You guys remember that, right? That's the fucked up part. Is that before you were tied, before when I say oil, you say war, oil, war, oil, war, 2021, 2022, 2023, oil, war, oil, war. You guys, are you guys following? Because that's literally, you pull up an oil chart, you even start looking at oil. Every, you know, most of the last couple of moves on oil have been what? Oil and war. If you really think about it. Again, this is literally all of the, the movement that you had with Ukraine. Right ahead of here, just think about it. August, actually, let's start from June to July to August. You know, literally $60 to 82 then back to 70 then August, all the way till September to 91 even to the end of September, 94 after being at $60 literally, what, two months earlier. Oil was at $94. Oil was already going up. And then it dropped, and then people started getting worried about economic stuff, and then before you know it, war. So now when you think, oh, you got to remember, it was going up prior, and that's why the rates started going up. Are you guys following? Because you have to understand this because this is where the market in this last couple months gets a little wacky because we were worried about one problem and then we started worrying about something else and then now we're like going back to which one is the issue all the while, you know, again, bonds, rates, all of this is part of it. So remember, the data was getting hot again. The economy was good. Some areas were failing, but oil was going back up. Inflation data was going back up. Manufacturing, real estate was still being hot. You guys remember all that? And then oil was shooting up. People were worried about inflation and that worry of the data and oil going up. What happened? It made the bond yields die. That's where everybody's like, oh, shit, maybe Powell. And then Powell's like, yeah, oh, shit, you better listen. So that's what got us all the way down to here. And then this was just the war stuff that kind of put us in a in a weird middle so i i hope you've been following along so as far as like oil going up if the economy gets hot if it if all of that shows hot up there and the rates don't slow it down then yeah oil should be going up as as what we were seeing you know that was what was the original worry to this downside in the market but at the same time now if the economy slows the war other things get in the way that could change oil to both the downside or, again, even oil to the upside. So, ta-da! Are y'all following? I hope that helps. I really do because I feel like, you know, looking at how the market's played out, oil, it's been very important. We were right as we were, like, responding to that in inflation, you just started responding to, like, oh, shit, the rates, even though that's part of it, but then you started worrying about other stuff. Mm. 
Were there reserve cuts? No, not in the oil. I hope. Eight points off the high. Still 41.82. I mean, you're just hugging around uh, that gap fill earlier. Ten here creeping up a little bit today. That's what we were saying earlier. Like low key bonds did have their uh they were approaching the low of the day. Ten year is actually about to go negative, ironically. So long ends probably benefiting the most here. AAA another bill. It feels that corporate credit. Yeah, it's triple A. First priority CLO bond. Oh hell no. Yeah, so this is, it's paying you a 5% yield, but like, you notice the yield, no, I wouldn't touch this thing. This would, this is not Bill. <laughs> yeah, no, no, this is not Bill, not at all. Uh, it, it's honestly, it's offering a shitty yield. So that means back in the day, they were offering you, you know, pretty much before rates were high, they were offering 5.7 probably. And then it started to drop when things, you know, when credit had a problem, but a CLO, I mean, that's a collateralized loan obligation. So, like, it's, I don't even know what it's backed by. You could probably go and look, but it seems like an instrument that offers a higher yield. It kind of has the movement, but, you know, it's, this, this is not Bill. I would know, but so I wouldn't park money there uh, in the same way. If the only way you get Bill is what it's backed by, it has to be like credit uh, and it has to be government credit, treasury. That's the only way I could tell you. The only way I'm wrong, like, think about it. Why Why can I tell all of you? Thousands of people, hands down, Bill, your money is safe, generally speaking. Why? Because the only instance you get fucked on Bill is if the government defaults or, like, money markets in the whole world blow up, which, again, none of those things have ever happened before. I mean, our, our, you know, there's an asterisk above default in the United States, but generally speaking, you always get paid out on that type of investment. So if you're trying to get, even if it may look like Bill and it goes up, it could be a credit-backed asset, right? That's why you may get the same movement intraday, but be mindful of what the ETF is backed by. If you're putting it, especially if it's a stock to get you a bond or get you a yield, and it's most likely going to be an ETF, you better know what it's backed by because in the case of like the guarantee, the only guarantee is if it's government. That's all. Because so if it, there's like there's some bonds out there, bond funds that are corporate credit, they offer high yields, maybe even a little bit lower, but corporate credit is 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 complete. There's no guarantee you could have that one company that gets clapped out of nowhere. So you could you know the one fallen angel, they just haven't updated the credit. You never know that could be packed. That could be what is in this CLO. You have no idea what type of debt they're holding. So if there is if it's not government debt, there's no there's no guarantee that your that your money comes back. And that's that's really uh, the the problem because so it's you know bill borderline is is very close to being insured to a degree you have the insurance of the government backing whereas if it's backed by anything else it's uh you know that type of credit it's it's at risk of of God knows what it could be but in this case too you know you pull it out you'll see they were offering the high yield before which is the the ironic part of all of it. So that even tells you they were they were kind of doing this prior. It's not not the same. Bill will open lower once it pays the dividend. Yeah, afterwards. So now and then you shouldn't be able to receive it. But yeah, it should drop about like forty cents, thirty seven to forty five cents, uh, and then you'll restart. And then there you go. They just say it's backed by AAA minus CLOs. Yeah, don't touch. It. That's not. Don't put your money there. Not for safety. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're a fucking credit gambler and, and you wanted, you know, a more diversified CLO portfolio, <laughs> you know, that five, seven, you could blend it in there and it makes sense. Fucking run it. Uh, but for like to treat it as like a, a, a cash equivalent, I would I would not I would say that is not even I, I would be stay far, far away from that, it's, especially if you don't have a intention of using a CLO or, you know, you don't really know what it is or want to put it in your portfolio. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really touch it. Good find though. I'm glad because usually we haven't really, oh, I meant to put in Tesla. 
we haven't really found too many, uh, you know, things like that to be able to say, do this, don't do that. But that one's definitely one you, you stay far away from. Mm. So OXLC is a bad stock. It's not CLOs aren't bad, but they are like, you got to know what it is. It's, it's, it's again, it's a bunch of, it's a collateralized loan obligation. So this is like the shit where it's just the fucking swamp pool soup souffle of just a bunch of different credit. And it's all credit based too. That's the thing. And what's you know, what's that issue we've been talking about when bonds, 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 that's all credit. And you know, again, it's all threatening credit, and that's where people have been shaken up. So you want to really know what's what it's owning. So Oxford Lane it's a company, but if it's if it's if they probably own a lot of CLOs. That other one was an ETF. So this is a company. That's the this this that's another big difference. The other one was an ETF, meaning the value was just is straight based off of you know all the money in and out of that. Whereas this is a company they probably engage in the primarily in in, in holding CLOs. All going down again. You found the basket. They're backing it, and OMG is bad. I bet. I feel like they all the loans might be either underwater or they gave like they were loaning to the shitty companies when before things got shitty. Because that's what I look at when I saw the chart. So if you want to know how I got to that conclusion, it's like if I go back to 2019, 2020. I'm assuming if they're trading around the same price, they were offering the same yield if it's one of those type of ETFs, right? So that means in like 2021, they were giving out whatever loans, they were probably holding obligations that are like 5% or something, maybe maybe a little a little higher than where it's at now. But then as when rates started going up, they got clapped because they were just like a bank. They're pretty much holding out all of this debt at for five percent. Now you could get way higher quality debt for five percent. Now they're holding everything else, and then now as rates are kind of coming back up, there's been a default. You see, they're kind of returning back to their yield. But yeah, so that's why I'm saying that the pretty much rates go up, their loans go down, but they're stabilizing here. But it could be because some of their shit didn't die, or one got really better. Like Voya, Amco, 12% cash, and 15% 15 tickers I've never seen. Hey, 12% cash is not bad. That's actually not, that means, because cause then that's where they're getting their 5.5. That's enough to probably pay you out for a couple of years till the market's normalized. That cash might have saved their ass. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Because if you have a, you know, a fucking 15, 20 year Voya bond or whatever, and then they get 12% cash and then they're collecting 5.5 five on that, you know, or 6% government, then they're going to go pay you out 5.2, 5.7. Even if they break even, at least they don't go bust. They may walk away with a little bit. Mm -mm. Maybe though. Because that's their, their whole portfolio is probably 575 though. It's tough. It doesn't save them, but. It definitely is help, helping them out more than not. Mm, Dash and Roku again. We were just talking about those. Shopify. They have earnings in the morning tomorrow. Tesla looked like the spy. Tesla did good, man. He was down a lot today. Had a had a lot of negative articles. That's it. I feel like right when Tesla enters around 200, they're just that's it. The reporters attack. They know not to fuck with it when it's going up, but when it's going down, bro, they just beat the shit out of Tesla. It's actually it's quite fascinating to watch. White House Biden aiming to have a constructive conversation with China Xi in San Francisco in November. We moved up. This is I mean, yesterday was a big move if anything. I mean, this is like 20 points. So intraday, you moved up 40 points. That's the funny part. But from yesterday's close, I mean, you're literally up like 18 points right now. 
So that's the crazy part. And then, I mean, the way down, though, the way down, way up, all of that, that's that's already been unbelievable. Chipotle's on the high. Uh, is Shopify tomorrow? Um, no, it's Thursday. I did it again. Thursday. Yeah. Tomorrow morning, you got... Damn it. Tomorrow morning, you got Norwegian, CVS, Humano, Wayfair, Genrac, Apolis, Estee Lauder, Builders, First Source, and then Extreme Networks. Let's see Wayfair. And then VIX hitting more lows. So Wayfair moved, though. I don't know. Does this one have the pin? Yeah, this one has the pin at the bottom, low key. Oh, and they were just at 100. Nobody even trading these. Airbnb, yeah, they're tomorrow after the bell. Genrac can move a lot, and then, I mean, all of these energy plays have just been wicked. I could get behind a move on that. Hmm. Oh, the VIX gave it up quick. That sucks. Wayfair's move. You, you could try to play the contracts. Those moved up a lot, though, already in the morning. But that's kind of – that's another one I think that has the pin. I was saying that earlier. But they report tomorrow morning. Melly on the high. Again, that's another one in the next coming days. Mercado Libre. That little – all those reds turn green now. 4184. Again, a couple points. That was the, the big level – for the gap fill, but you're closer to the latest level than the 4,200. Elon, we're planning our first deliveries next month. Is that for the Cybertruck? He's lying. Did he say that on the Joe Rogan thing, or is that a tweet? There's no way. That'd be amazing. I was just saying, it's been four years. I put out a Craigslist ad trying to find my, my Cybertruck. Joe Rogan shoots an arrow at the cyber truck. You guys want to see it? Is that like a real arrow? Oh yeah, it left it. That was cool. It left a spark. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I was born in Puerto Rico. I can make the camera zoom in. That Elon? Wow. So cool. That's dangerous with no eye protection. All right, calm down, you narc. I was thinking the same thing. I just wasn't going to snitch. Damn. ALTR. That thing does look like... Sh it looks uh, hideous. Thank you. Let's go back to it. Real quick. If this is like production release, there's no... If y'all... Listen, man. If y'all think this is a good-looking car and that's how much society has changed, then I'm fucking Channing Tatum now. Fuck you guys then. If y'all really... If this is visually appealing then, then fuck it. I made it. I've been lying to you this whole time. I'm a male model then. If this is considered as as like... That's a, that's a visually aesthetic, then fuck it. I win then. Amen. Yeah, otherwise, this is not... I'm still buying it. I have two of them ordered, I think. But I'm buying that shit for sure. But, you know, that's going to be my little ugly friend. I'm not going to lie about it and say this is like a cool-looking car. It's a cool car, but it's not a cool-looking car, if that makes any sense. You know, it's, again, I, I like the personality of the vehicle much more than anything else. 
I want it too. I want it too. It's ugly, but like I'm buying it for sure. I want it. But yeah, it's a warthog. It's it doesn't have not every car has to be pretty. I'm buying it because it's a cool car, and I'm not. I'm telling you, I don't like EVs. The only EVs I've ever bought are is Tesla. I don't even own this stock. I'm not even like an Elon fanboy, but like I genuinely love the vehicle, and that's the only EV at that price. But the car's like forty grand or something. I think mine's built at like forty or fifty grand or something. I don't even know, but it's like, dude, it's that's that's what you should get in an EV for that much money versus a fucking Rivian for how many thousands of dollars. And then you don't have any now. Lucid, I hate Lucid's over. If Lucid was twenty thousand dollars, I'm a fan. Forty thousand max, I'm a fan. But these cars, some of these cars, bro, that like everyone's like EV this, EV that, and it's and it's priced at the price of of literally a damn. I would rather get the the Z06 Corvette than a Lucid. Than, than a lot of the EV cars, even the Mercedes EVs. Like, why would you spend that much? Just go buy a G wagon. Go get anything. Go get anything. But I, I'm a big fan of EVs sub forty thousand. I think that's the best way I could explain it to you. Maybe sub thirty thousand. I'm a really big fan. The super like I love the Prius. I think more affordable, actually, you know, environmentally friendly cars uh, that are like priced appropriately. Oh, I I think those are the killer. But that's why I like Tesla. Again, you have to realize Tesla is just it's superior EV, and then it's cheap. It's not like they don't they're not charging you an arm and a leg anymore. That's why I'm like you know it's a it's a it's a really good car. Everything else, man, until EVs are cheap, blah humbug. I like that new, I will kind of, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I want that Corvette I showed you once I saw, I don't know. It's they, they were, they were going for like 300 grand, but I kind of want the Z06, bro. I really wanted that car. I showed you. I wouldn't look, they caught my eye. It really did. That one's a, I, that, that's a nice car, but I don't think it'll hold its value. That's the only problem. Yeah. Nine, you get a nine eleven. But I don't, I don't, I'm not ever buying a Porsche anymore. It's mad. I'm mad about it. I'm really mad about it. But, yeah. You won't regret the Corvette. I feel like I will once I change my mind in like two years and I want to sell it. Because that's usually what happens. But that's the only worry is if it has too much aftermarket price, you don't want to, like that's your, it's a guaranteed loss. Mm. Porsche hit me with the markup? Nah. I'm not buying Porsche after the little Jesus fiasco. Mm. That's it. They lost me. I told you, bro. My girl was going to buy a Porsche, too. My girl was going to get a Porsche, and I just said... We're not dating if you get a Porsche anymore. And I said, I hope you come to this conclusion on your own. And then, then she was like, okay, that's it. No more Porsches. I can't do Porsches. I wanted one. Mm -hmm. You get the Rolex. I had one. I didn't want it. I told the Chad, so nobody else wanted it. But I said, all right, I guess not. Only one Chad, Eddie, but he hit me up later. Why don't I like them? Because they, they did some weird campaign where they removed an iconic cross for no damn reason. And then they apologized. And I appreciate the apology. But nah, I'll just go get an F-350. But even then, I don't know. It's one thing to just, they took out my cross, bro. That's all. I don't really cancel things. And like, this is like an extremely luxury product, so... I figured this was this was exactly where I fit in to cancel it. You know what I'm saying? You know, for the Lord, it's like, okay, like what? I'm, I'm going to sacrifice a Porsche. Why? Okay, great. I have to sacrifice a very expensive car for no good reason. Well, there you go. That's it. That's all. This is my one cancellation I get, but I've, I'm, I'm sticking with it. Sticking with it. The Audi e-tron. 
I think any EV paying more than 60000 for an EV is insanity. And again, I mean, I think my my Model X, I paid a lot of money for it. <laughs> like, but at the end of the day, like watching how all of it's played out, maybe 80 grand tops. Cause it's like, dude, it's a battery and I get batteries and all that, but it's just like, dude, it's a, it's a wicked concept to be spending that much on. Cause again, the whole concept of EVs is that they should be affordable. You guys know that, right? Like, I hope you understand, like, that's where like the e EVs become like great. You know, that's the whole like environmentally friendly thing. Like when everybody does it, it's when they start giving you cars that are like environmentally friendly and they don't cost a hundred thousand dollars. Power hour, I guess. No, ten minutes. Uh, you're getting another pop, bro. So honestly, it's point five six. Even then, like I'm telling you, I mean, to even go green on the month, bro, you still need a lot. I mean, this this is all pretty small in terms of movement, but we are making a, a effort to go back up to the highs. There's still one point below the high of the day. Believe it or not, or believe it or not. Deflation hour. What the Land Cruiser Hybrid? I ain't never seen that. That might hit. I've been looking at like, dude, like some of those just like random ass weird cars, like a Defender. They look g g beautiful. <laughs> I love them. I like the old Defender, but the new one I thought was wonky. But that one kind of grew on me heavy. But those are still expensive too. That's why I guess everything's expensive, but. If it has a battery and it costs the price of like a supercar at one point, that's I'm not, I can't get behind that. And I don't know if we're hitting the high yet, and if oil is even bounced yet. Forty-one eighty-nine ninety, or literally exactly one point below the high. Let's check oil. Oil even hit down to eighty. SPX. I need equal weight. Equal weights running too. Equal weights almost up 1%. That's doing way better. So actually, I mean, the rest of the market is doing a lot better today. You would be up a lot more. I don't know where equal weight is at though. Equal weight has to be destroyed on the month. Yeah, equal weight is way, way further than where it Equal weight has a lot more. They have 5% to go. RTX new high. I have 350s, the best. Okay. okay, off the top. The Ionic 6 is cheap. Yeah, you could get that car for 200 bucks a month. I get behind I, the the Kia EV deal, the Hyundai EV deal. I would take that. Yeah, but like on the lease deals, they're really good with the credit. But even that car MSRP is like fifty six thousand. That's in, so insane to me. Hmm. I have not grabbed MO yet. I don't have a deposit yet. That's the problem. I need my deposit. But even then, I'll be able to buy it on the small account. I might even wait a little bit. I do need to get this stuff resolved. I'm either going to have 7 to 14 business days still. And then the other accounts. Oh, wait. We can't even trade, bro. I forgot. Because even on the Schwab accounts, you can't even access them till November 4th. What am I saying? Isn't that the case? You're not like there's like a two or three day delay. So we're not going to be able to do shit. Our long terms, I mean, up until. Yeah, up until like next week, really. I have Schwab on one and then the other two, I'm still or I have two on Schwab and then one on E-Trade. So like I literally I try to switch about the 10 days ahead and then in the process of switching I initiated one transfer 
and then I had an issue setting up my other account. So I told them, I said, okay, cancel it then, hold up, let me redo it. And then in the process of canceling it, they still sent everything. And then they were like, well, you can't cancel it anymore. But then they're like, we already canceled it. And then they're saying, but you can't cancel it. And now they're telling me you can't touch it until it's received. So, yeah, it, it is patience. I think so. But we have to do the back and forth. But then I was going to lose access to the TD. So, unfortunately, my shitty timing, I still had to make the Schwab account anyway. So, that's why I am going to have two going to Schwab. The other one's still in limbo to E-Trade. But, unfortunately, process just was not as fast as I as I wanted it to be. And I did stall a little bit deciding, but I'm going to be using both. Woohoo! You might, you get, I think you're still going to be able to access Thinkorswim. So that's the only thing. Hmm. If you get MO or O, which one? MO. I like O, but MO still yields higher, and MO has gone cheaper in, like, over the years. I mean, I've seen MO as being really stable, and I'm I'm not really, a, you know, consumer or not. I, I do believe in a stagflationary environment, whatever environment. I just – the cigarettes ain't going nowhere, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> that's fortunately, unfortunately, depending on how you want to look at it. But I, I do like MO, and then right now I just think less headwinds with that. And then bonds. Rogan bought up Frisker. You getting squeezed? No. I mean, if any, I'm benefiting on this. I didn't really short anything. And then we closed out of our SQQs a couple days ago. Uh, again, I've chilled out. I set up for a bullish October. I had to pay for it, but I'm still holding it. I mean, it was a lot worse. It's still bad, but I mean, I'm welcoming any of the upside and then hoping to, uh, you know, we get our final move in the end of the year and then wrap everything up. And then, yo, Twitch, what the fuck are you guys doing? <laughs> Hold on. What the fuck is happening in here? Yo, don't try to fix it with Vix at the bottom of the channel. What the hell? I just read the last four messages. I just look over on my Twitch screen, and it's just like, there's some crazy comments. What's going on, man? Can y'all reframe? Can y'all can y'all just calm down a little bit? This seems a little bit more. I don't know if this is personal or not, but. I think they got forums for that. PayPal on the high, the PayPal. Where is PayPal? Contract's still the same price. Spy's going up, though, again. I mean, my goodness. We still have a lot of time. That's the craziest part. You have uh, another hour, hour and four minutes. Realty income, PayPal's up one. Uh, Realty's up three. Act. Damn, they got bit up quick now that I think about it. They're still down a decent amount, but people bought up O real quick. I forget, man, a lot of people love O. Mm. The Case Schiller Index, that's what started to freak out. Wasn't that in the morning, though? And that was related to uh, the Zillow stuff? It was weird. It's Tim Foyle, let us foil. I feel you, but like, that was like, there was a moment where that's like, you even if you scrolled up, it looked like a damn chapter book. <laughs> that's all I saw. I didn't even see no stock quotes. I ain't seen nobody say anything. Nothing about that. I didn't even see new high. Nobody called out Tesla. Nothing just. Jeffrey Epstein, and then Hillary. Yeah, like, whoa, 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 whoa. Is Canada in a technical recession? Have they had their three quarters? 
I mean, then and they, man, they confuse the shit out of you. They're like, no, it's not. Recession, what's a recession? Define it, not a recession. Change the data. Look at everything's normal again. Do you think the market is running up to soften the blow? He'll bring it down and not drop it below levels? No, I do not. I think that the market should be exactly right here before everything. Why? Because I told you that last Thursday and Friday. So if you remember, I was telling you, 4,200, this makes sense to be the home leading into power. LMT rocketing up, no pun intended. LMT with a dollar pop almost. Hold up. Whoa. Okay, you're getting a lot of things unleashed right now. Drunken Miller says he has massive bullish bets on two-year notes. He's not really moving it too much, though. And again, the ironic part about the two-year notes, it's more sensitive to policy. So I don't even know if he could even pump it like that, but we'll see. We got Sunak, UK would continue diplomatic support. You're 4191, though. That's crazy. It feels like you did so much there, but you just went one more point above the high. But a lot of names moved. Hmm. I don't know if we're, we're close to uninversion, but it's not quite there. Mm -hmm. You're no, you're, you actually inverted more, which is, I don't know, good or again, every time if we start inverting again, as weird as that sounds, uh, an inversion will be better than, uh, what's it called? An inversion would actually have a good effect. Again, every time we inverted after uninverting, that's when the market rallied. SVB, beginning of the year, last year, October fiasco, the uninversion was when we bounced. So, so far, you uninverted by by like 0.5 uh, five basis points today. How do you zoom in closer? You click zoom right here. And then you have to make sure chart trading and then you click and then it'll zoom in. And then you can get as deep as you want into one candle. All right, that's as far as it's letting me. This is right now. Look at that. That's the candle right now. 0.64. You're going up. NVIDIA, don't forget, AMD earnings, 4193. Another high. So from here, top to bottom here, like this little baby move, that's 10 points. But you're only like three or four points past the next high. And again, 4,200. That is the next level that we need to rest and reach uh, and if we break it even better but again like i was saying back earlier i was just telling you guys last week i really think the market should be at 4200 ahead of powell this is what we were saying just it was funny because you were going through all of it the end of the month and all that good stuff so it's just to be right at the pivot point where everything has either died or rocketed up over the last three years i feel like it's quite fitting for us to be exactly at that level ahead of Jerome Powell. Isn't that beautiful? I feel like it's like, you know, it's a story and it worked out so well, but that was something where it just, it tells you the market, even the computers, this price and Powell go hand in hand. This price in up or down go hand in hand. And it's like, this is where all of the events boil down to right at this price. So we'll see. Yeah, RTX, man, one day too early. We left uh, probably like four or 500 bucks on the table. That one's starting to run there. Again, even LMT, Netflix going up, Spy. Everything is looking decent for now, man. It's actually wild. I'm going to going up to give cushion. So, I don't know if it's cushion because I don't think we need it. Uh, does that make sense? Like, I don't think you need cushion. If Powell's going to be bad, if Powell wants to be hawkish with how much weakness we've had, you're going to 3,900. Remember, when we were breaking here, we were talking about 3,900 flat. You don't need cushion, if that makes any sense. Like, I don't even think Powell would want it to. It's just like, the way I'm looking at it is just death or de death and destruction or rejoice in life. And and that and you don't need anything except the wind and, and what we've already went through. You just need the right the right catalyst or again the right or wrong statement out of Mr. Powell. Mm. All righty. 
now the question, do we hit 4,200 or not? You're at 4,194, the high, one point higher, but you're still working into that. Those wolf calls would have hit on the short term, but the ones on the January wouldn't have, or would it would have been small. Like wolf, 97%. And then I think the weeklies. Damn, you could even flip the weeklies on the daily. Yeah, the weeklies, 50 cents to a dollar. I'm kind of not like, yeah, so even wolf, you actually got clapped. If you were out of the money and you bought the 20 cent options, you got clapped. If you bought the 50 cents ones, you broke even, you were up for a little bit and then you won on these ones and then everything in the money. But these were they were all high price. These are all for one day contracts or or excuse me, four day contracts. And then the leaps went up 90%. Uh but then if you were too far out the money, you didn't get anything. PayPal, Netflix, Art. Did you wick up into that again? A couple of financial plays. Yeah, you hit a new high on that. So you're not holding it right now, but you literally just wicked into another one. And then we're at 0.67. So it's funny. Today feels a lot bigger than yesterday, but remember, you had a way bigger gain because of the gap up. So this was just intraday squeeze, but no gap required. Four one nine five JP Morgan again XLF eighty one so RTX could go up to eighty three now that's what we were talking about no news this has just been kind of squeezing we had a little bit of relief from the morning or continued relief more names were green than not even though there were some pretty bad earnings but all of this we had a couple of data sets to respond to in the morning bonds were up if anything there were the biggest news was Japan and that messing up the dollar and the yen and all of that stuff but for the most part. Uh, we've been good. At, and honestly, this might be our... When was the last time we went up two fucking days in a row? <laughs> like, actually, like, closed green. So this one, you closed red. Yeah, I don't think you've had this in a while. Oh, hold on. Let me see. I forgot. I think I have another. I gotta set this up. Please hold. I'll be right back. Follow me on Instagram at the Trading Attorney. I love you. Tickets sold 46 films released and $798 million gross domestically in 2023 from horror movies. It's Hollywood's most reliable moneymaker, which is really interesting because I feel like a lot of these movies are just so cheesy, but I guess they are festive. They're cheesy and they're also cheap to make. Um, yeah. I'm kind of obsessed with Jason Blum of Blumhouse Productions. Uh, he recently went on Shark Tank and I was kind of having, I don't know, I was kind of obsessed. Anyway, but his initial movie, right, Paranormal Activity, I think it was something like fifteen thousand dollars to make, and I'm just looking at the numbers. I did see that in theaters. So Hundred ninety-four million in theaters Amazing. after its release, and then I guess you got seven pictures. The franchise continued. They've grossed more than eight hundred ninety million at the box office. It's a lot of money. It makes sense because I feel like nice the margin. worse quality footage it's on, the scarier it is. You know, remember the Blair Witch Project? Wasn't that done on someone's camcorder? Yeah, that's camcorder? exactly what I was thinking of. Yeah. I mean, that that was handheld camera work. Mm, definitely not like super high in editing and look how much money it made. The return was astronomical. It kind of feels real, right? Like when you see yeah. it kind of grainy and stuff. Anyway, all right, guys, we're going to be back. We've got some earnings after the close. We're going to wrap up uh, this Halloween uh, Halloween Tuesday and also wrap up uh, this qu this month, not yes. quarter. We're almost there, <laughs> but not quite. Ourselves. All right, we'll see you again, guys. Uh, join us at Beyond oh, on the Bell, 4 p.m. Wall Street. It's actually Halloween today. You guys know that? Happy Halloween. Anybody know? Uh, dude, I keep forgetting. I keep forgetting. Oh my goodness. Is this Bloomberg or The View? Mm. Happy Halloween. Was this spooky? Is this a spooky Halloween? The dollar was spooky. All day the dollar's like, oh, oh, oh. are you going to really want to rally? Or? Now we're just ignoring the hell out of it right now.
my goodness, taking your kid trick or treating. I'll enjoy it. Enjoy it. I hope y'all come up good. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, I pray for y'all. I hope y'all walk away with king size candy bars, the full size ones. That's the best feeling in the world. So, you know, just good vibes, baby. Good vibes coming into it. I, you know, I hope it's a good earnings. I hope y'all, this is like the earnings for the children. So, you know, y'all better be down with it. Y'all better be, make sure they have a lot of fun. You know, this is their earnings. You know, they're about to go get in quarterly reports. They're going to have the road show, knock on doors, trick or treat. And they're going to come in and see how much candy they got. Mm -hmm. Do you give out candy? Uh, I just hand out little scrolls with Bible verses on them. Uh, and then I just, and they all say like in big red spooky letters, it says repent. Uh, and then I show like, I have like leading up to my driveway, I have like pictures of like the seven deadly sins and what sin, what it, what type of life it leads to, to, you know, it's spooky. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Your house is going to get egged. They can't. I already egged my own house. Oh, yeah. You're going to egg it too? Good. Do it again. Fuck it. Now what? Now you're just joining my side. So, sucks for you. You're going to see it. You're gonna, are you going to see eggs and shells? I'll even leave eggs outside for you too. And you know what the eggs are going to say on them? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand paint them. And it's going to say, repent. <laughs> so, feel free, man. Feel free. Feel free, man. Only winner is the egg company. Oh, wait. Hold on. Please hold. Profile, you know, earnings report we're going to get this week. And, and after last week's kind of choppiness in tech, I think there's, a again, a pretty high bar for them as well. That stock's pulled back a little bit, which, which probably helps, you know, the setup going into earnings, I'd say. Yeah, maybe a little bit of a concession priced in. And given that, I mean, it comes down to Apple this week, and then you look out uh, the landscape of the rest of earnings season, it's not quite as fast and furious. How much does that raise the stakes on Apple, given that it's one of the biggest companies out there? And we haven't exactly seen the other mega cap companies ride to the rescue. Yeah, the stakes are high. I mean, it's been a pretty narrow leadership year, um, and, and it's obviously one of those narrow leaders. So, you know, for that reason, I think it's really important. To your point, this will kind of be the, the last big one, you know, until we get NVIDIA and then, the, yeah. and then the retailers later in the quarter. So expectations are always high for Apple. Um, and, and in this case, I, I would agree with you. Given the choppiness and earnings, probably a little bit of extra attention paid to it. And, and that's why SKU is high, because, you know, the risks are to the downside, not the upside, I think, from, from most people's perspective this week. I'm glad you bring up NVIDIA, because it'll be another three Three weeks before we get results from that company and it is the poster child of AI um, so I don't know how much people look at that set of results and extrapolate to other companies do they and is that justified uh, they definitely I mean look they're definitely going to extrapolate some of the Nvidia results out to the rest of AI but you know the, the unique part of Nvidia relative to AI in our view is it's kind of the pipes you know it, it sort of doesn't matter who wins or loses in AI they're still gonna need Nvidia chips right so it, it, in that sense they they benefit as long as AI is a big growth story um, and, and not necessarily, you know, picking winners and losers. Also, NVIDIA headlines from China, you know, recently in terms of yeah. what chips they can sell in there. So, you know, they're going to have to meet the optimism bar on the AI side, and they're also going to have to provide some guidance in terms of what, what that regulatory environment is like in China. So it's going to be a lot of moving pieces. I expect people to kind of be edge of their seats uh, <laughs> for that earnings in a few weeks. Yeah, the, the China side is definitely the fly in the ointment for NVIDIA. Uh, when I look at the... All right, my bad. I have a, I got an internet guy over here. I, had, I thought he was going to come right after the bell. I'm double checking everything because yesterday was weird. But we are running. My goodness. Chad Adonia. 12 12. 48 minutes left. My goodness. Powell comes in tomorrow at 2 30. But I mean, yeah, today there was a lot, a lot in the morning, and I can't believe we even responded. Damn, NVIDIA, they might even go green. Is NVIDIA green? About to be. But the in the morning, we had a lot of, uh, you know, ECI, uh, the home data, all this random stuff, like, kind of moved us, but it really shouldn't have. Uh, but that's where I'm saying it's going to be, uh, you know, I think tomorrow's data, we, we are really going to have action. Jolt's jobs report. The refunding directly going to affect the bonds, and then 2.30 p.m. Eastern, you're going to get your boy, Powell. Pete Bobble. 